It's late afternoon and Chris has been called to a bizarre emergency. Hi there. So what's going on? I've got a pelican. An injured pelican was found stranded in the middle of a busy highway. He's wanting to have a go at me. I, I don't really mind that. He was just lying right up in on the gutter and I went to him and he got up but I could see he couldn't fly away. So my biggest concern is their wings. He's having no problem getting them right out. So I'm, I'm happy with all the bones, I guess, from, from here on. Hey, buddy. Everything else I'm not too sure about. Oh, there we go. So he's got some injuries in his mouth there. So I think the, the majority of the trauma is actually coming from this bump on, on the back of his neck here. And that's where the blood's coming from as well. Looking at him, I'd say he's either been hit by a car or, or hit the power lines. And if that's happened, he's probably been lucky to survive. Okay, if you could just grab me Chris that needs there. to take the stranded bird back to the clinic to make sure there's no fractures in his neck. The pelican is also malnourished. He may even have some injuries that are internal. Internal, yeah. We right? Yep. Yeah. Tough little guy, aren't you? Yeah. I was fishing, just baited the hook up and yeah, before the time I could get the, the bait in the water, he swallowed it, so a bit of a bugger. I didn't catch any fish but I caught my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Harley, a 10 year old American Staffordshire Terrier, has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash after swallowing a fish hook. I actually pulled the line and didn't realise it was actually in his throat. hope it hasn't wedged in too far. Hi, I'm Lisa, nice to meet you. It's a quick consultation with emergency vet Lisa Chimes. So we'll x-ray his chest to have a look if it's in his esophagus and we'll also x-ray his abdomen to have a look if it's further down. Come on Harley. If Harley's esophagus has to be cut open, that's going to be awful news for Chad. It's a delicate operation and the risk is that his esophagus or food pipe may never heal properly and Harley may never be able to eat normally again. You'd be good for this Harley. All right, bud. Harley. Harley. All right. Excellent. It's not going to work, is it, mate? Huh? <laughs> Get a window down for the right. So what's with the pelican? It's a very good question. He's been hit by a car. Yeah, so let's take him back to the vets and get an x-ray him and... Okay, good luck. No worries. Chris's new patient is creating plenty of interest on the way back to the Bondi Clinic. I don't think you can really have a bird with so much personality like this without giving him a name, so... I don't know, I think somehow Pablo. But Pablo's personal hygiene is a worry. Oh, this is driving me insane. The worst thing is, I just don't have a spare hand to scratch the two lice that are currently crawling across my arm, as well as the 15 that are currently crawling through my hair. Just wish we could find a way through this traffic. He's still got some blood dripping from his beak, which does worry me, so hopefully we won't take too much longer. What have you got now? Pelican, mate. Can Pelican. you give me a hand? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Thanks, Bruce. Back. He's either been hit by a car or running to a power lines. Okay. He's also got a bit of bruising down here, so we need to x-ray this whole neck area. Hey. Ah. Pavlo. Oh. Chris and head nurse Neil are under siege from their unusual client in more ways than one. It's probably a good time to tell you that he's actually covered in lice as well, so thanks. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, they're getting freaked out, it's alright. The fact is these x-rays have to be taken. He could quite easily have a partial fracture of one of the vertebrae in Pavlo's neck or even a wing fracture. X-ray! He can't be released if he does have a fracture. Next on Bondi Vet, Harley's fish hook is no easy catch. We'll have one more go, otherwise he would have to go to surgery. And a pregnant Bella is rushed into Bondi in a critical state. Can mother and pups survive? I don't know if we can get them all out alive, but we really have to give them the best chance.
X-ray. Pablo, who crash landed on a busy highway, is lucky to be alive. Wow. X-rays will now reveal if he has serious neck injuries. He's certainly got a little bit of bruising around the back of his neck here, but structurally it, it's okay. So all those nerves that are running down that spinal cord, they're all right. Just support his, the base of his neck There's there. There's his neck, okay. Right down there. Cleared of any fractures, Chris needs to feed the starving pelican immediately. For me to give him fish, feels very foreign and he's stressed out and his instinct is to regurgitate straight away. We have to prevent that by just holding his neck or even tying this cord around just to prevent that regurgitation. But we have to make him eat because he's so fragile right now, he needs nutrition. Pablo now needs to rest and recover. Look at this, Pablo. Chris has set up a temporary shelter at the back of the clinic. But while Pablo appears stable, after such a major trauma, there are no guarantees he will survive the night. Okay, I think it's bedtime. Harley, it's all right, sweetheart. Look, the tail's wagging. I know. We'll try and do this without sedation. Ten-year-old Harley has swallowed Harley, a fish hook. Harley. Lisa needs to find exactly where it's lodged, come on, come on. but the powerful Staffy is winning the battle. Little sting. It's a boy. Good boy. That was very brave, Harley. A quick sedation has now stacked the odds in Lisa's favour. Now, round two. There, you're a good boy now with some happy juice. Hey, it's a good boy. Boy. Harley, 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 Harley. Side, an anxious Chad is waiting for news. Yeah, I've got two kids, a ten and eight-year-old. He was with us first, and then we had our daughter six months later. And yeah, so he's like one of the kids. Apparently, Dad's in the bad books. Yes, I'm always doing something wrong. <laughs> always. Oh dear. The hook is in his esophagus. You can see it right there. We can't leave that there. That needs to come out. See what you've done? Look. No comment. Yep. I do, I know where you are. So if you take the next turn right and then you'll come to a T intersection and turn left. It's late evening and Chris has been called back to the Bondi clinic yeah. for an emergency. All right, we'll see you soon. So we've got a pug coming in that's expecting pups. They're notoriously difficult at this time. They find it really hard to get their pups through their narrow pelvis. I'm expecting a caesarean, but we're gonna to have to see it first, and he should be here right now. There you go. Do you want to do this? Yeah, there you go, Chris. Do you want to bring it straight through? Yep. Okay. Have a look at her. Thanks, mate. Since about 10 o'clock this morning, she's been panting, shivering, temperature drop. Yeah. John's now regretting his decision to allow Bella to have a litter. I feel so bad for doing it. Well, just, it's, it's all a bit real now. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's not a breeding dog. She's a family pet. Um, yeah, well, I owned her since she was six weeks old. Yeah, and yeah, well, I can't live with Bella. Yeah, good. Good. Oh, it's okay. X-rays will confirm okay. just how big the pups are and how much danger Bella is in. X-ray! One, two, three, four, five, six. Which is huge for a pug. It's... Whew. There's no way a 15 month old dog is, is gonna have the energy and the reserves and, and the strength to push out six massive puppies. She, she needs a cesarean, there's no other way of looking at it. I, I don't know if we're gonna get them all out alive, but we really have to give them their best chance. A picket? That's a boy. You lie down. At Sash, specialist vet Darren Foster has the tricky job of trying to remove Harley's deeply wedged fish hook without causing permanent damage. I'm always worried about esophageal foreign bodies because they can go really well and can be quite spectacular or they could be quite difficult to do. And there it is. 
fish hooks are particularly difficult because you don't have much room to move and they're quite sharp obviously and there are a lot of important structures around the esophagus like arteries and veins that we might hit if we turn the hook in the wrong direction and if we can't get it out very easily then we'll have to send him to surgery unfortunately. The frustration is building as the minutes tick by and there's no result. At the moment, it's looking like he's going to need to have surgery, but we don't like to do surgery on esophagus because they, they just don't heal very well. I don't think this is going to work. <coughs> Afraid? Chris has just discovered that Bella is carrying six huge puppies and needs an emergency caesarean. It's pretty competitive in there. Yeah. and they'll all be jostling and sometimes they don't all, all make it, so just brace yourself for that. Right. All right, we'll do okay. our best. As long as she comes through it, all right? Yeah. Come on. All right, thank you. No problem. Thank you, sir. That's all right. All John can do now is wait, while Chris and his team begin the extremely delicate operation. They're literally bursting to get out here. <laughs> They're almost overflowing here. Soon after Chris makes an incision, the first of Bella's pups is born. But it's not breathing. Hey, guy over there. Give him a little I breath. I a little noise already. Yeah. Tough love is now needed to save this struggling puppy. And there are five more still to come. Come on, mate. Bondi Clinic, Chris is using mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to force air into the lungs of Bella's first pup. Plenty of rubs to stimulate. I'll just go rotate right, right, between rubs, breaths. It's got a bit of anaesthetic still in his Yeah. I'm getting movement. The firstborn is now breathing, but there are still five more pups to be saved. You ready for me? Uh, I'll, do, I'll do this one. Well. Outside, a desperately worried John waits and hopes. Do you want to start on this one over here? She's starting to gasp, and then I'll start on the one that Chris is on. With so many pups needing urgent attention, even Bondi vet producer Jane Caswell has been called on to help. Come on, baby. Come on. Keep going, keep going. You can do it. On your shelf. Come on, babe. He's breathing now. Yes. <laughs> that was the first time he's breathing more than once. Another one coming. Not too nice. One by one, the pups splutter to life. How many are in here? Just one? Just two. There's two here. You got, that's number five. You guys are going to need to get a rotation on these guys because mum's yep. got to... The last one. At last, all six puppies are successfully out. But any joy is short-lived as the team realises the pups may be out of danger, but Bella is not. So she's lost a lot of blood. Her heart rate's dropping as well. Her colour's gone from a nice pink colour to, to quite a pale, pale pink. So we're doing our very best to, to treat the, the symptoms of shock that she's going through and blood loss, pumping the fluids through her. But she's a long way from home. She's, she's in a bit of trouble. The team at SASH are attempting to remove a fish hook wedged into Harley's esophagus on his very first fishing trip. After 40 minutes, Darren Foster is almost ready to give up. They've got it. They've got it. They've got it. Got it. Just in threat of surgery. It does have a barb on it. I had given up. I just thought I'd give it one more shot and it worked. So he only has one little hole in his esophagus there, just a little puncture wound, so that should heal nicely. We've seen things from fish hooks to tampons to pantyhose and 
Most of the time we can get them out, but there are always the tough ones that get stuck in there and have to go to surgery, and Harley was looking like that, and Harley's a very lucky boy. We were sitting on 70 beats per minute before, we're now up to 74, so we're seeing a bit of a response. It's encouraging, but it's, it's by no means over. It's a tense time at the Bondi Clinic as Chris sews up Bella, who's dangerously weak after delivering six puppies. So we've got three girls and three boys. Wow. And the heart rate's coming up too. So it's all good. So far. A few more stitches and we're done. Her heart rate's come up to 85 now. Her colour's good. She, she's looking like she might just make it. But it didn't look that way for quite a while. Turns out the puppies and Chris have something in common, given it's past midnight. Why is that a significant time? Could it be, what, a special day? Oh, probably my birthday now. Oh, happy birthday. Poor girl. You should be really proud of her. Yep. She did really well. Six live puppies, six out of six. <laughs> They're tiny. You can pick them up if you like. Though Bella is still feeling the effects of the anaesthetic, the pups urgently need their first feed. These puppies are new to the world and they need all the help they can get. They need energy quickly. It's been a long night and John finally feels comfortable leaving Bella's side and going home. Thanks, John. See you, mate. So she's now at a normal temperature, which is, oh, I don't know, what do you reckon? A relief? No, not at all. Still to come on Bondi Vet, will the fragile Pablo survive the night? And a steep learning curve for Bella. Pablo, good morning Pablo. Bit of a sunbake, huh? The next day, Chris checks in on his patient. Remarkably, Pablo has survived after crash landing on a busy highway. You want the fish? Oh, Pablo, he likes the fish, huh? Even though there's been such a great improvement in his level of coordination and awareness overnight, and he looks like he's getting over that concussion, he still can't be released because he still has to build up those muscle and fat reserves. One's actually gone down a bit sideways. <laughs> if he was released like this and went back to a situation where there wasn't much food, he'd only last another couple of days before he was back to where he was yesterday. That way. And the fact is he mightn't be as lucky second time round. Better. Much better. Yes, At Sash, Harley, the world's worst fisherman, is ready for release. Oh, there's Dad! Well, he's huh? a very lucky boy. <laughs> That's good. Here's the hook. A dreaded hook. Late last night, the American staffy was just seconds away from having his esophagus cut open to remove a fish hook. Good Thank luck. you. Take care. All right, all no right. more fishing. No, no, no that's for it's, sure. It's a good result for Harley. He's got no permanent damage. He'll have to eat soft food for about a week and then he'll be back to normal. And I think we really gave him excellent treatment here and he just wasn't very grateful. He showed us his opinion of the place as he walked out the door. Cheeky bugger. Did you think we'd forgotten that it was somebody else's uh. birthday? <laughs> oh, my pooper doesn't work. <laughs> Very good. Nice. Oh. How's that? Back at Bondi, Bella is adjusting to the demands of motherhood. She just looks a bit overwhelmed by them, but I guess the, the natural process didn't occur. She didn't have to strain for a few hours to deliver the pups and, and be introduced to each one one at a time. She's had to come out of anaesthetic here and just be overwhelmed. And she doesn't know where they come from. So, Bella, I hate to say it, it is like looking in the mirror. <laughs> she seems relaxed when they drink from it, which is great, but she just needs to recognise their smell, lick them a few times, and, and that bond will develop. Bella's now ready to go home. Do you think there's any chance that any one of these could ever be as popular as she is with you? No. No. 
Yeah, never. Nobody replaced Bella. I was always pretty sure that Bella meant a lot to John, but then when you see Bella in the front seat with John, knowing the wife normally sits in the back, you've got to realise that, that dog means a lot to John. Oh, you know it, don't you? You know it, not just yet. Patience. And it's home time as well for the traffic stop of Pablo. People, um, people don't really accept you, do they? You notice that? Why is that, you reckon? He's in good enough shape to go back to his seaside address near where he was rescued. <laughs> this, oh, he's pooed on me. You worked out what's going on? He really looks a lot better since he's been with us. We bonded, you know. We're man enough to admit it. He just looks a lot more lively too, and his feathers are a lot more wider and brighter. And he just seems more proud in everything he does. He's swimming strongly and just taking it all in, working out where he is. But he'll find the rest of the pelicans, he'll be happy. Normally a vet for cats and dogs. There's nothing wrong with that. But occasionally, you know, you have to mix it up a bit, don't you? And just how much I'm about to mix it up, well, that's what worries me. Chris is answering a call from senior keeper Tim Faulkner at the Australian Reptile Park. Well, we've got a snake and uh, we've brought her out a winner and she's just off of food. She just hasn't pepped up. Okay. What sort of snake? One of the snakes has come out of its winter hibernation, but is still not eating. Her name is Atomic Betty. Oh, what? <laughs> Man, that's not a snake, that's a monster. Last time Chris confronted a snake at the reptile park, help. it was Queen it's Bee. Nice. She's having you for lunch. She that's weighs in at 35 kilograms. But Atomic Betty tips the scales at a massive 100 kilograms. And she's been off of food. For a period each year we cool her down mm. and winterise her. Um, now we've brought her back out of that, bumped her temperatures up, and normally she'd be looking for food. Whilst pythons don't eat every day, they do eat regularly, so the fact she hasn't eaten for three months, that's a long time. And she'd be starting to struggle because of that, so there must be something going on here. A reticulated python can easily kill a human by constriction. We're not too worried about the bite. Uh, it's, it's bad, the teeth are like razors and lots of them, but it's the coil, and it's the second coil and the third coil we're worried about, and they, they can just crush. Despite his reservations, Chris needs to get inside Atomic Betty's home for a closer examination. Not like we're dealing with a python that's got no previous convictions. Atomic Betty has struck before and she's really called around someone. So if she does that again and does it properly, then someone could be in a lot of trouble here. Let's get some people together and let's do it. Yep, I'll get the troops. Okay. See you soon. I put some local in, mate. I'm sorry. Bruno, a seven-month-old Boston Terrier, has just arrived at Bondi's referral hospital, Sash, in a critical condition. And he's actually been run over by his mother. The poor little guy's got a back leg which is snapped in half and he's also got a tear in his lung which is leaking. So the back leg is the least of his worries. We really need to just get that air out of his chest because that's what's going to kill him. Before a chest drain is inserted, Bruno's owner Jackie is allowed into the emergency room for a quick visit. Hey little man. Yes, your mum. Yeah, it's alright mum. Yeah, it's alright. I was driving up the driveway and when Bruno saw the car he raced over and I didn't see him at all. Yeah. Well, I went into panic mode to start with because we didn't think he was going to make it and just broke down basically. Yeah. He's a gorgeous dog. He's got a really sweet little nature. You know, it, it happens a lot, it's awful, because the owners feel so guilty and um, you know, I feel really feel for them, it's terrible. Andrew must now plunge a trocar into Bruno. Have you? The air that's trapped between Bruno's lung and chest wall has to be sucked out urgently before the puppy system crashes. Come on. 
So plan is Logan's on head. Uh, we got myself second, Luke third, Mick and Chris at the door. At the Lizzie's Australian Reptile Park, from the door. Tim's organised a strike team of six keepers. All good, let's do it. Their dangerous mission is to pin down the lethal atomic Betty so Chris can investigate why she's refusing to eat. Go, bring back, bring back, coils off. That's it. Right up, one more on. Over you switch hands. Keep that off. Coil it. Come on, Mick, jump in. Chris, can you come in? Yep. Yeah, we've got a problem with that coil on top. Just coil off, Chris. Oh, Someone on front. Right up, let's settle, let's settle. Easy. Hang on. Right. Obi, I'm gonna get neck with Obi, someone got back. Yeah. Right up, I'm gonna push back to you, Obi. Stop moving like that. Settle. Stop for a sec. Is that good? Nice cats, mate. Next on Bondi Vet, Bruno in danger as complications set in. It's a real race to suck the air back out before the animal crashes. And young cousins gravely concerned about their very sick Marie. You have to understand, they not only love this dog, they live their lives through Marie. So I need a heart. So a heart's going to be a third of the way between a head and a cloaca, which is what about there? All right, so it's a third. It's about, it's about here. Beautiful. Chris is checking out Atomic Betty, one of the most lethal snakes in the world. Hold on for a sec. Here we go. Everyone on. You all right? Yeah, pass me that. That's it. Right up, she's good again. You can see her relax <laughs> there. <laughs> the python is listless and hasn't eaten for more than three months. You can just imagine, when, once she wraps around, there's that much muscle around you that you just stand no chance. And no one can feel any bumps in the skin. There's no, no lesions or any sign of parasites there. All pretty good. Importantly also, her hydration was normal. So she wasn't dehydrated at all. So my feeling is, that she's come out of a hibernation a little bit slowly. What I might do is give her a vitamin B shot just to try and kickstart her whole system. Yeah, yeah good. Good, there we go. By giving her a hit of a B vitamins, she's going to be ready to, to take on the world, the keepers, vets. Yeah, someone just stay on that midsection so she can't come round. And we're just going to go one, two, three, hey, all yeah. out. Yeah. It became right. abundantly clear why she has that little name, Atomic Betty. Because when she goes, she goes off. I'm going to leave everyone out, back there. Go, go. Yep. Yeah. See you, Nobes. Get out, get out. Yep, no worries. You got, stop her, Nobes. Go, Chris. Did she get anyone? No. <laughs> she was just scared, she hey? She was saving that up, wasn't she? Oh, she didn't, she didn't try to bite. She was just scared and just tried to get away. I'm going to leave everyone out, back out. Go, go. Fingers crossed after going through all of that, the vitamin injection does its job and Betty does get her appetite back. We'll know in a few days' time whether she's ready for dinner. Can't wait to see what's on the menu. Marie, this isn't the normal Marie. I know. Come no. through. Chris's torrid day is not over yet. That evening, another call out. She ate the like but the entire the, bottom this of it, which bottom is about bit. a metre and a half long. Okay. Worried cousins Genevieve and Hilary are almost certain their Pomeranian Marie has swallowed some bikini string. The fact she's got a back arched says that she's she's certainly sore there. Mm. Well, she's letting me feel all of it apart from one area. You hear that sound? Oh. The two 19-year-olds arrived home to find their six-month-old puppy vomiting. I didn't hear a peep out of her and I actually thought someone took her because it was that quiet. Hilary and Genevieve are two of our most colourful, interesting clients. What's that? That's, this is like, you know when you're friend. a baby and you have a blanket and you like grow up and you take it with you, that's what Marie does with her hat. You have to understand they not only love this dog, they live their lives through Marie. And I just said to her, Marie, I don't, don't think you're old enough yet to handle a mobile phone. So Twitter's out of the question. <laughs> she has her own <laughs> sombrero, um, which can be seen on her Facebook page. She has 81 friends at the moment, including Chris. It's just hard to actually keep it quite a serious mind. You do actually have to keep a focus and realise that you've got a sick dog here. 
Chris is hoping x-rays will help him confirm if the swimwear string is causing a blockage. It's like a, a, a drawstring, it pulls tight and actually locks that intestine up into a loop. And if that's the case, that intestine can actually die, die off and that can be really serious really quickly. Come on. <laughs> At SASH, Andrew's attempting to put a chest drain into car accident victim Bruno. You've got to get it in the right place because if you're wrong, you can hit the lung, you can hit the heart and that would just be disastrous. You're actually making a hole in the chest wall. Okay. So it's a real race to seal that off and suck the air back out before the animal crashes. Oh, it's dropping in you. Bruno's blood oxygen levels suddenly start dropping. If they plummet too far, the puppy could go into cardiac arrest. Come on, buddy. Ideally, his blood oxygen level should be above 95%, and now it's dropping to below 85. We just need to stabilise him quickly. How can you go from 96 to 85? Two seconds. But only a few minutes later, the tension starts to ease as Bruno's blood oxygen levels begin to climb. 94. That's a good number. Bruno's now being hooked up to a pump that will keep sucking the air out of his chest overnight. There you go, little man. He says, what's going on? He's eight kilograms. He's taken on a car that weighs practically a tonne. I mean, he's alive, but he's not out of the woods yet. It's OK, lie right down. OK, read. X-ray. Chris is hoping x-rays will confirm whether or not six-month-old Marie has swallowed a large section of bikini string. The unfortunate thing about a swimming costume is that it doesn't show up in x-rays. It's not like bone, but the characteristic signs of blockage or an internal problem are a gas buildup and also an intestine that is all tightly coiled up. You know, it's, it's basically uncomfortable and it's inflamed. Do you want to come through and... Yes. Have a look at my room. I'll show the x-rays as well. The problem I face is that I know how much Marie means to them and they're going to be looking for an answer right now. The other problem I have is that I don't have one. But what happens if you choose to operate and then it's not in there? Exactly. This dog's essentially my baby. Um, Hilary um, bought her for me. <laughs> in, um, all, in all seriousness, Genevieve's brother died about six months ago. Obviously she was beside herself and we just moved out together. I mean, we don't do anything without Marie. The other day we went and saw a psychic and Marie came with us. <laughs> and um, he's been to the museum, yeah, the art gallery. She saw Spider-Man. She's pretty much one of us. I have a laugh with the girls about the way they treat Marie. But when you know what they've been through, it makes you understand why that little dog is so important to them. Marie will have to stay in the clinic overnight and the girls have decided she needs VIP treatment. Are we like able to bring stuff? What do you mean by a few things? Just got a shoe and just, just got a bed. And her book, she might like, she might have like a picture of us. Take her message here is a few things. Okay. I'll see you soon. A few things, you reckon? We'll see. Coming up on Bondi Vet, Bruno's battle is a long way from over. Good almighty. And Chris faces a tough decision. Marie's acting like the cause insider, but we can't be sure. So what do you do? <laughs> the cousins have arrived back at the Bondi clinic with their own special care package for their sick puppy Marie. All right, let's go and find a place for it all. Okay, correct. Um, am I meant to be reading that to her tonight, or? If you could, we're just, just a picture. I, I've marked right. the page where we're up yeah. to. So Come on, let's go. Where's she going? Hillary and Genevieve believe the six-month-old puppy has eaten some bikini string. It appears to have caused a serious blockage. Is she going to say how Mary? No, we'll leave the religion for the camera. <laughs> Good night, squish. 
So if anything happens during the night, if there's any change, I'll let you know. But if she remains stable, we'll talk in the morning and then decide whether she goes to surgery. If nothing's changed, she probably will go to surgery first thing. At SASH, Bruno, who was run over by his owner, has managed to survive a life-threatening torn lung. X-rays have confirmed it's completely healed. Now the emergency team can start operating on his badly fractured back leg. Bruno's battle's not over yet. Going into surgery is going to be the biggest test on his lungs. When he's under anaesthetic, that could re-rupture the torn lung and then we could go straight back to square one. A specially contoured plate is moulded to the bone and attached with a series of screws to stabilise the leg. It's a difficult operation to get the leg aligned perfectly, but after several attempts, Andrew is finally happy. That's come together really nicely. It's worth the struggle. His future's looking pretty good, yeah. I think um, Jackie would be very happy with, with him in a, in a couple of weeks' time and he'll be running around the place again. Since I'm exhausted, Mum, I need to sleep. So she was a graduate of puppy school. Yeah, she did really well. Really? Yeah. Uh, you, you'll understand why I'm questioning that. Cool. <laughs> She's not happy. She must be sore or something. Yeah, no, I think she is. The next morning, Chris and head vet nurse Neil are confronted with a very cranky, sore Marie. The Pomeranian's condition has deteriorated overnight. More x-rays are taken but they're still inconclusive. This is the big issue. We cannot be sure that that cord is actually inside Marie. Yet Marie looks worse, so what do you do? I know the concept of a surgery probably doesn't appeal to you too much. It's a bit daunting. Yeah, but the concept of... I'd rather her like go in and be overdone within an hour than be in pain for three days. Yes, exactly. So. That's my thinking. Marie, did we bring you some flowers? Look! As you would if anyone was sick, you'd come bearing gifts. So we bought red flowers, um, the tulips, which are Marie's favourite, and the get well balloon, which hopefully she won't chew and ingest. My only worry is the girls don't truly realise just how serious this surgery is. The big unknown is what we see when we get in there. Is there a cord? Is there not? And if there is a cord, what sort of damage has it done? Is it causing a basically the, the intestine to die off. If that's the case, we've got a big surgery. Still to come on Bondi Vet. After three months of starvation, will Atomic Betty finally eat again? We're gonna offer her a food item today and see if she takes it. She's interested, look at that tongue flick. Yeah, nothing yet. Chris has been forced to open up Marie to find out whether a piece of swimwear cord is causing a dangerous blockage. Huh. All right. So there's a little bit of swimsuit actually inside her cecum. Now, if it's been sitting there and, and essentially fermenting and causing irritation, then that may explain why she's been sick. It's almost like appendicitis for a dog. It's proof at last that Marie did make a meal of that bikini. But there is some good news. The thing is where it caused the problem is actually pretty close to home. It's only got to go down the rest of the colon and then it's out. So rather than making a cut and actually potentially causing an infection, I'm actually going to milk it through, through the colon so it only has it maybe a few centimetres to travel and actually then leave the body. No running, please. With the bikini string almost out, it's now up to Marie to finish the job herself. The wait begins. <laughs> You're a good boy, Bruno. You're a good boy. Hey, I take this for a kiss. Thank you. Yes, this is a good boy. Lucky survivor Bruno is ready to go home. It's all clear for his lungs, and his legs should be fully healed in eight weeks. Hopefully, he'll, he'll have learnt his lesson. He'll steer clear of cars from now on. But uh, they do tend to forget. 
Yes, she is. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? It's so beautiful. It's shaking like a leaf. Yes. Well, he knows you were behind the wheel of the car that got him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> say that. Gorgeous no. boy. Okay. He's got to learn to run a bit faster. Yeah, you got to learn to drive a bit slower. Yeah. He's such a cute boy. Oh, it's really good. So pleased to have him coming back home. Yeah, it's a relief. It's, I can stop worrying about him now. <laughs> Little tough nut. Now, this is a small goat compared to normal. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim is about to find out if Chris's vitamin shot has worked and kick-started Atomic Betty's appetite. Well, it's been a week since she's had her injection, so hopefully that's pepped her up. We're going to offer her a food item today and see if she takes it. Oh, she's interested, look at that. There we go, you beauty. Good. We've got to feed the snake something, whether it's rabbits, rats or goats. I mean, for us, it's, it's relatively similar, but I mean, the goats for human consumption, so it's not, a, it's not someone's little pet. An hour later, and Atomic Betty has a very full belly. We're just so happy that it's worked. You know, this is what we wanted. Bit, bit of privacy, please. Two days later, the bikini munching Marie finally answers the call of nature. <sighs> nice little present. Yeah, now I've got to go through and look for it. The answer could be in the bag. <laughs> Chris has only found a small portion of the swimwear cord that went missing. Just the thickness and the fact it's got that elastic there, it's swimming costume without a doubt. Where the rest is remains a mystery. <laughs> Later, Chris carries out a special house call. Yeah, just yeah. gently, gently, gently. Hilary and Genevieve have bought Marie a new bed for the big occasion. Just seriously though, you do have to keep it quiet because she will pop those stitches out if, if she keeps on running around. She does that a lot. All right, I'll, um, I'll see you later. Thank you so, Thanks so much, Chris. Chris. We really appreciate it. And Marie does as well. We'll, um, we'll definitely be sending um, updates. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll, Miss you all. Thank you, Chris. And we'll see you guys. soon. You, Marie. Bye bye. 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 Wow. Hi. How are you? Going? Are you? Hey. Come in, come in. Well, let's have a look. Um, they're upstairs, yep. so it's all the way up to the third floor. Chris has been called out okay by Barry that? from Wires um, Wildlife Rescue nephew, to help Jonathan? a stranded family. She doesn't like me being here, and she's keeping a very close eye. A mother duck and her nine newly hatched ducklings are trapped on a third floor balcony. Like There's no food, like water or protection from predators. Sooner or later someone's going to have to feed them. And I don't know what to feed them so that I'd ring you guys. <laughs> oh, here we go. A bit of eggshell there, but look at this. A nest. Oh, amazing. So they've obviously hatched out here, and not, popped up here, yeah, and jumped down there. And still not hurt themselves. And still it. not hurt themselves. It's very common for ducks to decide to have their eggs by a swimming pool and then try to raise the ducklings in the swimming pool. But you very rarely see it three or fours above a swimming pool. She's got close, but not quite close enough. There's only one place for them to go, and that's three floors down. And I don't think they're going to survive that fall. Without shade, the ducklings will quickly dehydrate and die. Thanks, Barry. So let's get it come to the side of the, of the net. The family needs an urgent change of address. I'll come in from here and from above. Okay, good. Good boy. Good boy. Meanwhile, the Zenos family are preparing to bring in their crippled two-year-old Diesel to see Chris. See how long it takes him to sit? You should see him try to get out. Diesel's part of the family, so it's a case of when he's suffering, we suffer. To, to, to see him uncomfortable, uh, yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking. 
At just seven months of age, the golden retriever slipped and fell and was taken to a vet for what should have been a routine knee operation. Diesel. The surgery was unsuccessful and now Diesel struggles just to get around. It's really hard because he's still so young and he does want to run and he does want to play and he just can't. Well, he's like a little brother to me and like, I really love him so we just want him to get better. It, it makes us sad as well. We rang every single vet in Bondi until I found Dr Chris Brown because Emmanuel and I swear by the show Bondi Vet. So we're hoping that he'll be able to help Diesel and us. I've got to hope a maternal instinct takes over and she doesn't want to get away from us. Chris is closing in on the mother duck and her nine ducklings trapped on a third story balcony. It's critical to catch mum first so she doesn't fly off and abandon her babies. Good one. After a struggle, Chris secures the mother. It's all right. It's all right. But she's not quite finished yet. She had a fair bit of fight. Obviously the kids aren't really, you know, wearing her out just yet. Big hands can be very handy. <laughs> the anxious mother and ducklings are now off to the Bondi clinic for a health check. When Chris arrives at the clinic, a wounded cat is already waiting. This is Lucky. Yeah. And Lucky uh, is usually very outgoing and has lots of fun. You're <laughs> 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 safer in there, aren't you? This is not like him. Usually he's the first one out of the cage. Five-year-old Lucky has been in a fight and come out second best. Owner Stephen is worried that after two days, so the Lucky yeah. is getting much worse. Uh -huh. So there's the bigger one there, yep. and he's got a matching one here. But they're very tender to touch as well. So that kind of looked to me like it could have been a dog or another big cat. Oh, the Lucky has invented a new fighting move <laughs> involving a, a back kick of some description. Kung Fu, Kung Fu cat. Yeah. All the more likely scenario is that Lucky was running away at the yeah, time. I think that's probably Which, which that. doesn't paint, a, a, I guess, a bright picture in terms of Lucky's A, fighting ability or B, bravery. But when Chris shaves the affected area, he quickly discovers oh, Lucky's buddy. wounds are much more serious than he expected. Oh, hey, buddy. I can see why he's sore. Yeah. Now that we've shaved the area, we can see that it's not a dog bite, it looks like cat claws. I think a cat has actually come in from behind right. and gone whack, <laughs> whack. The thing about a cat getting into a fight is the wounds are often the least of your concerns. What is the biggest worry is actually the infection that follows it because those claws actually inject bacteria and those bacteria, once they're under the skin, breed prolifically. Essentially, Lucky's whole body is becoming toxic. Still to come on Bondi Vet, a tough wait for Diesel's family. <coughs> and later, the feisty ducklings try to make a break. See that? Oh, yeah. There's actually a pocket underneath there. I inject in there. Ooh. At Bondi, Lucky's fighting a serious infection, mm. contracted after a street fight with another cat. It can be very serious. It can set up infections in the lungs or even the other organs. It needs to be treated right now. Saline is being used to flush the bacteria out of Lucky's wounds. Yeah, it's the price you pay for being Mr. Tuppy. There is pus now dripping out of this one here, so... I'll give him a shot of antibiotics now yeah. and also an anti-inflammatory just to make him feel better and, and try to take out some of that, that swelling as well. It's freezing. Okay. Turns out Lucky's owner Stephen has also been in plenty of hospitals. 2002 I was diagnosed with a large and operable malignant brain tumour. Yeah. And he was kind of a gift what? to me from a breeder. Yeah. And she said, I'll give you this one. I said, I don't know what to call him. 
because I'd just survived my radiotherapy, and that's why he's called Lucky. <laughs> wow. You're important, you know. Sure is. You big camera hog. <laughs> It's an amazing story and when you understand the history of Stephen's brain tumour and how he came to have Lucky, you realise that this is a very tight bond. The two of them mean the world to each other and for Lucky even to be slightly off worries Stephen. <laughs> Champion do you think Lucky? By points decision? I think there'd be some sort of inquiry if you were actually to be awarded, <laughs> awarded that fight, Lucky. Lucky should fully recover within a week. Hopefully, there'll be no rematch with his nemesis. So you say thank you, Dr. Chris. Thank you, Lucky. Thank you. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> <laughs>
But if we can't get him better than, than this, I don't think that's a quality of life for him that's, that's worth persevering with. You can see just how far away they are from, from flying. That's their wing. It's tiny. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is giving the noisy ducklings one last examination. Chris rescued the nine newborns and their mother from their dangerous home on a high-rise balcony. They're so small, they are very vulnerable. And they're going to need to swim and, and run away from predators and going to have to keep up with mum. Your legs are working OK, aren't they? Mum's quite confused. You can hear her just making a few little noises, almost talking to her babies, just saying, guys, you OK? I can hear you. You're distressed. Oh, oh, hello. And each time she makes a noise, they make a louder one back. Let's keep it down a notch. Hmm? When Chris gets Mum out, she's not happy. What was I saying? Hey, hey, strong, eh? Hey? Just feeling it there, and she's actually in pretty good condition. The mother duck is ready to take her brood back to the wild, but there are no guarantees about their future. I am actually a little bit nervous about the release. Sure, they're fit, they're healthy, they're ready to go, but the harsh reality is I can't really control what happens out there in that pond. They are going to need some luck. Let's hope they've got it. Be brave, OK? Good boy. Diesel is ready for his major leg surgery. Come on. You'll have to come with him now. I think he was starting to tremble there. He realised that we weren't going in the whole way. OK, we better go. He's not going to cooperate. No. Now that he's nervous, I'm nervous. It's hard to know exactly how bad that is, but it's certainly bad enough that we, there's got to be some damage to his cruise ship. Anyway, we'll know soon enough. We're just going to do an arthrotomy, which means open up the joint and have a look and see what's going on inside. And then once we've done that, uh, we'll then look at seeing what we can do to stabilise his joint. Mmm, it has not been a happy joint for a long time. A needle in a haystack. As surgery continues, Andrew makes a surprise discovery. This cruciate is actually intact. The cause of Diesel's problem is not the cruciate ligament as first thought, but a badly dislocated kneecap. Unfortunately for Diesel, I think this finding is actually worse for him. Uh, it's just uh, going to make it even harder to get that knee functional. Andrew now needs to drag the kneecap back into its original groove. After 17 months of deterioration, it's going to be a tough challenge. This I'm cutting off the front portion of the shin bone, which is where the kneecap tendon attaches to the shin. And I've got to move that part of the bone around so it lines up better. Oh, this bone's so soft. Mm. Oh, butter. Unfortunately, there's a chance this won't work. Next on Bondi Vet. At the release, trouble for the mother duck and her family. Oh my shit! And a worrying time for Andrew. I just fear that he's going to blow this thing apart, so. Oh, he's scaring me silly. We're pretty spot. Beautiful. A fair bit of cover and so on. Yeah, so if they don't really like in the water, they can always come out through here. Chris and Barry from Wires are at a park to return the rescued ducks to the wild. What's good about this is that it's not too overpopulated with birds. There are no predators of theirs, so all the species here are pretty placid. They should welcome our new additions with open arms. Oh, that's their first ever time they've been in water and they're amazing swimmers. It's incredible, isn't it? So now it's the moment of truth as Chris anxiously watches the new residents settle in. Oh, a bit of a scuffle. Oh, jeez. They were actually attacking them. Hey. 
boy, take it easy. Just take it easy. Good boy. Are you rearing the dough, aren't you? At Sash, Andrew is now optimistic about Diesel's recovery, despite his worries during the complex knee surgery. He's quite comfortable on it, and when you move it up and down and flex it up, it's not as crunchy as it was before the surgery, so oh, that's, that's a good sign. Good boy. Oh, slow it down. But it will take at least six weeks rehabilitation before Andrew will know whether the operation has been a success. He's a bit of a nut and he's just going to do something silly when he gets home and try and charge up and down a set of stairs or and he's I just fear that he's going to blow this thing apart so oh, he's very silly. Go on Diesel. How are you going guys? Hello. Do you want to come home? Yeah. Remember, you've got to promise to be very good. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to have your hands full, you really are. Yeah. Okay. Andrew is just going to have a heart in the mouth the whole time. They've just got to look after him so well. They've got to support his back end with a towel. I mean, it's just going to be a, uh, just a 24 hour effort for him. Look, truly, take him home, see how you go. If you're having a heart attack with him, yeah. bring him back. Okay. We don't mind having him. Slowly, Diesel. Come on, Diesel. Slowly, mate. So take your time. It's okay. Come on, Diesel. Oh, jeez. So, actually attacking them. At the lake, Chris is facing his worst nightmare. The mother is under attack, and her ducklings are left defenceless. Hey. There's obviously a massive territorial battle going on. The worry is that one of those bigger ducks will actually have a go at one of the ducklings and one good peck could really seriously damage one of those ducklings or even kill it. Should they try to drown it? Give them something back though. The mother duck is fighting for her family. Go mum. Adopted a bit of a defensive position for her. All of a delayed. sudden, the attack ends. Amazingly, several other adult ducks have stepped in to help protect the newcomers. For some reason, they've bonded with her instantly and, you know, they're really helping her out. It's good to see. It just shows you just how strong her maternal instincts is. She's willing to fight as strong as she possibly can just to protect them. For those ducklings, she's the best ally they could ever hope for. it difficult just to walk a few weeks ago, he's now able to run and play with his family after major knee surgery. Diesel! It's like we've got a different dog. It's like we handed him a dog and got another one back. He's just healthy, he's happy, he's not in any pain. He's got energy to play with the kids. He's, he's going swimming. That's a big fella. All the things we wanted to do with him before we couldn't, and now it's, it's, it's fantastic. Hi, Chris. How are you? This is, this is Diesel, the, the new and improved. It's the Turbo Diesel. Look at you. <laughs> Diesel's running style may not be perfect, but he finally has real quality of life. Come on. Come on. I don't know what we would have done if we didn't find Chris. Definitely between uh, Chris and Sash. It's, uh, Best call I made. <laughs> he's having fun. He's having a ball. Oh, I've just recently received an email from Catherine and Scott who live on this cattle property. Now, they've got a weird problem. It involves a dachshund and a cow. And the bizarre thing is the dachshund could very well be in trouble. How are you? I'm Chris. Chris. How are you? Nice to meet you. Hi, Hello, Chris. Catherine. Thanks for coming out. I've got to say, I've seen some weird things, but I've never seen anything like this. Schnitzel is just 16 months old. Two months ago, the dachshund began displaying obsessive behaviour with newborn calves. It's got to the point where he just will not leave them. He sleeps with them night and day. And unless we dragged him inside to eat, um, I think he would just stop eating altogether. What do you think they're offering that you're not? <coughs> I don't know. I don't let him lick my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> 
Have you ever tried? <laughs> no. We, as long as he doesn't there. do that to you. No, no, that's right. no, he won't do what I'd be worried about. Won't, won't be doing that. And the calf's a lot bigger, and with a good kick, it could really do him damage. Exactly. I mean, it could, could kill him. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we were worried about. Mm. I kind of would notice he's got a bandage on his leg. What's yeah. going on there? A bit of tough love. One of his friends stood on his toe. It's one thing to be trodden on, but it's another thing to be kicked in the head. That could be deadly. <laughs> At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Boris has just been rushed in after suddenly collapsing at home. He seemed very distressed and then I noticed that I didn't think he could get up. He appeared to have, I suppose, the equivalent of a stroke or something like that. He just, just didn't seem with it. Oh, good man. Have some of this good stuff. It looks like he's having a problem with his balance. His eyes are rolling around in, this, in the sockets and he's twisting, his whole body's twisting and he, and he can't balance. The worst case scenario for Boris is a brain tumour. Lisa's hoping it will be another problem with the brain called vestibular disease. Their body can't work out where it is in space and it actually feels like they're in a roller coaster going upside down in a washing machine and they have no idea what's going on. They're just feeling really dizzy. I don't think he likes you, Schnitzel. Back at the farm, Schnitzel's bizarre obsession is putting him in real danger. They've actually broken one of his toes. Oh, really? Yeah. He's got a few issues, I think, in the mental department. Yeah. Mm. He's probably mad would be the nicest way you could put it. <laughs> Something really bad could happen to him if he keeps it up any longer. Catherine is also worried about her children. When Jake goes near the calves, <laughs> Schnitzel will actually growl at him. We're not sure if Schnitzel would ever bite him, but it's, yeah, it's a little bit of a worry. We're going to put some faith in Chris. We're hoping he'll come up with an answer for us. That's a boy. I know, everything's spinning. See what happens if you prop him up and... Oh, Alright, okay. Right. Right. okay, he can't do it. 13-year-old right, Boris know, has collapsed know, and can right. no longer stand up. Distressed owner Anne-Marie and her daughter um, Felicity are waiting like for news about their old friend. So it's something that we call idiopathic vestibular disease. And idiopathic means we don't know what causes it. Now, there can be other more nasty things in an older dog that can cause this and things like a, a tumour in the brain. So if he doesn't improve, then I think it would be a good idea to look at doing further testing. OK, I'm really hoping that it's the, the, <laughs> the common disease that the, all the old dogs get and they, they tend to get better and go home and, and as if it never happened. And. Um, there is a small chance that it is something more nasty, but let's think positive for now and, and see what he does over the next two or three days. Okay. Some tissues. Thank you. <laughs> next on Bondi Vet, Chris is called out to an emergency on the farm. <laughs> and a runaway cat in serious trouble. I'd rather prefer him breaking his leg than being dead. I'm starting to form a theory. There are some calves that are a little bit older than this one. And I just want to see how it goes with those. What is going on in there? Chris is on a call out in the country, trying to unravel the mystery behind Schnitzel's bizarre and dangerous obsession with newborn calves. But see that? A quick lick and he's gone. And I reckon if we follow him here, ha ha, and look where he goes straight back. That's really interesting because he's more interested in the younger ones and there's a reason for that. The obvious solution is for Schnitzel to be locked up but that's not working. I get the impression he doesn't really like being left alone, Catherine. 
No, if we lock him up like this, he gets very upset, barks and whines. I might grab him. I just want to see something with the, the other real farm dogs mm -hmm. and see how he goes with those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yet to see one of them even make eye contact with him. He just doesn't it's, exist. No, no. What's going on, mate? I do find it fascinating that even with members of his own species, they just ignore him. They give him a big brush. This situation just has to make Stencil feel quite alone. You've always got to feel sorry for the little guy. He tries so hard. You know, I was telling you that he has had some strange friends in the past. Mm. Well, we've got some video footage of, um, of some of his piglet friends. <laughs> He actually taught these ones to use the dog door. Keeps strange company, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what that really does show me is that Stitzel, apart from being mad, is certainly needy. He's always seeking out company. He doesn't like to be left alone. But there's got to be something else that he's getting out of these relationships. Thankfully, I do have a few theories. I'm just going to test them out, and fingers crossed I'm on the right track here. Sash, Lisa is now convinced that 13-year-old Boris is suffering from geriatric vestibular disease. It's a condition that attacks old dogs' brains, robbing them of their balance. Give you something to make you feel a bit better, eh? Hey? It's all right, sweetheart. The terrified okay. lad is still dizzy, but anti-nausea medicine will help him cope. Yeah, you feel a bit better with that. I hate this disease because I want to be able to explain to him that, that what's going on and that there's there's hope, but um, the poor dogs, they just feel horrendous and they don't know why. Rest is the answer. Recovery can take between two days and two weeks. I just want him to sleep and then calm down and then I can have a better assessment of him. While Boris's world is still spinning out the back, new patient Sandy is complaining loudly in reception. We've just found him after a couple of weeks of being missing and uh, it looks like he's um, been hit by a car and he was trapped under the neighbour's house. Hey, come on, sweetheart, we'll get you out. Incredibly, the three-year-old Siamese survived a badly broken leg and no food for two weeks. Ooh. It's quite a nasty fracture. Their bones are really quite displaced and mm. um, and I guess the really hard thing about it is the fact it's two weeks down the track and they're trying to they're gonna they're try and to stay use, there now. Yeah. yeah. Turns out this is not the first time the Siamese adventurer has gone missing. We got into um, our cleaner's ute and went for a week's holiday in the back of the ute, so that was fun. There's going to be a lot of fibrous tissue around that and scar tissue and it's going to make it very difficult to loosen things up and get the bone back in the right position. I'd rather prefer him breaking his leg than being dead. <laughs> ah, Chris, just a man I wanted to see. Have I got a job for you? What? Oh, car for the broken leg. Chris is serious? attempting to psychoanalyse the obsessed schnitzel. But Scott has discovered an injured calf. Broken front leg. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Schnitzel's therapy will have to wait. How old is this car? Do you know? It wouldn't be more than a week, I don't think, by yeah. the look of it. Yeah. Scott's keen to test out the city vet to see if he can cope with a bush emergency. So what's the plan, mate? Well, when you grab it, if it starts to bellow, then not only the mother will come, then quite a few others will come to help out as well. So if it gets too close and personal for you, just let the calf go. And yeah, everybody don't... will think, yeah, gutless, but yeah. You, you can live with that. You just tell me when. Oh, now. Right? Still to come on Bondi Vet, high-tech surgery for Sandy. It's a case of uh, cruel to be kind. And a bush emergency for a young calf with a bad break. Mum behind us keeping a pretty close eye on proceedings.
the filthy rot. Hit run victim Sandy is about to undergo major reconstructive surgery for his shattered back leg. The struggle with this case is going to be getting the fracture reduced so back into the right position because it's been sitting there for two weeks. I'm just incising over the fracture site now. You can see how unstable this still is. The fracture is so serious that external scaffolding will be needed. Andrew will drill pins through the bone and skin and connect them to bars outside. You've got to make sure that it's in the centre of the bone. If it's slightly off centre, there's a possibility it'll crack out the other side. It's a critical part of the operation. Can we have that pin cutter, please? No, I'm pleased with that. The results look good, but Sandy, the intrepid adventurer, will have to put up with the scaffolding for at least eight weeks. He won't be able to jump onto the sofa, certainly won't be able to climb trees, climb up curtains, and he'll be housebound, and I'm sure he'll hate that, but it's a case of uh, cruel to be kind. Here you go now. Meanwhile, out in the bush, no such state-of-the-art equipment for Chris. So as you get stepped on there, it's unstable too, it does move immediately there and also a little bit laterally. And while those bone fragments are moving on each other, they're not going to heal? No, no. Right. Well, you see them when they carry them, a lot of time they will actually flap from side to side and that's, yeah. that just about makes you grit your teeth. Yeah. It's got to hurt. Yeah, exactly. It's got mum behind us, keeping a pretty close eye on proceedings and she young um, people. Come on. They do get distressed when they know that their calves are distressed. If, if this calf is actually the blood. Chris needs a splint to keep the heifer's leg stable. A piece of poly pipe from the back of the ute does the job. Soaring? Not on you. You can relax. This is how you do it out here, is it? Very inventive, huh? Yeah. I'd reckon the owners of one of the poodles back in Bondi would handle it if I'd set them home one of these on their leg. Well, you may not get your bill paid, eh? So you've just got to go with what you've got. While well, it's not the typical way a vet would normally fix a fracture, that's effective. I didn't exactly expect to be doing this, so there's no plaster in the bag. Oh, I thought you were always prepared. <laughs> there you go, girl. So you're taking a bit of weight on it. Yeah. The heifer is now mobile enough to keep up with her mum and not be picked off by dingoes. Oh, well done. Can you give that a pass, Mike? Oh, just, eh? Just, just, yeah, 55%. <laughs> just. <laughs> well, he's obviously proved that he sort of knows a little bit about being a vet, but we'll see how we go sorting schnitzel out. That'll be sort of more of a test of the mind, I believe. Just hoping this little interlude's bought me a bit of time. I've got Scott a little bit on side, because schnitzel is still to be solved. Is that right? Oh, no, 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 no. What are you doing? Oh, no scratches. Hit run victim Sandy is recovering from his operation, but is showing no gratitude to his surgeon. <laughs> no, we're naughty. All right. Do it. Outside, Sandy's extended family have just arrived for a visit, including twins Thomas and James. Who's for? Who's Sandy? How you going? Sandy. Yeah, we got Sandy here. You're going to give Sandy a kiss? Aww. Did you want to show him your pictures? It's been one of the hardest two and a half weeks. You know, you just, just have this cloud hanging over your whole life because, you know, some, someone's missing a member of the family. Where's he gone? He's gone under the table now. There you go. He hasn't lost that adventure. It's no. it just some spirit, has he? No, you won't be able to fix that. No, no. <laughs> Normal walking is actually good for the fracture, it'll stimulate it to heal, um, but putting too much pressure on it, like he suddenly charges off after something, puts a lot of pressure through the pins and they can potentially break through the bone. He's certainly had a few lives. He's obviously meant for this earth. Okay, Chris, you've had schnitzel on your leather couch today. You've had a chance to psychoanalyze him. There's been plenty to do, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. It's crunch time at the farm. 
Has he come up with a cure for Schnitzel's bizarre and dangerous love of calves? The first reason he doesn't, apart from being mad, is the fact that when you look around the farm, all the other animals ignore him. Mm. He's just a little guy with no friends. But the thing about the calves is, they don't. They sit there and they let him do it. Finally, an animal cares about me. Yeah. The second reason though, and you're wondering about why he only obsesses over the really young ones, and then as time goes on, he gets less interested. Loses interest, he yeah. Don't. The reason for that is that when a calf's in the placenta, it's bathing in a rich soup of pheromones, essentially, of nutrients. When that calf comes out, it wrecks, almost sends him into a frenzy. Yeah. Which is he's in right now. <laughs> so what do we do? Well, I hate to say it, we actually have to bath the calves to we remove those it. odors. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can see how it makes sense. It's possible, I suppose. Proof will be in the pudding, won't it? We'll see what happens. It's just like a dog, really. Hmm, well, it probably doesn't shake itself at the end. Oh, you'll see. <laughs> We've got to really target the smelly spots, which is around the, the face and the ears, and also around the back end, too. He's a bit frightened there. So I guess part two is a bit of calf cologne. So the Vicks Vapor Up, dogs just hate this smell. It's quite a powerful odour. So right now, we have our big test. I'm hoping the smell is going to override that need of schnitzels to have company and that need of schnitzels to find those pheromones. Fingers crossed. Righto, Harry, release the beast. Righto, Harry, release the beast. <laughs> At the farm, Catherine and Scott are about to find out if Chris's soap and Vic solution will stop Schnitzel obsessing over newborn calves. Nowhere to go, Schnitzel. He does not like that. <laughs> Schnitzel. <laughs> Don't come to me, I did this to you. Taking away your mate. Buy you want to be a people dog now, do you? Buy it him, Schnitzel. One more sniff. Ooh. He's a rotten bugger, isn't he? You know, he's ruined it. Go on, Stitzel. What about your friend? There you go. Success. As for the calves, peace at last. Well, I'll make you a deal. I'll catch them, you wash them and fix them. That sounds almost <laughs> fair. <laughs> He's still a bit wobbly. That's a boy. At Sash, at less than 24 hours after Look being struck down by a brain disease, oh, the lucky oh. Boris is now eating and able to stand up. The poor dog, I, I don't know what he was thinking yesterday when everything was spinning around for him. It was like he was on a psychedelic roller coaster. Time to go to mum. He's not totally better, he's still walking like a drunk man, but hopefully within the next few days and up to a few more weeks, he'll make a full recovery. He's a different dog, isn't he? He sure is. <laughs> Hello. There's mum. Hello. Yes. You can smell what I got in my hand, don't you? I think he's looking about 300% better than he did yesterday. As you saw him, he was a very sick dog. So to have this turnaround in 24 hours is, is miraculous. Yeah, because I thought we'd lost him yesterday. Very good act. You're not getting out. Ah. At home, hit run victim Sandy is being nursed back to health, but the Siamese is sick of his prison. With help from friends and family, an outside cat run is now ready to go. Today is the first day that we're going to introduce it to Sandy, so it'll be uh, an interesting thing to watch. Oh, he's loving the fresh air. Look at that. Look at the nose going. And look at all this, see? It stops you getting out on the road. And then you can pretend you're in the jungle. You've got to look after them and take responsibility and, you know, and give them love and affection because ultimately they need you. You're not trying to get an escape plan happening, are you there? Oh, I guess I'd better take it for a ride on the bike and put some cows out. Chris has one last suggestion to help Schnitzel. He wants Catherine and Scott to get the Dachshund a new playmate all of his own. Scott's often working outside and I'm going to work. The kids are at school, so I can see how I'm getting another dog. It would actually be a really good idea for him. Maybe he's looking for some um, more dependable friends that are going to be around more often for him. <laughs> Even the ultimate sceptic, Farmer Scott, reluctantly acknowledges a job well done. Success. 
despite the greatest of doubters. Oh, you're the master. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Jake. Thank you, that means a lot. We can now leave this property, head held high, and with Schnitzel, back with the family. Got this message from the Bondi lifeguards, right? Now, they reckon they've got a rabbit. Of course they've got a rabbit, because there's so many rabbits just grazing on the beach here. Now, this is, has to be a setup. Dino. Hi, mate. How are you, buddy? Good, Chris. We've been waiting for you. Yeah, I'll bet, I'll bet. So, the rabbit. The rabbit's up there on, uh, on duty. <laughs> what the hell is this? Maxi, this is nice, I like this. It suits you. It's got ears on me as well. It's got ears on me. <laughs> How'd you find it? Just down North Wondai, near the outdoor gym there. We were just like running in the bush and kept running through our legs. It took us about like an hour to catch it. The lifeguards were alerted up to the lost yeah, bunny at 7am. Their Seriously? first rescue of the day. Hilarious. Yeah, if it had gone on the road, it would have been a pretty sad sight. But yeah, thankfully it didn't and uh, it's worked out really well. I well, think it pissed on me. <laughs> <laughs> the bunny appears to be 12 months old and looks too placid to be feral. Now she's a Bondi rabbit for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we in the core? She had, she had the old Von zippers on. What about Von? Von, Von. Von, Von the Bondi rabbit. Give it a kiss, Maxie. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? I'll, um, I'll be in touch. Thanks, mate. No worries. Von is now off to the Bondi clinic, where Chris will find out if the lost rabbit has been microchipped. How did you get here? Are you going to come clean? Very warm. Um, I'll just go and quickly let Lisa know his temp's 41. Yeah. And we'll probably get a move on. Okay, good idea. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Michael has rushed in Bodie after the four year old German Shepherd collapsed at home. I'm always worried because he's my best friend. You know, he never lets you down. You know, people let you down, but dogs don't. Yeah, I've he's, never seen he's, him like this. He looks pretty flat. That's a boy. Having a really high temperature like this is really risky because basically it, it, it could cook their brain. Uh, so we really need to cool him down as soon as possible because if it climbs any higher, that's going to be life-threatening. Hey, bud, you're feeling pretty awful, aren't you? We've got to get him on IV fluids and run some blood tests to try and work out what is going on here. He's in a really critical state and we have to get to the bottom of this now. The results are shocking. He actually hasn't got enough white blood cells in his bloodstream. You need white blood cells to fight infection. If you can't fight infection, you can become septic and die. See what I picked up the beach? The beach? Yeah. What have you been doing down the beach? Just chasing rabbits. Hello, Hello little bunny. First, Chris gives Vaughn the bunny a general health check. The worry with a rabbit that has been on the streets for a while is that they might pick up something like Khaleesi virus or myxomatosis. It usually shows up through the eyes and they'll get crusting and runny eyes, but Vaughn's eyes look pretty clear. Rabbits are often owned by kids. So for me, I worry that right now, there's a young child out there somewhere who's missing his or her little Vaughn. Your secret is about to be uncovered, young girl. <laughs> so there's no microchip, which makes our job of finding an owner a little bit more difficult, but we're not going to give up. One, two, three. Nice. I've got a bit of a plan. I'm going to get the word out there, and I reckon if we can get photos of this girl out in the streets, someone's going to know something. The information's out there. Bon 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 Hospital, Neil speaking. Can Head vet Bon nurse Neil volunteers to babysit Bond while Chris hits the Bondi strip on his mission of mercy. We're really pulling out all stops here to, to really alert not just Bondi but Sydney that a rabbit is lost and we're going to find its owners. Chris is called back to the clinic for an emergency. 
I just received a call to a dog that's been hit by a car. I don't know too many details, but apparently it's in a bad way, especially one of its legs and its feet. Hey, Thomas. Hey, Thomas. G'day. Brad. Hey, this is Brad. Hey, how are you? Who's this? Toby. Toby. Hey, Toby. Did you see him get hit? No, no I've gone back to get my other dog off the street. 14-month-old okay. Toby two. has just been run over by a taxi on a busy Sydney road. See some motion on the move. There's a bit of blood on the road. You're right, Toby. Hey. Stay there. You can just comfort him and just make sure he knows he's okay. You're right, Toby. Stay. The schnoodle has severe lacerations to his back legs and is having trouble breathing. The one thing that can be a problem for them is in the impact they can tear a blood vessel in their chest, in their lungs, and if they bleed into that then obviously they, they can't breathe through blood. He's very excitable, happy dog. That's what this is, the stillness is what worries me. Wait till mummy and daddy see you tomorrow. Why don't they get a surprise? Dog sitters Thomas and Brad have no idea how they're going to break the news to Toby's owners. They're on a sailing holiday in Queensland. And they've been sending me text messages saying, missing our boy, missing our boy. So he's been really good, he's been really good, except he doesn't come when called. And he didn't tonight. My priority right now is, is not so much his legs, not so much his injuries, but addressing his circulation, just making sure he can breathe, making sure he can pump that blood around his body, because if that doesn't happen, then we could be in trouble. Next on Bondi Vet, Lisa races against time to solve a medical mystery. He's petrified. Poor boy. And the guilty dog sitters wait for a verdict. I'm a little bit surprised by what we're seeing. His gum colour's okay, which, which is positive, so if he is losing blood, he hasn't lost a lot of it. 14-month-old Toby has been hit by a taxi. He's struggling to breathe yeah, and I has extensive gonna, leg um, injuries. One of the big problems with an impact with a car is that they can essentially tear part of their lung, which releases all the air and stops the, the pressure they need in their chest to, to breathe properly. Just to make sure he has that negative pressure in his chest. So we're going to put a needle into his chest and just suck out any air that, that could be a problem. Yeah, OK, so we're getting air coming out there. So he's actually got a pneumothorax. A pneumothorax means air is leaking between Toby's lungs and his chest wall. If not treated, it can kill him. The worry isn't so much his broken leg, that can heal, but a pneumothorax can get serious real quick, really quick. So what I do is, is essentially put in a, a valve here where we can suck the air out. Good boy, Toby. So every syringe full of air that we get out of this chest is another a lot of air that that he can actually breathe in, so this is good if we get this air out now. Good boy. Your mummy's going to be very proud of you. Toby's owners are on holidays in the Whit Sundays, and his remorseful dog sitters are hoping Chris can save the schnoodle's life. Left the kid at home in safe hands, apparently. Come on. You're right, Toby. Come on. I'm just going to support his weight as a whole. Despite Toby still being in shock, Chris now needs x-rays to confirm just how severe Toby's other injuries are. Come on. You're right. Sorry, Toby. You guys can jump out. OK. Right. All right, you guys can come back in. Let's go, buddy. That's the way. Good boy, Bodie. It's all right. At Sash, Bodhi is in a critical state. The four-year-old's white blood cell count is dangerously low. Sadly, the most likely cause is cancer. I know, darling. It's okay. The ultrasound of Bodhi's abdomen reveals no tumours or clues. He's petrified. Poor oh boy. He's a bit scared, isn't he? It's really frustrating because I was hoping that it would give me some miraculous answer, but unfortunately, there's nothing there. Dad's coming in to visit you. The next step is to do a bone marrow aspirate. It's a risky procedure, and so Michael's going to come in and see him before that, because who knows what can happen. Oh, that's OK. Mm, you've been a brave boy, haven't you? It's gut-wrenching, because, you know, you just don't know 
Um, is she going to see him again? See, I'm coming back every day to see how you are. You're in a war. If it was up to me, I would, I would just turn my back and walk away from the war with him. But obviously, you know, the war's come to find us and we're just going to go head on and try and beat it. Bye-bye. Good boy. Thank you so much. And it was absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, the poor man is devastated. I know. He's coming back. Brody. He's coming back, Brody. Come Let's go. Come on, darling. He's just hopeful. He still remains positive, which is what we need him to do because that's all we've got at this stage is hope. Toby's x-ray results are ready. I'm a little bit surprised by what we're seeing for the fact that I'm not seeing any fractures. You must be the luckiest dog in Surrey Hills, I reckon. Yeah. 14-month-old Toby has been run over by a taxi and escaped with no broken bones. I came in here tonight and when I first looked in, I was thinking that this dog is going to need weeks in hospital having fractures repaired. Whereas it might now be a day. Okay, that's... Can you fix me before his parents going to come tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Chris can now start cleaning up Toby's wounds. Come on. You're right, Tobe. Come on. Come on. Halfway right there, Toby. Tobe, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. So he may not like these, but he's got two more injections, so what he's got is an antibiotic, first of all. Does that one burn a bit? No. No? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> That was good, um, so. You have already tangled with a cab tonight, so just let's try and keep it in perspective, <laughs> okay? I know it's tough for you. I know it's a hard night for you. That's it for the needles, all right? Did you want to call yeah, his eyes? Sure. Do you know what you, what you need to say? No, no, no. I, I'd use bumped rather than hit. <laughs> That's a boy. Some oxygen for you. I know. It's a funny feeling. You're a good boy. Bodhi's just been fantastic through all of this. I mean, his, his temperament is pretty amazing and he's been poked and prodded and has still wanted to give us cuddles, so he's just a lovely dog. Sleepy sleeps. Bodhi is about to undergo a risky bone marrow test. Earlier tests show the four-year-old has no white blood cells. The mystery is why. Poor little dog. Medical specialist Sophia Zanis uses a hand drill to extract the bone marrow sample. I'm just going to gently feel for the top of the bone. So I suppose what we really need to know is if Bodhi's got cancer or an autoimmune disease. Neither of them are very good. I mean, I suppose we've got some chance of treatment with certain autoimmune diseases, but most of them are pretty serious and they don't actually respond well to treatment. So it's, it could be very sad for Bodhi, but, um, but we'll find out. This is the only way we'll know. Oh, Bodhi. Mm. Oh, yes, you going to see you tomorrow, Bobby. Oh. No, it's okay. Get you oh, darling. Bodhi's bone marrow test results are back. The good news, it's not cancer. The bad news, there's still no answers. This has actually turned into a medical mystery. Bodhi's critical, he's having a plasma transfusion as we speak, and we still don't know why this is happening, because time is running out. Lisa has decided to use a new super drug. And what it does is it tries to stimulate the bone marrow to produce white cells. Dad's here. It's pretty new and it's quite expensive and we don't know if it's going to work, but we really don't have many options here and we've got to try whatever we can. Really? Oh, big bear. He's so glad to see you. Michael has Thank brought him his son for a visit. Bodhi and Jasper have grown up together. He's probably at the top of my friends list. 
if only love could cure them, it would make the world a better place. I mean, the relationship they have is just so special. Holy. Holy. Come in. Did you want to call yeah, his owner? Sure. Zoe. Yeah, Zoe. Do you know what you, what you need to say? No, no, no. I, I'd use bumped rather than hit. <laughs> Thomas was with Toby when he took off and ran under a taxi. Now he needs to summon his courage to ring Toby's owners, who are off sailing in the Whit Sundays. Voicemail. Voicemail. Yeah. Mm. So it's Thomas. Just want to let you know we've at the vet at the moment with Toby. Um, we've been here for a couple of hours. He had a bit of a run in with a taxi. Um, he's doesn't appear to have been broken. If you can give me a call and get this message, that would be great. Sorry about that. And he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Sorry. He's actually okay. That's my thing. But he's um just a bit wimply. But he always is. Anyway, call me. <laughs> Got it. That went well. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what do you think? That went well. <laughs> <laughs> Chris rechecks Toby's punctured lung to make sure it's healing. You're right, buddy. You're right. Come on. Yeah, that's good. So there's just no air flying into that syringe. So that's good. Well done, Tobes. Well done. For Thomas and Brad, the night from hell is over with a miraculous happy ending. You're tougher than I thought. I'll give you that. That's remarkable, and truly incredible. All I can think is that young dogs do tend to miraculously bounce out of these situations. Yeah, we'll call him Super Toby for now on. Toby's Super Dog. Oh, yummy! Ooh. At Sash, a breakthrough for Bodie. His neutrophils, which is a type of white cell, okay. they've come up to 1.4, which is excellent. It was zero before. And we need it to get above three. So oh, he's really? halfway there. Halfway there already? Yeah. So Look hopefully... how long Kim took a long day. Oh, thank you so okay. much. You've done so well. So hopefully by the end of the week, he will be able to go home, but I'm we won't get mommy. ahead of ourselves. Oh my God, that's fantastic yeah. news. We did never give up on you, will we? No. This is the best news ever, isn't it? I think this is an absolute miracle. To think that this dog was <laughs> on his deathbed a week ago. Mm. You boy, you boy. I don't like to say that I have favourite patients, but he's definitely one of the special ones. I feel so small next to him. He's just got a spirit. He's, he's a fighter. Good boy, you are a good boy. Coming up on Bondi Vet, the search continues for the lost bunny's family. And will Bodhi's recovery continue? Chris is back on the Bondi beat, trying to track down the lost bunny's owners. Hey Ruby, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Do you mind if I stick this up? We've got a lost bunny. All right. right. Thank you. She'll be very grateful. <laughs> the reality is that no one in Bondi really works. So I think if we hit the coffee shops, that should pretty much get 100% of the population. I mean, a weekday, what do those people do? They don't work, do they? We're getting Bodhi. Yeah, and, 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 and we've got to be quiet. you got to be quiet because he's not well. One week later, and it's Bodhi's big day. Michael has arrived at Sash with Jasper, his wife Katrina, and daughter Gigi to take their boy home. Oh my god, look at him. Oh no. He's looking so good. Oh my god. Yeah. He knew he was coming home because I opened the cage and he was trying to push past me. As soon as I put the lead on, he was pulling me down the corridor. He knew today's the day. This looks like his old self again. Oh, thank you. And, you know, I've got such mixed emotions now because he, I'm so happy with how well he's doing. I really thought he was going to die, so we have to be grateful for that. But we still don't know what caused this and we still know that he can relapse and that we just have to go step by step, day by day. Run, Bodie, run! Oh, no! 
Oh, he's got it. Bodhi, do you like being at home? Yes. Do you want to go back to hospital? No. The great thing was that Bodhi went home and he had three wonderful weeks with his family. Good boy, Bodhi. And unfortunately, our big boy had a relapse and, and despite doing everything we could, he didn't make it. And it's just the toughest part of the job because especially when it happens to the ones that, you know, really touch your heart, I'll never forget Bodhi. So, you know, we've been having words. Hello, Juice. She's pretty excited. Yeah. I think this is a good move. There's a new lady in my life, babe. Right? <laughs> Despite as as Chris's efforts to find Vaughn's owners, no one came forward. But a hasty adoption has been arranged. Yeah, no, it is nice. It's lovely. You know, it's sort of providing a home for a lost soul. Now, Vaughn, if you're going to go swimming, you've got to swim between the red and yellow flags. Down this end of the beach, that's for surfing. She's onto it. I'm right. excited. Mate, good on you. All right. It's good work from you. Thanks, buddy. All Thanks the best, mate. I can't wait to see her in the backyard at home, just plodding around and, you know, when you feed them and then they come back to you and they know you're like the mum or the dadder. So that's what I want to be. Now, if you see anyone in trouble, Vaughn, you just let me know. It's not a call you get every day. We've just been called out to a dog that's been stuck in a fence. Now, it's apparently been there for a little while. Police rescue at the scene, trying to get it out. A neighbour tipped off police about the emergency. So he's trying to jump through these things here. Yep. Um, he's about a mess, that's all his blood. He's been hanging here for a while. Do we know who this is? This is Woody. Woody, okay. This is incredible. Woody's been hanging at the window by his back legs. To me, it looks like he's tried to escape and actually got stuck by his back legs. Now, if the police didn't arrive when they did, would he be dead? So the front way's out? Yeah, front way's out. Where was he yeah. stuck about? So, still in the front Oh, right, yeah. yeah. I'll get to those in a second. I just want to check out the front half here. In Woody's desperation to get out that window, he's worn down pretty much his entire dew claw. And that's where all that blood's come from. But to do that sort of damage, he must have been hanging there for hours. Oh, Woody, what have you done to yourself, buddy? Chris is concerned Woody may have suffered brain damage from hanging upside down for so long. He may have other internal injuries as well, which we don't know about yet. A steroid injection is administered to help boost Woody's blood pressure. I really hope this works, because if we can't manage to get more blood back to Woody's heart, his whole circulation is going to collapse. I hate to say it, if that happens, he just won't make it. The stressed seven-month-old golden retriever has been rushed into the Bondi Reform Hospital sash. Danny is struggling to walk and breathe. He came in here when he was about eight weeks old. He was bitten by a tick and almost died. He was on a ventilator for four days. And we were so worried he wasn't going to make it and we all became so attached to him and I'm just so worried about him being back here so soon. This time, owners David and Rosaline are convinced a plastic object is stuck in Danny's throat. Okay. Oh, sweetheart. He had a feel and he said it's something... a long plastic. <laughs> if Mr Lamb hadn't felt something stuck in Danny's throat, then I would be absolutely certain that he's got a paralysis tick. Okay, let's get an X-ray. Danny's just a baby and it's cruel that he has to go through something like this again. So when we put him down in, he was actually hanging completely out of the window by his hind legs. Um, Police rescue's actually cut, had to cut the bars out. And he's been like this the whole time since we've been here. Woody's shocked owner Shannon arrives home to find his best friend fighting for life. Oh my God. I imagine he's been hanging upside down for quite a while too, which is going to yeah. play around with his circulation. 
The steroid injection has helped boost Woody's blood pressure and his circulation is beginning to stabilise. But his legs are OK? Well, his left foreleg is a bit stiff and, and you can see he's holding oh, no, up. No, 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 that turned that, uh, hit by a car two years ago. That uh, explains that. No one had me worried. Shannon's telling me this story about how Woody lost the use of his leg two years ago in a car accident. Yeah. And I'm here thinking, how much bad luck can one dog have? But I'm just hoping Woody's got enough strength to pull himself through this time too. Yeah, OK. You're normally a good guard dog? No, not at all. He's not a guard dog at all. See, Woody help us. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely in shock and, and horrified. I just, uh, he's part of the family. I mean, we all love him. I don't know what's going to happen. I just don't know what's going to happen. I'm just checking for internal bleeding. That's fine. Chris clears Woody of internal bleeding, but brain damage could still be an issue. Yeah, the pupil is, is responding to that. Now, that's showing that he is at least detecting light. So he's not only making out light, he's also making out shapes and, and movement, which is good. So just to counter that dehydration, we're going to run this bag of fluids yep. into his circulation, not too quickly, otherwise we might overwhelm it again. I really need to check out whether he's fractured those, those yeah. femurs or yeah, dislocated his hips. At this stage, the plan is to take him back to the, the vets. Oh, man. Poor Woody, he's in so much pain. And all I'm thinking is, just hang on, mate, just hang on. It's all right, mate, it's okay. Been through a lot, mate, I know. Oh, Such a regular. Danny's choking is getting worse. Okay. His owners believe Danny, he swallowed Danny. a plastic Danny, object. Danny, Danny, but Lisa fears Danny. he's been bitten by a paralysis tick. I have to take this just to, for their peace of mind because they said they saw something in his mouth. Oh, that looks pretty good. X-rays show Danny has nothing wedged in his larynx. It all looks normal. So, you won't believe what I'm going to tell you, but I think that he's probably got a tick. Again. Again? What a tick does is it paralyzes parts of the body. So if they have a toxin that they release into the bloodstream when they latch on, and that causes paralysis. And it can affect anything from the back legs to the upper airways to the breathing muscles. Potentially, one bite from a tick on a susceptible dog can cause death. Next on Bondi Vet, can Woody survive his shocking trauma? If the results of these x-rays are bad, you'd have to question his quality of life. And Chris enters a lagoon filled with 30 hungry alligators. I'm going in a battle with an alligator with a cricket stump. rushing Woody back to the Bondi clinic. The dog was found hanging upside down out of a window. Wrecked and right? Yeah, strung up on that table there. X-rays will show if the dog has sustained internal injuries or serious fractures. X-ray. The reason I'm taking so many X-rays is that I need to be absolutely sure that Woody's okay. A normal dog might be able to handle the long-term effects of a broken leg or dislocated hips, but Woody's only got three legs. He can't afford to lose any more mobility. If the results of these x-rays are bad, you'd have to question his quality of life. Right. Okay. Hardest part of the night, what do you promise you, mate? No, your dog's lucky. Nothing? His hips are in place. No fractures of the femurs. 
These kneecaps are sitting perfectly. You're a lucky puppy. You're a very lucky puppy. Hmm? Okay. Excellent. Very good set news. Hey, it's fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. Good boy. Bit sore you're going to be there, aren't you? Woody's ordeal is almost over. Sorry about that, Woody. I guess it's only now when you get a chance to actually breathe that you realise just what Woody's been through tonight. It's all, buddy. It's okay, mate. Do what's comfortable, mate. Oh, there you go. He must have just been so close to death when that neighbour saw him, and thank God they did, and they made the call, and we got him out. Incredible night. Don't take on those bars, all right? Definitely don't fit through those. Lisa is searching Danny for potentially fatal paralysis ticks. Danny has deteriorated rapidly since he arrived. I mean, he's becoming more wobbly. He's lost his ability to swallow. Look at that, that's so different now. Within minutes, a tick crater is found on Danny's cheek. Uh, it's like a crater? It does. And the fact that it's on his head and he's got these signs yep. of gagging, it, it would all fit in. <laughs> Lisa is now convinced of her diagnosis and immediately gives Danny the anti-serum to try and stop the toxin spreading through his body. Danny boy. So we're going to run the anti-serum in before we even look for more ticks because I don't want him to deteriorate any more than he already has. There we go. The sedation has really kicked in quite nicely. The search now begins for any more lethal paralysis ticks that might be buried in Danny's fur. We found anything? There's one. This is a tiny tick. I mean, they can get to four times the size of this easily, but such a small thing can be deadly to a dog. A tick dip is being given as an extra precaution. It's a good bath. Danny will need to be monitored around the clock to make sure there's no life-threatening relapse. I just hope we've got it early enough that he doesn't have to go on a ventilator because that would just be awful. Woody looks so much better this morning. You gonna get up? Considering he spent two hours hanging upside down out of a window, his progress is just remarkable. But I'm not gonna be totally comfortable unless he has another 24 hours under observation in here, just to be sure. Come on, little Jeffrey. Come on. It's midday and the clinic closes for lunch. Vet student Laura has let the kittens run amok. All of them are in the adoption program and looking for new homes. This one's Bradley. Hello, Bradley. Hello, Chris speaking. But in okay, the middle Chris, of the mayhem, there's an SOS call yeah, good, for Chris from the Australian yeah, well, Reptile Park. A bit of a favour to us. We've got a gator here called Alfie who's potentially swallowed a bottle. So, any chance of you coming up today? So what's going on? Well, we've got Alfie, uh, our American alligator, or one of. Uh, we had a visitor come up and say that he had a plastic bottle in his mouth, they thought. Mm. We come down a few minutes later yep. and there's no bottle. The worry is if he swallowed it, it's gone into his stomach. And if it pushes through to, into his intestine, then it'll cause a blockage. From there, it can actually be fatal very quickly. So it's a bit of a race against time to get in there, if it is in there, and actually remove it. This is all... Um, well and good, Tim, but can you tell me why I've got the little ones? Yeah, well, they're the, they're the beginner sticks. It looks like a cricket stump. I'm going in a battle with an alligator with a cricket stump. Next on Bondi Vet, 
tick victim Danny is still under threat. If you can't swallow, then you can inhale it and that can cause a big infection in the lungs. And will Chris go beyond the call of duty? I hope he's frightened, I am. Point of no return, mate. It's good to remind me of that, Tim, thank you. Chris is at the Australian Reptile Park to investigate if Elfie the Gator has swallowed a plastic bottle. He's right there before. If he has, they must act fast. So we walk in and Alfie's not there. So I'm thinking, well, is this really going to happen? And then the backup plan. Alfie's just actually jumped back in the water. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can just tap on a bucket, a couple of chickens, and we can bring him up. Oh, yes, we offer them some food. Worst case scenario, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, nine, yeah. all come out. And it's a warm day, so but they should be all right. <laughs> We've got a little girl coming from this side. Oh. Oh, nice dude. Oh, no. oh, no. I'll have to jump it while it's pushed down. All of a sudden feel very small, and the only thing you've got is an even smaller stick. We've got Martha there. Yep. So just hang back a little. Remember, uh -huh. put the stick out as she comes. Yep. If we get him another two metres, we're all right. Sure. One, two, three. <laughs> You all right, Ace? Yeah, Happy? It's tail. Yeah, mate, could you come and help, Chris? Yeah. Just put a bit of weight on that. Lizzie will watch you behind for any gators coming up. So we can just get him to open up a little bit. Come on, mate, open up. We've got the stick in there. Now, we get this pipe in. There's that beautiful moment when they've subdued Alfie, the pipe goes in, and then it's over to me. And there's just a few mils of PVC between me and those beautiful crunching alligator jaws. And that pipe's been tested. It is oh. up. Well, it hasn't cracked yet. Now's going to be the test. I hope he's frightened. I am. Let's check your gag. Not that great, buddy. Danny has survived the night after his second battle with a paralysis tick, but there are still I... worrying signs. Still not great. Tick paralysis can affect different dogs in different ways. His main problem was that he couldn't swallow. And if you can't swallow, then that means your food sort of just sits at the back of the throat and there's the risk that you can inhale it and that can cause a big infection in the lungs. Danny has had pneumonia before when, when he had tick paralysis and it took him over six weeks to recover from that, so we just don't want to go there again. Until Danny's swallow reflex is back to normal, the hungry puppy will stay on a drip and will not be allowed to eat or drink. I'll use the left arm so I can still write with it. With the right. On the banks of a lagoon surrounded by 30 alligators, it's Chris's moment of truth. The thing about an alligator is their jaws are made for crushing. They're very powerful, they're shorter, and they love to just to clamp down. But this feeling is, it feels like there's still, still a bit of food there. Bless the liver that he just ate. <laughs> <laughs> to check Elfie hasn't swallowed a bottle, Chris must move his arm over the tongue, down the back of the throat, and into the stomach. Oh, oh I just swallowed on my arm. Oh, that's a weird feeling. Oh, it's, it's amazing that with all that force, once you get past those jaws, it, it, everything's pretty relaxed until you get these occasional contractions that just clamp down your arm and try to force it right in there where they want it. Chris needs to move fast as the restless alligators begin to take his interest. What the hell was that? What the hell was that? Just nap nah, there, all right. There's one, just one area right at the back that I really, I do have a feel before. We're sure that he, he hasn't swallowed it. At the Australian Reptile Park, Chris is carrying out his daunting internal examination of Elfie after reports the gator had swallowed a bottle. Yeah, Martha's all right. She's predictable. She always charges. 
No. Oh, that's a good result. No, anyway. you're clear, mate. I think you're clear. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It's moments like mate. these. You need to keep that. I want to say thank you to you for calling me when you do. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Isn't it? Look, that's a great result for us. We're, we're pretty happy. I mean, we weren't certain if it was a bottle or not, but to have it clarified that it's not is just a bit of peace of mind. So we'll just jump up on three. One, two, three. Whilst it's a little bit overwhelming to get your hand right down to a gated stomach, the reality of not doing it and leaving a bottle to go into the intestine and cause a potentially fatal blockage was even more scary. Now, are you salivating because you're starving? He says, please, I'm really hungry. Oh, I'm starving. Tick bite victim Danny is finally on our tweet on, on. after Get fasting for 48 Humble. hours. One, one at a time. Wait, wait. No. Oh, you're starving. Lisa okay. is We've now confident his swallow it. reflex is back to normal. That's it. You keep that down and you can go home. He is not going to have any more hair. I'll shave it every week. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> you're going home. Rosaline is worried Danny's new haircut has made him look like a different breed. Yeah, short hair Labrador. <laughs> Now, I have to put a sign up on his head when we go walking that he's a golden retriever. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes, I miss you too. He looks a bit like a Labrador, don't you think? Don't no? ever say that. Don't say that, okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're just teasing. You're a golden retriever, aren't you? Danny's just gorgeous. Hopefully he'll be back for a visit for cuddles. No more ticks and they're under strict instructions to check him every day. Bye. <laughs> Let's see how you walk. As for the accident prone Woody, he's Woody. also on the way home. I said walk, not run, Woody. Jeez. And for the first Hi. time, Chris can see just how he manages on Woody. three legs. A legacy of a so previous ready. car accident. A we bit of a tip for the future. Doors, that's how you leave buildings, all right? Good work. Woody, you might just recognise this place. Hey, hey, hey. Bit of a difference, huh? It's just relief and joy, knowing that that everyone's going to be happy in the family that Woody survived and he's just fantastic. You can see it, it's amazing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's so good to finally see Woody running around on those three legs, almost as if nothing ever happened. It was touch and go there for a while, but in a way his spirit got him into this, but it's also what got him out of it as well. If you have a look out here, this is where he's escaping from. <laughs> he scales that? Yeah. How? Chris has received a plea for help from the baffled there was Stefan. There and he somehow scaled up the drain pipe. His dog Splodge is constantly escaping. Uh, one of my neighbours gave me a call at work and said, Stefan, are you at home? I said, no, I'm at work. Why? And he goes, your dog is on my roof. On your roof? My first impression of Splodge is he's tiny. How does he get up on roofs. Is this for real? The only theory we have, mm. um, and it sounds crazy, is that he uses the vine. Well, what's this here? Looks to me like that's where Splodge has actually scratched at the bark. Stefan's never been able to catch his dog in the act, but Splodge is quite happy to show off his acrobatic climbing abilities in the garden shed. <laughs> Right now, there's a fair bit on Splodger's rap sheet. He scratches, he chews, he poos in the house. That was it. One day was just once too much. As long as there's someone home, he is the most extremely well-behaved, adorable dog you can imagine. Aside from the mystery of how he gets out, I've got serious concerns about his safety. But he could live up to his name. Splodge could go Splodge. The little Houdini has already had a near-death experience. He ran out onto the road and he got hit by a car. 
and uh, you know he broke his leg and that was very traumatic for him, for us, um, for everyone. I think it's time for some secret splodge surveillance. This behaviour has to stop. have just rushed to the Bondi Referral Hospital, SASH. I might pop her on the floor, actually, because then I can see if she can stand. Their much-loved four-year-old Labrador, Chino, is suddenly experiencing uncontrollable seizures. Hey, you are, Chino. Chino's been swimming at the beach about two hours ago, and then she suddenly started tremoring in her face and all over her body. It's most likely something she's eaten. She's playful, very energetic and, and awesome with the family, but um, yeah, not well today. She's a beautiful dog, yeah. You like Gina? She's been exposed to some sort of toxin. I don't know what it is and I really need to try and work out what's going on here. Head down, come on, that's a cow. As Chino's family waits for news, the poison attacks her system again. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, this is the plan. I'm gonna put multiple cameras around the backyard. They're gonna capture his every move. If he leaves the backyard, we're gonna know about it. Chris is trying to find out how Spodge is managing to escape from home. We'll see just how smart you are. I just cannot wait to find out how he's doing this. I just can't see how it's possible. I think you're in a bit of trouble, Spodge. Stay. Where go? All right. Never thought I'd say this, Splodge. Don't behave. Look after yourself. So we'll sneak around the front, right. then we'll watch the monitors from in there, OK? Oh, it's on. It's on. You're kidding. So he's holding himself up with the vine, like almost as a, as a safety strap. Oh my God! No way. He's incredible. How is he doing that? Next on Bondi Vet, Lisa turns detective to find out what's threatening Chino's life. The toxin is just raging through her system. And a mercy dash to the clinic as Chris fights to keep a tiny kitten alive. I know, I know. Oh my God. Chris and Stefan are finally watching just how the amazing splodge manages to scale a brick wall. He's incredible. Just go straight up the bricks. I didn't think he'd do it. And then he's closed the bricks vertically and then does a big chin up <laughs> onto the top. It. I wouldn't have believed it. It's like it was the easiest thing in the world. Strangely, the escape artist isn't making an immediate exit. He stays perched on the brick wall for more than five minutes. You'd think after all that effort, he'd scurry off into the sunset, but he just, he oh, just he hangs out. Yeah, it's like he's happy there. Yeah. So who lives there? Uh, Stephanie and James, the immediate neighbours. Uh, and then that's further. <laughs> I reckon I know who this might be. <laughs> yeah. Steffi. Yeah, hi. Are you at work or at home? No, I'm, I'm actually at home. Oh, OK, good. Well, he's on the roof. So do you want me to bring him home or what do you want me to do? Is it too much trouble to bring him home? Can you get him down? Yeah, yeah, I can get him down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you little rascal. <laughs> Clay, we were just watching you, Splodge. He, he will visit anybody. It's, it, the, the thing is, at first you think he likes you and then you realise it's got nothing to do with that. It's just that you're a, another living, breathing creature. So, you'll do. So, I th you know, I think, it, I think he's really cool, actually. Mate, I reckon we've got to make this time the last time. Ah, you hear that? Last time. That would be fantastic, Chris. I tell you, if you can do that, that would actually set my mind at ease a lot. 
Now it's a waiting game for Stefan and Splodge to find out just what solution Chris will come up with. Come on puppy, in we go. At Sash, Chino's tremors are getting worse. The toxin is just raging through her system. We really need to stabilise her before she actually gets any worse. I'm going to make you feel a little bit sick now. I've just given Chino an injection of a drug called apomorphine, which is a drug that makes them vomit quite quickly. And I'm hoping that she's going to bring up something that's in her stomach that can give us some clue as to what's going on. So we just have to now wait for her to vomit. Okay, so there are some seeds. Lisa needs to quickly identify these seeds before Chino's condition becomes critical. I am concerned that she's eaten a plant called yesterday, today and tomorrow. This plant, which is also known as Brunfelsia, is highly toxic to dogs. I am concerned that those might be the seeds. Hi Andrew, it's Lisa calling. What I want to know is, is there a plant in the area where she has been this morning? It's got purple and white little flowers all over it. Oh, okay. Andrew has confirmed that Brunfelsia is growing in his garden. Chino now needs treatment urgently. It is an extremely toxic plant. It affects the brain and she's absolutely not out of the danger zone yet. Come straight through in here. Later that night, Chris is called to the clinic for an emergency. Hey, matey. Eight-week-old Samson is lapsing in and out of consciousness and is just hanging on. Really scary. His eyes sort of rolled a little bit and... Okay. And when he, we, sh we shook him, he just... Definitely, definitely wasn't, wasn't normal. Definitely wasn't, yeah. like, just normal yeah. thing. Has he been scratching a lot with the... Yeah, the flu? Yeah. yeah. Has he yeah. been wormed? Did no. Well, the guy when I spoke to him, he's, he advertised saying eight weeks, and we went to see him, and he was just standing out the front of his house with his cage, and we were all like, okay, this is a bit dodgy. Yeah. And then he said, oh, by the way, he's only seven weeks, and we were just like, I just want to get this kid home. Yeah. I was yeah. so just, just, it was not right. But he hasn't, I don't think he's come from a good place. Yeah. The girls have told me that Samson hasn't been wormed or vaccinated. Now, that mightn't seem like a big deal, but just look at Samson right now, because those shots weren't given at all. He's now fighting for his life. I know, I know. He's running a fever as well. Yeah, so it, it is actually high. What I would like to do, I want to take him out the back and actually get a little blood sample from him. My suspicion is that he's anemic. If they hadn't brought Samson in when they did, then I've got no doubt he would have been dead by tomorrow morning. Even now, I'm not even sure we can save him. Because of the state he's in, he's got very low blood pressure, so the veins pretty much disappear as you put the needle near them. Chris is taking a blood sample from Samson to find out what's making the kitten so dangerously ill. Now, about a mil is, is what I'm after here. And we've got that there. I'm sorry, Samson. Sorry about that, buddy. So these little tubes store the blood and then we spin them down and it separates the blood cells from the liquid part of the blood. And it gives us a very good idea about whether he's anemic or not. Yeah, it's not good. For a kitten, the normal level is between 30 and 45. Samson, though, comes in at 21. So he is significantly anemic. It's pretty shocking to think that in this day and age, people can sell a kitten that's young, that hasn't been vaccinated, 
that hasn't been wormed and is underweight. I mean, it's grossly irresponsible and unfortunately, Samson's paying the price for it right now. Let's see. The tests confirm Samson is infested with worms and much worse, lethal blood parasites. The parasites are killing off his red blood cells and causing the kitten's life-threatening anemia. Untreated, they'll kill him. We feel really bad because we feel like we've done the wrong thing by him. I'm really worried that he's not going to pull through. Reverse. I don't know how good she'll be. With the poisonous plant identified, Lisa's giving Chino an enema to eliminate the toxin from her system. That's a girl. As long as the seeds are inside her digestive tract, they're still toxic. So it doesn't matter if they're in the stomach or in the, they're in the colon, we need to get them out. All right, darling, I know, I know. That's a girl, that's a girl. Okay. You're right, Steph. Good girl, oh, there are a lot of seeds here. Oh, what a good girl. I have never seen that many seeds come out of an enema. I mean, they were just shooting across the room and all over me. Colonic irrigation. I have some colonics. People pay a lot of money for this, but um, Chino's getting it as part of her package. <sighs> oh, look, there's some bigger seeds oh, there. Oh, wonderful. Good girl, you'll feel better, darling. I know you can't understand that. Are you enjoying this? We have a spectator here. Okay, so we've run a few tests and, and got some results. His issues aren't small, I guess that's, that's the first thing. He's quite severely anemic, so his red blood cell count is at 21, when it should be between 30 and 45, so he's, it, it is quite low. Tiny Samson is fighting for his life after being ravaged by potentially fatal blood parasites. I'm a bit shocked, to be honest. I know, I, I, I had, we just thought he was a little bit sick. I didn't realise it was so intense, and like, I'm so glad we brought him in. Yeah. I've only had him for a week, and we're already madly in love with him. He's, you know, he's a part of our family, and I couldn't imagine life without him. None of us could. Yeah. Oh, I think he knows. The most important thing to do for Samson right now is to replace what those worms, what those fleas, what those parasites are taking away, which are his nutrients. So we're going to give him some fluids, actually under his skin rather than intravenously. It's a good amount, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to treat him for his fleas. And we're going to use a spray that's going to kill the fleas straight away. You like that? You don't mind this bit, do you? This is a high energy nutrient supplement. It also has some iron in there as well. Do a little look at that. Hmm? Oh, you're coming around to it, aren't you? Oh, you like that. <laughs> you have the finger as well. With a little help from the Nutrigel, Samson swallows the tablets that will eradicate the worms and blood parasites. It's, it's the chunky stuff, isn't it? Yeah, tastes a bit different to the last one you had, isn't it? Got him a beauty. Now that I've treated Samson, I've essentially done everything I can. He now needs to rest. He needs to build up those energy reserves so that he has a chance to see it right through to tomorrow. See you in the morning, okay? Next on Bondi Vet, Chino's still under threat from the poison in her system. Oh, it's yucky. And has Chris come up with a solution to stop splodge? This will work. Oh, puppy. I hope it does. It won't be much longer, Tina. Okay, good girl, good girl, good girl. Chino has just endured an enema to try to get rid of the poison in her system after eating a toxic plant. All right. I don't know how much she's going to like this. Now the Labrador is being force fed one last treatment. Oh, it's yucky. The charcoal binds to any toxin that is still in her gut, so it's going to prevent anything that's floating around there from being absorbed. 
good girl. Now it's just a matter of time and we just have to let her body eliminate the toxin. No, no, it's not nice, darling. So we're going to head down to Bondi Surf Club here and grab our solution to all of Splodger's problems. Chris has come up with a left field solution to stop Splodge, the incredible escape artist. The tiny dog has already been run over once, and his owners are worried next time Splodge won't be so lucky. What's this all about? I'll explain it all later. It's in here. It's in here, I'll give you a hand. Right on. Heavy, isn't it? Pretty confident this has never ever been used in veterinary science before. The solution comes in two parts. First of all, safety is our priority, so we're going to barricade his escape route. Secondly, it's my favourite. Special dogs get special things. And this <laughs> is the solution to your problem. You are joking, aren't you? See, in the animal world, being high up implies dominance. That's why chihuahuas love being in those handbags. There's a saying in the dog world that a happy dog is a dog with a view. If you can imagine being splodged down here, you've got high walls around you, a slice of sky up the top. Every single time a plane flew over, he howled at the sky. In his mind, those people, those machines could be conspiring against him. So he wants to know what's going on. He doesn't have separation anxiety, he's got scenery anxiety. He's frustrated because he can't see the world, so he goes out into the world to discover it for himself. This will work. Come on. Or it should. Come. There you go. <laughs> 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 Looks pretty comfortable up there. <laughs> Is that a smile, Spot? I did Oh man. This is nothing like what I expected. I expected something that was, you know, containing barricades, stopping him getting out, closing him in. This is, uh, this is liberating him. Thank you very much, Chris. My That's pleasure. awesome. No worries at all. Hey, Chino. It's home time. It's there. 24 hours after surviving a terrible scare, the poison is finally out of Chino's system. Believe it or not, she's usually a bit more energetic even than that. She had thousands of these seeds. Before Chino goes home, Lisa wants to be certain Andrew knows the danger plant to look out for. Thanks, Lisa. No worries. Thanks very much. You want to say thank bye you? Bye-bye. To Lisa. It's a very happy ending for Chino and Andrew's over the moon, but it's, there's a lesson there. People need to know that if they've got a dog and they've got Brunfelsia growing, they need to rip it out. Samson. You can have all the expensive blood tests and ultrasounds and x-rays you like, but ultimately, this is the best test of all. It's been a slow rehabilitation, but finally Samson's red blood cell count is back up, and so is his energy. We spent all yesterday doing up the house, put out all these flea bombs and everything else is spotless ready for him. And we've actually figured out that he's spent nearly as much time with the vets than he has with us. So we're just hoping that he remembers that we love him. <laughs> oh. I don't know, have you met my cat? This is Samson. Oh. He's, um, oh. what, you, do you know them, Samson? <laughs> Come, on. Cry. <laughs> Come on, you take him back. We can't thank Chris enough. Like, I'm, I'm actually completely in awe of what he's done. Okay, it's time to begin the rest of your lives together. Thank you so much. It's okay. <laughs> no worries. Are you getting a little emotional? Of course not. I'm, I'm a hard, hard professional. <laughs> to bring a little kitten back from where he was is just amazing. See you, little buddy. Take care, all right? So, whatever he's done to him, well, we, we do. We, we thank him so much. 
now, I'm on my way to an animal farm. I've just received a call from the manager there who's discovered a lamb dumped in a box on a front doorstep. Now, it sounds like it's got a broken leg. If they have serious injuries, they're often regarded as being totally expendable. So he's just so lucky someone actually cares. Hey, Lisa, how are you going? Hi, not too bad, thanks. So where is this lamb? He's just in here. The lamb is just four weeks old and in serious trouble. He's got quite a nasty fracture of, his, of the mid-shaft of his femur. OK. Everything's just crumbled in it's, the middle yeah, of it. Yeah, not attached properly. Now, he's either been kicked or he's been crushed. run over or crushed in some way. Yeah. In terms of fractures that he could get, it's just about the worst. If nothing was done about the leg, then the sad reality is that the lamb would have had to have been put to sleep. He's a stoic little guy, he's tough. He just <laughs> doesn't show a lot of pain. Mm, that's it. How can you just pack your gear up and walk away and say, no, it's too hard? You can't. You look sad. <laughs> I am a bit. He's um, a little sweetheart. I shouldn't get attached, but I do. Mm. We do need to talk about a name too. Leroy. Leroy. As in Leroy Brown. <laughs> Baddest lamb in the whole damn town. Aren't you? Leroy. I think Leroy is cute. See Good you luck. Later. Thank you. Thanks. I'd love to say that I'm confident, but the reality is we don't fix too many fractures in lambs, especially none that feel as bad as this one does. We don't know that we can actually help him. Just don't know. Serena? Yep. There's the paperwork for Nasty. Thank you. This big dog has just come and taken a massive grip around the top of his chest and, and has literally torn the skin open. It's just awful. Eight-month-old Scruffy has survive. just been mauled by a pit bull terrier. Mm -hmm. He was just shaking him like a rag doll. Terrible. Oh, yeah. I was screaming and crying. It was terrible. Lisa places a catheter into Scruffy's leg so she can pump in pain relief and antibiotics. You are the bravest dog I know. Bacteria from the pit bull's mouth could start a major infection under Scruffy's skin. It's just amazing. How did you get him off? A man come with a, a man screwdriver, come with a screwdriver and tried to open his mouth. Oh, my God. She, she I tried to open his mouth too and I got Oh, bitten. my goodness. Yeah, very scary. Very yeah. scary. So but I don't know what we would have amazing. done if that guy hadn't come with a screwdriver. I just... He would have been dead. He would have been dead. The next step is to get some x-rays of his chest to make sure that the punctures actually haven't gone right into his chest and in his lungs. OK, so the chest x-rays actually look pretty normal, which is good. His lungs are nicely inflated um, and I can't see any signs of it actually puncturing the chest. So that's good news for Scruffy. So he's had some strong pain relief, so he's going to be a little bit drowsy. And you can give him a cuddle. Scruffy will need an operation so Lisa can fix his terrible wounds. Okay. You okay? But until the little terrier is stable, a general anaesthetic is too big a risk. The next 24 hours will be critical. I thought he was going to be a bit lifeless, but he's all right. Yeah. OK, we're going to look after him. Hopefully get him back to you as soon as we can. Liesl, Leroy, Leroy, Liesl. Back at the Bondi Clinic... Hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, buddy. It's Chris okay. is taking x-rays of Leroy to find out if his shattered back leg can be saved. X-ray. If it can't, the young lamb would struggle to survive out on a farm. Leroy would have to be put down. So, that's obviously what his femur is meant to look like. That's on his right side there. On his left side, when we're looking from above, you can see the bone comes out, it's been fractured, and now it's up like that. I think it's fixable. Mm. I'm sure it's fixable. Leroy needs major surgery on his damaged leg. A pin will need to be inserted 
to hold the shattered femur together. This is uncharted territory. We do this on dogs. We've never done it before on a lamb. Who knows how it's going to end up. But first, it's bath time to make sure any contamination on Leroy's skin is removed. There's a label here, actually, that says, um, do not tumble dry as well, so... Thanks for the shower. If bacteria gets into an open wound during an operation, it could be fatal. Nice and dry, Leroy. Leroy also needs to be fed. The lamb is seriously underweight. That's it. Nothing more. The only nagging worry I have is that we may fix the fracture here, but if there's been significant nerve damage, then the function may never return. In fact, his Leroy has to be able to walk if he's to go back to that animal farm. Otherwise, it just doesn't look so good. Next on Bondi Vet, Lisa discovers just how much pain the pit bull has inflicted on Scruffy. If he goes under an anaesthetic while he's not stable, that could be life-threatening. And Leroy's surgery does not go to plan. It goes from being almost awake to being so deep that it's almost dangerous. Chris is about to operate on four-week-old Leroy's shattered back leg. The lamb was dumped at an animal farm. So that's the fracture there. You can see it's quite an explosive fracture. It looks as though it's just blown the, the two fragments apart. Chris needs to pin the two fragments together. It looks a little bit grotesque, but it's the first anchor point that enables us to bring the top bit in line with the bottom bit of bone. Operating on a lamb instead of a dog or cat is causing some problems. Chris is struggling to judge the right amount of anaesthetic for Leroy. We've had a few scares where it just goes so deep all of a sudden that you've got to really check that he's breathing. He's still got a heartbeat, but he likes to hold his breath for quite a while. He's a bit of a daredevil under anaesthetic and likes to scare us. How's he going there, Jules? He's good. That's right. Colours are up. See those two bones are aligned now? We've got the top fragment of the femur meeting the bottom fragment. Looks pretty good. That is a relief. <laughs> that was tricky. That was really tricky. Now it's about rest and rehabilitation. But there are no guarantees that Leroy's leg will heal well enough for him to return to the farm. Rest up. No, 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 no. Stay, stay off. No, no, don't want you to use the leg just yet. No, see, it doesn't work yet. The next few days will give us the answer about whether he goes back to his mates or whether the future doesn't look as bright as we'd like. Oh, it's not Jack. Thank you. Right back. Lisa is assessing the extent of Scruffy's shocking wounds. I've got dogs whimpering all around me and Scruffy hasn't made a peep and <laughs> considering what he's been through, what's happened to him tonight, he is one brave little dog. The eight-month-old terrier is viciously attacked by a pit bull. You're a good dog. Clipping this, I'm really starting to see how much trauma he's actually sustained. He's got puncture wounds on the front of his chest, not only that big laceration on the back, but the dog's got him around the front as well, and he's developing some massive bruising around the underside of his neck. Now, I'm not saying that all pit bulls are savage dogs. Obviously, a dog's temperament depends on their upbringing and their environment and their breeding. And I'm sure most pit bulls at home are lovely dogs. The problem is in this case that the dog was not controlled. It should have been on a lead and it attacked Scruffy. Now, the worry is that it could attack a child and that's just not on. Finally, the painful wound is flushed out with saline to remove any bacteria that That'll could cause a dangerous infection. Why don't you lie down? I'm not rushing to stitch that wound up immediately because we need to make sure Scruffy's stable before he goes under an anaesthetic. If he goes under an anaesthetic while he's not stable, that could be life-threatening. So we need to hold off until he improves a little bit. Chris, are you around? Yeah. 
We've just got a little pup here. We just don't know what she is. She's a bit of a cutie. Well, she's white now. <laughs> she's a dog. <laughs> yeah, we've got that far. Hello. At the Bondi Clinic, the subject of dog breeds has also become a talking point. This little girl is, I think, about 12 weeks old, and um, she's up for adoption, and I'm considering adopting her. My main worry is to find out if there's some pit bull in her. Um, I believe they're not all bad, but um, I'm just still concerned about that type of breed of dog with a young child. I'll give you my opinion. Bull Terrier cross Kelpie, but there is actually a way to be exact. Really? Yeah, okay. so we can actually take a DNA test. Wow. Okay. And, and the truth will be revealed. A $120 DNA test will now decide Snowy's future. There's a very serious side to this test. I mean, from Sue's point of view, she needs to know that Snowy is going to be safe and a good dog to have around the family. But from Snowy's point of view, it's even more dramatic because a bad result here and she could be heading straight back to the pound. After the break on Bondi Vet, the ordeal continues for Brave Scruffy. We've just got to monitor the area for any signs of infection because that's going to be our biggest risk at the moment. And will Leroy ever be able to go back to the farm? If the results aren't favourable, if there is a breed in there that is a worry from a safety point of view, what, what are you thinking? Um, that's a tough one because I'm really falling for her. Chris is about to take a DNA swab of Snowy. Sue is hoping to adopt the orphan but is concerned the puppy may have pit bull terrier in her breeding. I think that would be very difficult for me to give her up at this stage. However, I have to be concerned as to the welfare of my family. So it's a, it's a serious situation, yeah. The reason I put gloves on is because if I don't and I handle the swabs, there is a chance it'd come back that I was the father. <laughs> They're just going to get rubbed on the inside of her lips, rub them around, and what we're looking for is just a good coating of cells off the inside of the gum. Because dog DNA works exactly the same way as human DNA, it's just like those American police forensic TV shows. The evidence never lies. But I just hope there's nothing sinister lurking in Snowy's genes. Go sleepy bars and you'll wake up and you'll be all stitched. Brave Scruffy has stabilised enough to go to surgery. Look at him. It's amazing. It's it? just unbelievable. The eight month old terrier suffered shocking wounds after being attacked by a pit bull. He is seriously lucky that he hasn't broken his neck. He wouldn't be here with us today if that had been the case. It's, it's just mind blowing. Lisa now begins her patch-up job on Scruffy. The skin on his neck has been torn away from the muscles underneath. A drain is being inserted to make sure fluid pockets can't form under the wound. The drain is going to have to stay in for about three days just to allow the fluid to come out and we've just got to monitor the area for excessive swelling, discharge, any signs of infection because that's going to be our, our biggest risk at the moment. Oh, it's awake now. Oh, look at your tongue. Put it back in your mouth. Put it inside. Oh. Oh. Scruffy will now be put on a long-term course of antibiotics, oh. but Lisa believes there may be much tougher healing issues. Oh boy, dogs can really change after something like this, you know, one traumatic experience can be ingrained in their mind forever and there is a chance that they'll never be the same dog again. Your tongue's still out. You're sticking your tongue out to that pit bull, okay, saying ha. Have a rest. Hey Leroy, Leroy, what's all the noise about? Leroy's rehabilitation is continuing at the clinic, but his badly damaged leg still needs to show significant improvement. Right, buddy. And while Leroy's coping, Chris is well aware the little lamb has no future unless he makes a complete recovery.
My biggest concern for Leroy right now is the risk of nerve damage. Without physiotherapy, he may never really walk normally again. Leroy, come on. And as strange as it might seem, walking around the clinic and following me is actually part of his physio. Yeah. What are you doing there? Slippery floors? You know why they're slippery? Because you wee on them. That's why. Leroy and I have certainly become a little attached, yeah. My only concern is that whether Leroy now considers himself sheep or human. I think it might be time to head home for the weekend and maybe even hit the beach. It's a new breed, it's a Lambradoodle. <laughs> is it? Aren't, aren't many of them around. <laughs> you reckon she got it worked out? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> See those little waves in the water? That's called chop. Next time you hear the word chop, run away as fast as you can. That's my life advice to you. Next on Bondi Vet, will Scruffy ever recover from his savage attack? It's going to be one of those things that time will tell if he'll ever be back to his normal self again. <coughs> and does Snowy's DNA reveal a dark side? <coughs>
Roy is heading back to his mates at the farm after a successful operation on his shattered back leg. Hey, Lisa. Yeah? Well, look who it is. Come on, Leroy. Come on, buddy. Oh, hello, little one. <laughs> Come on, hello. Come on, buddy. See spots here? That's what you are. Hmm? You're a sheep, Leroy. My only regret is that we washed him before we brought him out here. I think we should have roughened him up. If you haven't noticed, he glows. He's so luminescent white. See you, champ. I've really been fighting, forming that bond, but he's Leroy Brown. He's part of the family. Where are you going, Leroy? I'm sorry, buddy. You gotta stay here with me now. It's a new mum. It's gonna be hard driving off. Yeah. I'm on my way to work, but I've just received a call and I've got to take a bit of a detour. A, a massive storm blew up last night, and I'm suspecting. This penguin I'm going to see right now was caught right in the middle of it. Hello. Go in here and ask. No worries, thank you. American visitors Dan and Ashley have found an injured penguin washed up on Bondi Beach while they were going for a late night swim. I'm just going to have a little look at him yeah, and yeah, I just don't want to stress him out too much right now. Figured he might be in a little bit of trouble, kind of the way he was walking, the way he was using his wing and stuff, so uh, we couldn't really leave him there, so we decided we'd grab him. Your name for him? We've been calling him Harmon. But... Harmon. <laughs> <laughs> so was he unable to move when you when you saw him? No, he wasn't unable to move, he just seemed like he didn't really want to, didn't really want to move that much, he just seemed like he was kind of struggling and he did move. He's not meant to be in a bathtub, <laughs> yeah. so in his mind, he's freaking yeah. out right now. Harmon must be terrified. I'm thinking the poor little guy normally lives in a penguin colony on the northern side of the harbour. And during last night's storm, he's been tossed around and blown way off course. That explains how he ended up being washed ashore at Bondi at 3 a.m. But it doesn't explain why he's so weak and why he's left himself so open to predators. Buddy. Get better, huh? Okay, thank you guys. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. There is something seriously wrong with little Harmon, and there's absolutely no chance of him surviving the ocean until I figure out what it is. Oh my god, so embarrassing. <laughs> Nine-month-old Ava has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash with a bizarre problem. She went in the laundry and she stole some underwear. I was chasing her, tried to uh, stop her, but she wouldn't stop. She would eat everything. And it was too late. I can't feel anything stuck well, here. They were very small. <laughs> were they small ones? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's oh embarrassing. God, it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> from One tiny G-string could cause Ava serious internal problems. There is a chance it can pass through and she'll poop it out, but there's probably more risk than anything that it's going to get stuck somewhere along her gut, and that's bad news for Ava because that would mean surgery. The easiest way to get them out would be to make her vomit, which happens pretty quickly. Yeah. We give her yeah. an injection. Yeah. Um, if she vomits, it will come out, hopefully come out straight away, but there is a big risk with making them vomit because it's it's something that, that is yeah. Yeah, yeah, of fabric, course, of course. that when they vomit, they can actually choke on it, and, and that can be life-threatening. Give her a cuddle. Oh, please. Put your best there. Back at the clinic, Chris is trying to find out why Harmon is so weak. So I'm sitting here checking his heart, which, which sounds okay. Notice his eyes are actually quite sunken, so he is certainly dehydrated. And that comes from the fact that he hasn't eaten, really, certainly today. 
Birds, like penguins, get their water through their fish, and if he hasn't eaten, then he hasn't drunk either. Pretty small, aren't you? I reckon you might be young. Young kid not able to handle a big surf, huh? Is that what happened? As he checks the penguin's weight, he makes an alarming discovery. Give me a second. What is that? Can't be. You see this? That's a tick. Look at it, it's been feeding off little Harmon here for at least a few days, and all the while that ticks are feeding, they're injecting their saliva, which has a toxin, which paralyzes them. But it paralyzes them from the back forward. Why couldn't you stand up on the beach this morning? Why couldn't you run away? Paralyzed legs. It's gotta be careful to get all of the tick. And that's it right there. It's a big tick. Big tick. A paralysis tick on a dog or a cat, absolutely. But on a penguin, it's gotta be some sort of first. Another one. Can you believe it? There it is, number two. Just in awe of the fact that one of these could be fatal for a big dog. He's got two. Chris is now considering giving Harmon a tick anti-serum normally used on cats and dogs. But it's impossible to predict what effect it will have on a penguin. I can give Harmon the tick serum and risk him suffering a fatal allergic reaction, or I can do nothing and potentially watch him die from the effects of the paralysis ticks. This is such a tough call. Lauren, Hi. this is Ava. Hi, Ava's Ava. swallowed her mummy's G-string. Lovely. <laughs> so mummy's very embarrassed about it, but I think we've caught it early, so hopefully we can get her to vomit okay. and um, get it out the easy way. Okay. Nine-month-old Ava is about to get a shot of apomorphine to help her bring up the underwear. The biggest problem that can happen with making a dog vomit up something that's soft and large is that when they're vomiting it can become stuck in their airways so they can choke. So we need to have a catheter ready, an anaesthetic ready because if that happens we've got to anaesthetise her straight away and get that thing out. Alright Ava, just a bit noisy sweetheart. Just a bit noisy. Alright sweetheart. Oh, no. I know. Oh, no. I know. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. These oh, always freak me out at the best of times because it can really go pear shaped. Alright Ava, Ava, oh, Ava, 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 Ava. The stop, it's, it's over. Getting... The stop, it's over. Actually, not really. <laughs> going to make you feel a bit sick soon. Really worried. Really, really worried. And I just hope that she could vomit and, uh, and that's all. That's all I hope. I'm sorry. I hate giving them this. It's not nice. so mean. All right, gorgeous, now we wait. Thank you. Can you stand up for us? Harmon is now feeling the full effects of the tick paralysis. The penguin can no longer stand up. Harmon is getting much worse, so that's really made the final decision for me. I'm going to move? I just don't think he's going to survive without having that anti-serum. So I'm just going to have to take the risk there could be a potentially fatal allergic reaction. Right, fingers crossed. That's all you've got. Harmon will now be monitored constantly to make sure he has no adverse reaction to the serum. Chrissy there. While the penguin rests, oh, really? yeah. a phone call alerts Chris to an emergency case about to arrive at the clinic. Right, Kurt, come straight through. Right, so what's happened? It's been stung by a blue bottle in the mouth. It's run 100%. Down at Malabar, throwing a stick in him off the rocks. Came back like this, and I thought he had a twitch or something. Picked up a stick with a blue bottle on it, and then he was shaking his head. So, definitely stung by a blue bottle. 
blue bottles are a constant danger on Australian beaches. Along the line of the blue bottle tentacle are a whole lot of stinging cells. Now these, once they detect skin or the inside of Kaiser's mouth in this situation, they fire a little arrow and that arrow contains a toxin. Not only is that extremely painful, the worrying thing for me right now is that this is going to start to shut off that airway and in a boxer like Kaiser, there's not much room to start with. Yeah, there's a little bit of swelling around the back of his throat there. It, that lymph gland is just the slightest bit enlarged actually at the moment. What I might do straight away is give him an injection of a corticosteroid to try and um, basically reverse the effects of any allergic reaction he could be having to the sting. Do you mind if I take him out the back to give him this? No. I just need to get someone to actually hold that vein up for him. Yeah, that's no, all right. He's all right. Thanks, I won't be a second. The worrying period for me is the next 10 or 20 minutes. That is the time when it could shut down the airway altogether. There's no reason why a blue bottle sting to a dog in that mouth or throat area couldn't be fatal. Good oh, man. Is he alright or what? Touch wood, eh? Next on Bondi go. Vet, complications for Ava the anteater. Honestly, my heart skipped a beat. I was really anxious. Oh, baby. And Chris keeps a round-the-clock watch on Harmon. We just won't know if that anti-serum is going to work for at least another 24 hours. The thing about blue bottles is that it's once they hit the lymph glands they can have pretty dramatic effects in the circulation. They can cause a pretty big drop in, in blood pressure. Kaiser has just been stung on the mouth by a blue bottle. His breathing's just a, it's just a little bit gurgly at the moment and he, he's, he's quite agitated. The boxer's air supply is in danger of being cut off by swelling in the mouth and throat. He's my wife, he's, he's my boy, you know. I hope Now the blue bottle sting is certainly going to be causing a lot of the anxiety we're seeing in Kaiser, but I can't help but think that some of it's also coming from Kurt. Kurt's wound up, he's stressed, he's very afraid about what's going on, and as a result, Kaiser follows suit. <sighs> the more stressed he becomes, the more oxygen he actually needs, and right now, Every bit of oxygen he actually gets into his body is golden. I'm just going to go in slowly here. Chris gives Kaiser an anti-inflammatory shot to quickly bring down the life-threatening swelling. That's so relaxed in there a little bit too. You can see the effect that's had. You see he's just breathing a little bit more comfortably. Yeah, just waiting here, I just felt physically sick, like seeming still a bit shaky, you know? Um, like, like I said, I'd sell everything for my dogs, you know, any one of them, like, they mean everything to me. Kaiser is lucky. Within half an hour, his breathing has stabilised. Oh, you're relaxed, aren't you? Look at that. Kurt is still stressed. He's so in love with Kaiser, he's about to get a tattoo of the boxer. Oh, I know that I want him forever on my body, like, I mean, you know what I mean? It means, yeah. It means the world to me, yeah. Mm. Yep. Where is he, Kaiser? Oh my god. It's Kaiser, boy! Hello! Hey, Chris. There you go. Is he alright or what? Mate, he's fine. Yeah? He's gonna be okay. okay. Yeah. Sweet, 100%. Got, yeah, I mean, he's a little bit shaken by the whole thing. Mmm. Big box down. Good on you, buddy. I'm seriously like, you don't understand, I'm like, yeah, like freaking out. You know, it's fine. Cool. I, I could tell that, don't worry. Thanks again, mate. It's a life I'm really struggling to think of a time where I've felt more appreciated in my life. But at least he's saying thank you, and that really means a lot. She's already starting to lick her lips, so she's feeling nauseous, so the vomit's going to happen pretty soon. Nine-month-old Ava has been given a shot of apomorphine to help purge the G-string she stole from her owner's laundry. I know, sweetheart. Oh, I feel so mean doing <laughs> this. You feel nauseous yourself. Here we go. Here we go. Good girl. Good girl. That's a girl. It's mm. not ideal. 
when Ava vomited the first time and there was nothing there, I honestly, my heart skipped a beat. I was really anxious. Lisa's now worried the tiny spaniel won't be able to bring up the underwear. The next option is emergency abdominal surgery. All right, baby, Maybe the second time lucky. Come on, sweetheart. His heart rate's certainly stable. There's no sound of any bronchoconstriction, which is the narrowing of the airways in an allergic reaction. So he's tracking along pretty well. Harmon has made it through stage one of his recovery, but the little penguin still has a long way to go. He's still fighting the effects of the tick paralysis, and we just won't know if that anti serum's gonna work for at least another 24 hours. You know where you're going though, don't you? To my house. You had no choice in the matter at all. Harmon needs peace and quiet to recover and to get his strength back. But a vet clinic full of barking dogs obviously isn't the place to do that. So I'm going to have to take him home with me. That means I've got to tell my flatmates to keep the noise down. Hello George. Hello. Just to inspect all visitors, George. It's been a torrid day for Harmon and finally the exhausted penguin gets a much needed feed. Harmon, meet George. George went in the ocean. He didn't like it. You live in the ocean, you like it. George is the cat who made headlines when he was cruelly locked in a cage, dumped in the Bondi surf and left to drown. Chris saved him and ended up adopting him. And now he's living a pretty good life with the occasional visitor. You ever get the feeling you're being watched, Harmon? Hmm? It's bedtime. I oh, know it's early. Harmon will need to be checked during the night to make sure the anti serum is winning the battle against the tick toxin. Have a good night's sleep, buddy. The next 12 hours are critical. Next on Bondi Vet, Kurt shows his true colours. I know the outcome's going to be unreal. And will Harmon ever be able to return to the ocean? Go. Here we go. Good girl. Time Good is girl. running out for Ava, That's the little girl. spaniel who swallowed That's her owner's underwear. Come on. If she doesn't throw it up soon, the only That's answer is emergency surgery. Come on. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Good girl. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to get some gloves and just Good make girl. Sure. Honestly, I've never been more happy to see a G string. Good news. <laughs> they match your top, I see. <laughs> they match my top. They match your top too. Yeah, that's right. I've, given them, I've given them a rinse. Thank um, you. <laughs> she, she, they came out really easily. So. <laughs> Thank oh, you very much. <laughs> Ava is ecstatic to be reunited with Monia. But in the future, can the naughty puppy resist her owner's lingerie? <sighs> She's obviously empty. <laughs> She's going to have to learn her lesson now, lock up the underwear, lock up anything that Ava can get to. She's got a ferocious appetite and I really don't think she's going to grow out of it. <laughs> you stick to dog food, huh? No more underwear. You see? No. But I hope that she's learned the lesson. Hmm? Have you? Maybe. <laughs> Food on your mind? Match finger. That's not a fish. That's a fish. Here you go. Next morning, Harmon is desperate for more food. That's an improvement, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's it's coming. It's a good sign that he's winning the battle against the tick poison <laughs> in his system. This is why I'm quite keen to get him on his way soon. This is behaviour he'd normally display around his mum. He's begging for food. He's thinking, I'm actually going to regurgitate the food seemingly through my fingers. That's penguin saliva. The easier we do it, the easier we do it. <laughs> it's salty. He's pretty much ready to make the journey he was trying to attempt during that storm. So we're going to do it for him. But in 
a bit of a scenic way. Kurt is getting that tattoo of his beloved boxer Kaiser, and it's a lot more painful than he expected. What we do for our dog today? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Eh? It's just like, like almost to the point of like saying stop, Trevor. <laughs> but nah, it's just I know I know the outcome's going to be unreal. Seven hours of pain later. Yeah, have a look at Oh my god, that is insane. I'm very happy with that. I'm very stoked with that. Kaiser, look! It's Kaiser! That's you! It's you! How are you going? I'm Chris. Yeah, very well, nice to meet you, Chris Rick. Hey, Rick. Now, this is Harmon. I've never had a passenger like that in my taxi before, I must say. We're very excited. Any extra fare for him? Absolutely gorgeous, no, not at all. Good He's free. <laughs> As soon as we were out in the water, Harmon started to get excited. He's had such a tough battle. I just hope he can find his mates and get on with his life. But with wildlife releases, there's never any guarantees. Is this familiar, Harmon? It's all starting to make sense. Won't be too long. It's just a perfect spot. Quiet, secluded beach. We're surrounded by penguin colonies. You just have to jump into that water there and you'll find some friends. It's just spot on. You keep safe, champ. Okay. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go, champ. Here you go. Off you go. To navigate all those challenges, come through it all, and then have this, great. Last one at Bondi for a week. I guess I better enjoy this one. Chris is flying to Fiji with his father Graham, a vet of 42 years experience. We've got a massive veterinary care package that we're taking to Fiji today. Where is he? Is he still down at the beach? Why we're going there is that Dad was in Fiji a month ago and discovered there's only one vet for the whole of Fiji. They've got a lot of animals, and a lot of animals go without care for that fact. It was important we made this trip before, but now, after this massive tropical cyclone has ripped through the Fiji Islands, it's even more critical. Our timing couldn't be better. We're taking over all the equipment they don't already have, which is a lot, and hopefully make a difference over there. I thought you'd have it done by now. Well, it's finished here. While well, waiting for you. Dad and I are good mates and we get along. We get along for short periods of time. That's why I'm bringing the surfboard. Having a dad that's a vet, when you're a vet yourself, it's just this constant nagging voice, questioning. Is that how you do it? It's not how we did it in our day. Keys? What happened to you? Are you're you joking. Did? No, it's Keys. You haven't got them. I don't have them. I feel like you gave them to you. You did not give them to me. <sighs> Nothing's changed. What you swearing to, huh? I've never worked for Chris as long as this, so it's going to be really interesting to see how we get on together. Found them. One week, huh? Mm. Sash emergency vet Lisa Chimes has also volunteered to come on the trip. But the brown boys are not sure how she'll cope. <laughs> Where does Lisa think she's going to Shangri-La Resort? <laughs> what are those? These shorts? They're not. Is that for real? What is it with the shorts? You cannot wear those on the plane. I'm not sure what's going to be bigger, the veterinary care package or Lisa's luggage. The vet team have arrived at Nandi, Fiji's third largest population centre. Couldn't uh, help noticing your shorts. <laughs> are you serious? Did you set this up? I told you, I told you not to get it. A bit too, uh, <laughs> bit too flowery for uh, Fiji, yeah? 
But anyway, on this case, on this occasion, I'll let you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Good luck. Uh. What? Thank you. Graham has already seen the SPCA vet clinic in Nandi, which is run by two volunteer vet nurses. But for Chris and Lisa, the basic premises are a reality check. Oh my God, I just can't believe the condition here. Yeah, this, this is a vet hospital. They've got nothing. It's incredible to believe that these vet nurses here managed to run this clinic because you're so undermanned, you're so under-equipped. You must just have so many, so many situations where you, you feel like throwing your hands up in the air. But to the credit of Lynn and Sue, they don't do that. Well, Chris is done, isn't it? Let's see what we've got. Alcohol bags inside. What we're giving in these packages is so small in comparison to the passion and the commitment they actually have inside them already. The reaction from Lynn was just, it said it all, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant, thank you. Yeah, I really don't know what to say. So I'll start getting emotional, so it's better somebody else say something, really. <laughs> no, that's brilliant, thank you. That stuff that we no longer have use for back home, and here it's like gold, it just warms my heart. We're heading out to a local village. We've been asked by the head man to come out and take a look at all their animals. We don't know what to expect, what we're gonna to have to treat, but we're gonna do our best. Never seen anything like it. We've got an outdoor vet clinic under a mango tree. So we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Most of the operations today will be de-sexing. But without anaesthetic machines, even this routine surgery can be risky. I don't have any clippers here. <laughs> Old school. Blackie is Chris's first patient. She weighs just seven kilograms. The worry for me is, given the fact she is so skinny, it's very easy to overdose her. So we just have to be so careful with every drug we use. The surgery can't start until Blackie is completely under. No, she's feeling that, she's just moved to her. Next on Bondi Vet, a mercy dash to save a small village's most prized possession. The tin yeah. flew off the house yeah. and hit Dudu. Oh wow. And a steep learning curve for Lisa. This is making me panic. I just have to try and accept that I'm out of my comfort zone. <laughs>
the Australian team are in demand. An SOS call has come from Taviuni, one of the remote northern islands savaged by a terrifying cyclone only a few days before. Now there have been a lot of reports of injured animals, so we're off to see a horse that got caught right in the middle of it. For these poor villagers, the effects of the cyclone have made the struggle to feed their families even more difficult. How are you? I'm Chris. Gunner. The Gunner. This is Graham. The dad. At the village, the team are met by the horse's owner, Takana. Oh, which way's the horse? It's up here. Okay. Ten-year-old Dundu is suffering from a shocking wound to her flank and is in too much pain to work. How did this happen, do you know? The tin flew from the house. The tin yeah. flew off the house yeah. and hit Dudu. And hit Dudu. Oh wow. It's a nasty wound. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dundu is the village's most important possession. Without her, they can't move their crops the two kilometres down from the hills. So to clean this wound, we need to get Dundu to an area where we have a bit of space and it's nice and level. Where Dundu has that cut is a very sensitive area. So not only does it stop Dundu from working, it's also at great risk of getting infected. And either one of those situations would be devastating for this village. River shoes. <laughs> Princess? No. For Lisa, the field work in Fiji is proving to be a constant challenge. Well done. <laughs> wow. That was the express crossing. Well done. <laughs> This job is going to be extremely difficult for the simple fact Dundu isn't used to vets. This whole situation is so foreign to her. She's not going to trust me, she's not going to know what I'm doing there. This might sting a bit. <laughs> the scissors won't penetrate into you, that. The, 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 use the scissors in the kit. Open the kit up. Yeah, but I'm still telling you, the, the point of the scissors won't get in there. It's tough, yeah. The browns. We both have a different approach to what we're doing, and possibly we're both too stubborn to change. The biggest challenge here is getting that local anaesthetic in, because we can't put that surgical needle through her skin and have her feel it. If that happens, she'll run away. Ooh, ooh. The problem is that when the wound has occurred, as it's started to try to heal itself, it's, it's actually flattened and stretched out. And so the skin's actually quite tight. So to bring those skin edges back together and stitch them is going to be quite difficult. It's going to take quite a bit of force to bring them in. Easy. We're almost done, which is lucky because the local anaesthetic's almost worn off. And she's starting to jump when this needle goes in, so as soon as we can get this last one done the better off we're going to be. You are... Oh. Done. Good girl. Dundu now needs two weeks rest before she's back to work helping the village. Even though Dundu works hard, she certainly gets some pretty quality R&R &R time. Kicking back by the beach, going for swims, and in all seriousness, that salt water is quite good for a wound. It will help her to heal. Welcome to the Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. News of the vet team is spreading quickly. A call for help has come from the owners of a resort on Matangi Island, a 40-minute boat trip from Taviuni. It's all right, this, isn't it? That's after the cyclone. Imagine before the cyclone, it was amazing. As you know, there are 330 islands in Fiji, and there's usually just one vet in the country. So the, the chance of getting three is, uh, is a miracle for us. We're, we're really glad you guys are here. She somehow managed to do a somersault, believe it or not. Oh. Uh, she got up on her back legs in the corner and uh, flipped over and landed on the back. Lisa and Graham are on their way to examine Nigel's badly injured Maltese Terrier, eight-year-old Etty. Yesterday she got really, really bad. She could hardly walk. Her back legs were crossing. 
and she was tipping over. And um, then I heard you guys were coming to town and it was like angels from heaven. <laughs> because she's, she's, she's been through a lot and um, she doesn't deserve to be in pain. That's the main thing. Mm, hey little darling. Eddie has other medical issues. She's blind and suffers from seizures. I've got her, it's okay. I'm very worried if it is a case of a spinal problem and she needs surgery and we're on this remote island here in Fiji. I don't think spinal surgery is even done in Fiji. After the break on Bondi Vet, Chris comes face to face with a frightening patient. In a confined space, she could just corner me and I couldn't move. And can Lisa and Graham do anything to help little Eddie? It would absolutely be terrifying. Don't <laughs> okay. Oh, come on. Dad. She's just had a bath. On Fiji's remote Matangi Island, Chris is being introduced really to She's his gargantuan patient, Miss Piggy. She doesn't like men. She just has never been keen on men. <laughs> Piggy, outside. Come on, come on, Piggy. I got more. Come, come on, darling. Good girl. Piggy poo. Miss Piggy, on, Piggy can hardly come walk on. because come of her badly Piggy. overgrown okay, nails. Cutting yeah. them is Chris's intimidating assignment. Come on, darling. If this cycle continues of her not being able to walk, of just eating and not exercising, she'll get so fat it'll kill her. I can't cut nails in mud. Move it, move it, move it. Yes, yes, move it. So how many years has she been circling now for? Two, two and a half. After falling on her back several days ago, eight-year-old Etty has been in severe pain and is finding it difficult to walk properly. See, what we're trying to determine here, Nigel, is whether there are any problems associated with her spinal cord, yeah. to see whether the reflexes are going through to her brain. Yeah, so there. Yeah. yeah. If Eddie does need an operation on her back, there are further complications. The local airline will not allow pets to travel on their planes. If you have an emergency and your pet is in distress, what are you going to do? There's no flying doctor service like we have in remote areas of Australia. It, it would absolutely be terrifying. She's precious. She's, she needs care. And we're blessed, we are blessed, to have her and able to give her a decent sort of home. Nah, uh, uh, uh. Would this little room here be better or take her inside? Meanwhile, Miss Piggy is finally on the move and about to be barricaded so Chris can try and cut her dangerously overgrown nails. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Lie down. Butter and bread and jam, please. Whatever you got. Just eat slowly there, all right? Because we, we just can't keep up with you. Right, there's something in her mouth. She's distracted enough that I can actually get the shears in there and, and trim these nails. I'm with you. Well, you're a jolly good piggy. Eat all the biscuits and shut up. I'm with you. Keeping the food supply coming is the matriarch of Matangi Island, Christine's mum, Flo. You have to make sure that she doesn't bite. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Just take your little backside. All right. You want Miss Piggy? Here's your bread. Oh, you needy. Christine got a really nasty bite. Miss Piggy's upper and lower incisors just pushed straight through her hand, punctured it, and went right through. Just get a towel. Get a towel. I think that's enough. You're nearly there, Mum. Okay. No, I'll count if you like. Okay. And which way are you going? I'm going this way first. Okay, okay. Graham is not convinced Etty's inability to walk is caused by a spinal injury. Oh, Look at your Six. eyes after this. He's hoping this simple spin test may provide more clues. She's got normal position on the stagmas. I'm going to say something that's going to be different to what 
you're expecting to hear in terms of what's wrong with her. Sure, okay. So what we actually think is going on is that she's got a problem with her brain. It's, it's almost it's like a meningitis. Mm. So they get it's called GME, and basically they get inflammation in their brain. GME can be life threatening. So there are cases where we give them medication and they don't respond. Best case scenario is that we put Etty on cortisone and she responds. Hopefully she'll stop circling, she'll be able to walk normally, she won't fall over. Um, she may never be a normal dog, but we want to get her to a point where she has a good quality of life. Thanks, thank Daddy. you. Thank you very thank much. You, no. okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. Okay, you thank respond you. to your medication now and that's an order. Doctor's <laughs> orders. Okay? Yes. <laughs> she says yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Next on Bondi Vet, the battle for supremacy continues. <laughs> and the ultimate surf safari. They're great whites. They even make me look half decent. That's how good they are. I'm not going to lose now, piggies. I am not going to lose. <laughs> It was close, I nearly lost then, you're right, okay, good point. Maybe Biggie. after all would be Biggie. a good outcome. Chris has survived his torrid nail cutting session with Miss Piggy. Done. Yay! How did I get talked into doing that? This is a tropical island with white sandy beaches, palm trees. You go on holidays here, you don't go to hell. And hell was what we just went to. We had fun, didn't we? Kind of, ah. kind of cute. See you later. Did you paint its nails? I want to talk about it. And I brought nail polish. Thank you. Treat the small animal. Leave, leave me to carry all the heavy gear again. Yeah, well, you treat the smallest animal on the island. And you keep its weight in the end. Boys, boys, now it's enough. Let's have a nice relaxing time, guys. Hugs? No, no hugs. Let's just go. This is great. It's a great idea. Thank you. It's been amazing. We really something a bit different. Yeah, we're so much closer as a result. It is way too far. No, don't. No, it's cheap. <laughs> well done, Blake. Why do you wait? Well done. It's the vet team's last day in Fiji. It's going to be a change of pace and scenery. It's been a pretty full on week, so I think it's time to enjoy a little bit of R&R. &R. So we've actually been invited to the world famous Nomotu Island. I didn't bring that surfboard for nothing, so it might be time to get it out and see what it can do. Okay, go ahead, hop out. They're great waves. Six foot sets. They even make me look half decent. That's how good they are. I've found this trip very confronting. Fiji's animals are in desperate need of help here and the Fijians need to learn how to look after their animals. They need education and they need volunteers, vets from around the world to come and help them do that. You'd love to be able to change everything to help all the animals on all the islands but you just hope that by doing a little bit here and there you do make a difference to those animals' lives. You show those people how to look after their animals and everyone's better off. Hey, how you going, Rebecca? Yeah, I'm Rebecca, Rebecca. The other Rebecca is the owner Okay, two Rebeccas, how you going? Chris. I'll get here as soon as I can. Six-year-old Willow has just dragged herself into an exclusive fashion boutique. We were just having some champagne with some clients and serving some customers and this dog just ran in through my back door and just pretty much collapsed at my feet. Owner Rebecca was letting Willow out of the car when her husky cross ran off. I didn't hear a screeching of um, tyres or anything like that, I just sort of heard her screeching. Willow can no longer move her back legs is lashing out at everyone trying to help her. She turned around and got me by the hand, so she's got a couple of teeth right through my thumb there. Actually, she's got the, the black running through here as well. Yeah. So I'd say she has actually been, been hit by a car, looking oh. at that. All right. Okay, she's got some deep pain sensation. <coughs> so, 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 so. 
So she can actually sense that there, which is good. For me, what I'm feeling the most is around her, her pelvis. I bend up her, her femur on her left side, I bend that up, it feels fine. Yeah. It's just when I start to, to really move that joint around around her pelvis, that's when she responds. She's very loving and she is very bossy, but she's amazing, I love her to bits. Hey Willow, I oh, know buddy. Hey Willow, I'm sorry. A combination of anti-inflammatories and pain relief is helping stabilise the traumatised dog. Hey puppy, it's alright. Willow's not a, a savage dog, she's just snapping because she's in so much pain. The cruel part is that I've got to get her up just to get her back to the clinic so we can x-ray her. It's going to hurt the most, I know Willow, it's alright. She's not going to like it, I don't want to put her through that, but we just have to work out what's happened when that car hit her. Possum's been brought in. Can you look at it for me? Oh, it looks like it's been dead for a while. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, a ringtail possum has been brought in after being found by a roadside. Now this possum is dead, but what I need to do is check if it's a female, if there's a baby in the pouch, because that's the most important thing we can do for now. Oh, little guy, come on. Oh. Oh no, it makes me so upset to see this because it's just, he's just desperate for his mum and it's really important that we're going to keep him warm, get some food into him and just keep our fingers crossed that, that he makes it. Oh, good little one. What I need to do is weigh him and then that can give us a good indication of how old he is and whether he's going to be able to survive. About 45, 46 grams. He's right on the borderline of, of a safe weight. Oh, sweetie. Lisa must now act fast to get vital nutrients into the young possum's system. You can go in my pocket. This is basically a milk supplement that we, can, we use for orphaned animals. It's got glucose in it, it gives them fluid. This is replacing his mother's milk, so if he doesn't get it, he's not going to survive. So we'll give her this stronger pain relief, uh, and then hopefully that'll then relax to the point where we actually x-ray her. Okay. It appears Willow has been hit by a car and lost the function of her back legs. It's gonna hurt a little bit. I'm sorry we have to put it through that, but just to get the answers we need, there's just no other way. You can see this spinal area is okay, but when we get to here, there is an issue. She's got fractured ribs. Fractured ribs are extremely painful, but we don't go in and operate on those. No. They will actually heal themselves. Darling, relax. The x-rays are trying to tell me that there are no fractures in those hips or those back legs, but I'm just not convinced. My every instinct is saying that Willow is so sore because there is something seriously wrong here. Big mystery is working out what it is and, and I, I, geez, I would have had my money on, on a broken leg or a fractured pelvis. Willow will have to stay at the clinic for observation overnight. I think when I get home I'll probably need a stiff drink and then I think I'll probably get a good night's sleep because I know that she's in good hands. Oh my God, she's everything to me, you know, she's my best friend. Look, I'd love to think that tomorrow morning she's going to be much improved, more relaxed, more comfortable and more mobile, but I've got a sinking feeling that's not going to be the case. Oh, sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. There you go. <laughs> See you, Willow. <laughs> Next on Bondi Vet, 
Cruise to the rescue as a large snake moves in to a suburban swimming pool. People have died through confusing a broad-headed snake for a diamond python. I don't really want to be one of them. <laughs> and will Willow ever walk again? Oh, you're really trying, aren't you? It's a girl boy. Mm, I think it's a girl. A girl? I've been calling him a boy. All right, all right, all right. Have a drink and then you can go into a warm bed. Lisa's trying to tempt the orphaned ringtail possum with some much needed milk supplement. This little girl's chances of survival are pretty slim, but she's arrived on our doorstep and she's got hair and let's give it a go. Why not? She deserves a chance, doesn't she? Hey, and you like your milk? You do. There you go, he's taking it. <laughs> Our goal is with her to get her off to a wildlife carer because they're equipped to look after these little guys 24 hours a day and that's going to be her best chance. Come on, have a little bit more. Specialist wildlife carer Beverly has just arrived and is waiting to take custody of the orphan. Oh, she's so adorable. I must say I'm getting a bit attached. Well, I think we'll have to call her Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Little Lisa! <laughs> Lisa the possum is adorable and it is sad to say goodbye to her and it was difficult when I was putting her back in the pouch and the little tail was holding onto my finger. Little tail. <laughs> They've lost mum, they've lost all the immunity that they would get from mum and um, they really struggle, yeah. So we just hope for the best. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Little Lisa will be up in a tree looking down on us all and hopefully not causing too much havoc. <coughs> wow, it's really... All of the body is recovering mm. apart from that one area, that one very critical area, which are these back legs. The next day, car accident victim Willow still can't walk. Oh, you're really trying, aren't you? I couldn't imagine my life without her, actually. Yeah. All right. Well, just a couple of shots, girl. 12 hours on from the impact, Chris is hoping a fresh set of x-rays will provide more answers. X-ray. Let's have a look. Oh no. So, she's got a fractured pelvis. You can see it there, that bone's lifting right off. Now, that's the old one there, taken on the day of the accident, with just no sign of any fracture at all. But what's probably happening is she's had a hairline crack here, and then the muscles have just forced it apart and leave it open, just like that. So. This is going to be an extremely tricky fracture to fix. Willow is going to need to go and see Andrew Marchewski at SASH. It's an extremely painful procedure, especially when she's already been through so much. I'm just really worried, you know, being sort of feeling guilty and sad, angry, <laughs> you know. That's what's sort of worried me, that she's not going to be able to run with her dog mates and trying to be strong for both of us. Hey. 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 You'll be fine, okay? You'll be brave. And you'll be brave too. Thanks, Chris. Right. I really appreciate Stay it. Strong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. See you later. See you, Willow. Say bye, Willow. The operation to restore Willow's mobility will be long and difficult. Specialist surgeon Andrew Marchewski is cautious about the outcome. I have got my concerns for her nerve function and I know she's got some um, and it's pretty good but we don't know how much damage has been done to the nerve and how much improvement she'll get. There is a risk that we may do some more damage but the chances of her not being able to walk again are much greater if we do nothing. Okay. Good girl. Bye Willow.
Chris has just been called out to a very different emergency. Normally a trip like this to see a snake would be to the Australian Reptile Park, only this time it's to a suburban swimming pool. We don't know what type of snake, all we know is that it's six foot long and it's been in the pool overnight. It's going to be crazy. How are you going? Hi Chris. Must be Pam. It is Pam. Thank you so much for coming. I'd That's really all right. like you to have a look and see if that snake I'm, is still there. I'm going to say I'm looking forward to seeing it myself. A snake was discovered when Pam was having a I swim with her grandchildren. Snake. Just as we we're about to leave, Sophia looked over and just near the skimmer box there, yep. she said, Nana, what's that thing? And I looked over and I thought, oh, that looks like a frog. And then I looked closer and I thought, no, no, it's a snake's head. Why would he come in the water? Good question. First of all, it, it's quite hot, so yeah. he's, he could be quite dehydrated. The other thing is that um, he could be trying to shed his skin. Right. If it looks like I'm really taking my time here, I am. And there's a very good reason for that. I'm still not convinced as to what sort of snake we're dealing with here. There are two main possibilities. First of all, a diamond python, which is what I'm hoping for. The second possibility is a broad-headed snake. They're venomous. They look very similar. They're a little bit shorter. But people have died through confusing a broad-headed snake for a diamond python. I don't really want to be one of them. After the break on Bondi Vet, a marathon surgery for Willow. It's bloody hard. And will Chris outsmart the rogue intruder? Oh, no, no, don't do that. Ah! We're going to grab it here, mm -hmm. and then I'll move my hand in there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get control of the snake's head there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you can use it, that bag as protection if you like. It'll go in there and then away. Right. It might move a little bit more than that. Ah! Let's go. Got to yeah. be brave. Okay. Chris and Pam now need to determine whether the reptile that's taken up residence in the pool is a non-venomous python or a deadly broad-headed snake. Is it looking more like a python? Yeah, it looks more like a python to me. Going on the markings and the length, he's got to be a diamond python. It's good news, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of snake here to deal with. Oh, Chris. Wow. Wow. Can you grab it by your prong? Chris the vet, you've got to win here. It's far from ideal, but the one thing I do have on my side is Pam's support <laughs> in my ear from a good meter away, which is nice. I'm brave here. <laughs> Do you need me for anything? Oh, there he is. Quick, can you grab him? <gasps> oh, come on, jeez, he's fast too. Let's get a grip of him. His bag won't stay open. I just can't believe how big he is. He's just slippery. Ah! Ooh. There you go, Shook. Now you can tell us. Now you can tell us. Car accident victim Willow is having a CT scan before the operation on her badly fractured pelvis. So this is a 3D reconstruction of the CT scan. What's interesting is that this is the fracture going up through there, and so this part is fractured away from that. Um, that's the other side, and that's quite normal. That'll be our challenge for today. We'll, we'll sweat over this one, getting it back in the right spot. Andrew will insert a combination of screws and metal plates. If the screw's a little high, you can end up in the spinal canal and damage the nerves that go through there. And if it's too low, you don't get enough bone and it's not secure enough. I'll just come your side. that this is being problematic. I mean, she's a really big dog and there's a lot of swelling and they're just tough fractures. It's slippery, that's the thing, isn't it? It's the problem. Just stay there. 
Oh, no, no. Don't do it. <sighs> Stay still, come on. Had him too. Please. Well done, Pam. Oh. I thought that'd be easier. I really did. I was wondering when you were going to fall in the pool, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Look at that. The reason he's in your pool yeah. is because he's trying to soften up his skin right. to lose it. Well, I didn't think we'd have to go to the point where you had to hold the bag. No, I did. You did it. You did it very well. I did it. I have something to tell my grandchildren. <laughs> I think they're going to be very impressed. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to hit the road. All right. Did you want a little kiss before? Oh, I'd love it. Oh. No, no, I'd rather have a kiss of you. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Not the You're snake. Very good. You can take the snake away. <laughs> Mate, find it a good home. I will, don't worry. It's bloody hard. One half of Willow's fracture has been repaired, but the other side is a much bigger challenge. That one we only needed to get two screws in and that was hard enough. This one we're going to have to get eight or nine. Got him. Right on, bang on. Uh, well, we've got all the screws in. I'm just doing a last minute tighten to make sure they're all nice and tight. After five hours, the surgery is finally over. It was difficult to get the fractures back together. Um, ultimately, we got it really nice, but it took a long time. Ah. Pretty sure she got rear-ended. Right. She just got smashed. And yet, when she arms. came running back to me, I thought that she'd gone into a fight with a cat because she had a, a graze across her. Well, <laughs> it's only. Well, no. <laughs> yeah, I wish. It's a jaguar. Yeah. It's, it's the only cat that's dealt with her, I think. Hi, darling. Oh my god. Hi, sweetie. I was just like freaking out. I, I mean, you don't want to think the worst, but at the same time, you can't help it, you know? You just think, well, what's taking so long? This should have been over, you know? We've got her through this part of it, but there's a long recuperative period. And if this is a human, you'd be in a wheelchair for six or eight weeks and doing physio, so. Beck's going to have to do a lot of hard work now as well. Oh man, a week ago if someone had told me that this is what I'd be going through, I would never have believed it. She's been so brave, haven't you darling? Next on Bondi Vet, the python is out for revenge. Hello. Can we, can we talk about this? And Willow faces a big test. Yeah, really nervous. Just getting her home. Oh yes, Jack is How am I going to cope? Chris has found a new home for the feisty python he captured in a swimming pool after a titanic struggle. Hello. Oh, can we, can we talk about this? I think he's trying to tell me it's probably time. The skin's just sliding off. Looks good. Are you going to be a good girl? Yes, your mummy's here. A week yes, after the surgery that's yes, made it possible for her to walk again, hey. Willow is able to go home. Just getting her home. Oh, yes, How am I going to cope? That's a good dog. Oh, here she comes. Look at it's you. your mum. Hi, it sweetie. Look at that. Hello, my girl. For the next two weeks, a towel is your friend. OK. Um, I don't want her walking anywhere without it. No running or jumping for you, though. No. I think she's ready to come home. I think she misses her mum. <laughs> yes, I miss her. <laughs> oh, sweetheart. As for Lisa, the ringtail possum, she fought hard for several weeks. But despite round-the-clock attention from wildlife carers, sadly the orphan didn't survive. Yay, cheers, hey, Willow. cheers, Willow. Cheers. <laughs> Two months after the accident, Willow is the guest of honour at a special party to celebrate her recovery. Willow, look at you go. Wow. 
Yes, we've been through hell, but it's okay. <laughs> I can't believe it's yeah, the same yeah. dog. It's just an incredible difference from where she was on that awful day where she was in such serious pain to now where she's walking beautifully. It's very impressive for you. <laughs> These are the sort of endings that I do my job for. Girl. How long has he had it on there for? Uh, it's been about an hour. Harry the parrot is making an after-hours visit to the Bondi clinic. Somehow he's managed to get a gold belt wedged onto his beak. So you've been trying to get it off? Uh, we tried, yeah, we tried it on me and my, uh, my other half, but to no avail. But helping a stressed out bird with a bling problem is not going to be easy. The hardest aspect of getting this bell off is the fact that Harry doesn't like being held. Come on. Come on. Oh. How do you get a bell off a beak from a bird that doesn't like being touched? That's a challenge. He likes to chew beads, yeah. uh, so we're getting like monkey bags of beads, and I think the bell was in there. All right, so I'm gonna have to find a way here of basically catching him yeah. with my hands, mm -hmm. but securing that beak, because that beak is, is quite powerful, even though it's mm -hmm. got the, the bell on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know about it when it when it gets you. The more Harry flies around, the more stress he puts on his whole system, and the more difficult it becomes for me. If we're going to get that bell off, it has to be quick. Otherwise, stress can kill Harry. This will be a tricky operation. Oh my. Once the bell is dislodged, Harry could easily swallow it and choke. You can start by trying to lift up these. There's little burrs here on the bell. Come on, Harry. No, no, no. Harry, hey, don't swallow it. Don't swallow it. Oh, oh good boy. Thought he was going to swallow it there for a second. Consider myself a lover of all animals. Six. Harry's not a lover of all vets. That was very clear. It's a good result. But the friendship, was there ever one? There you go, pal. There you go, mate. We'll get you home now. You're all done. I think if you could tell now, we'd probably be swearing. Swearing at anyone in particular, do you think? Uh, definitely a gentleman dressed in blue, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Call Chris. <laughs> Tricks? Tricks? Go on. Impress me. While we're quiet. Over at the Bondi quiet. Referral Hospital Stay. Sash, it's unusually Stay. slow in the Stay. ER. So vets Stay. Darren and Lisa are amusing themselves comparing the IQs of their pets. Can you drop? Good boy. Good boy. Ready? Do the high five. Good boy. Another high five. Good boy. <laughs> well, Stanley's the best dog in the world, so <laughs> he's much better than Nelson. He's much cleverer than Nelson. Nelson, you want to share the stick? Give no, it to Nelson. you don't like sticks. But clever Stanley's yeah, big Stanley. stick is about to bring him <laughs> unstuck. Yeah, Stanley doesn't quite understand dimensions, so he really understands that the bigger is better. <laughs> well, bring it. Bring it then. Come on, see how smart you are. Bring it. Come. Oh. Oh. Let's just scratch all the walls. Suddenly, the fun and games are over. A two-year-old Jack Russell has arrived with suspicious marks on her neck. I picked her up off her bed and she's really wobbly on her back legs. And then she just peed red blood, like dark red blood. And I thought, no, something's really wrong now. Bobby is rushed to Lisa for examination. A snake bite appears to be the most likely cause, but this is not a straightforward case. People think that snake bites are always obvious, you know, dogs foaming at the mouth, collapsing, but sometimes the signs are a lot more vague and they can take hours, even up to days, before you notice that something's wrong. Just turn up, little puppy. If you live in an area that is known to have snakes, you should never rule out a snake bite if your dog is unwell. Somebody did say that they saw a snake around our area, which I've never seen before. It's and me. Yeah, and they described it as a, as a black snake. Tanya is a foster carer 
for homeless dogs. Little Bobby has been waiting for more than a year for a family. She's had a hard life. It's just not fair that this has happened to her. She's such a lovely girl. When a snake bites a dog, the venom is injected, goes into the dog's bloodstream, and depending on the type of venom it is, it can have neurological effects, it can have effects on the red blood cells, it can have effects on the muscles. Within a matter of minutes, a dog can die. Now, I'm not going to give her the anti-venom until I'm 100% sure, because there is a risk of an allergic reaction. I'm hoping that blood tests will give me the answer. Chris has been dragged out of bed for the second time tonight. Hey Jeanette, hey, how are hi. you? Where's our girl? Upstairs. Okay. He doesn't know it yet. Thank you. But this emergency is going to be one of the longest, yeah. toughest tests he's ever faced. Come through, Chris. Okay, thanks. Jeanette is worried about her Norwich Terrier, Bindi, who's having problems with her first litter of pups. Oh, here it goes. Even though she's five and a half, and I guess a in the dog world, a mature mother. It's to be expected that she's just not too sure about the whole thing. Oh. Did you get a bite there? I did. You okay? Yeah, it's my nice bite. <laughs> this breed is notorious for difficult births because of their small pelvis. So do actually have a puppy coming through now. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Heads through, but we've got to wait for the, mm, big. the shoulders to come through, and this is where we're stuck at the moment. Come on, Vinny. Come on, good girl. Come on, girl. Good. Next on Bondi Vet, will it be more bad news for Bobby the Battler? One minute she's healthy and happy, and the next minute she's sick and in here, and you know. Come on, Vinny, give me one really good push. And Bindi's first puppy is in trouble. It's a nightmare. Come on, good girl. Come on, girl. Good. I'm just trying to get my fingers up around her shoulders. It's 1am and Bindi is still trying to push out her first puppy. Give me a push, girl. Come on, Bindi. Come on, Bindi, give me one really good push. Push. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. So we just have to get air into these lungs. The puppy's out, but he's not breathing. Which is critical. We start sucking in air. Is he alright? I'm getting movement, but just not a lot of breathing. Hey, puppy. A snake bite is possible. We need to run some blood tests and see. That's good, sweetie pie. Lisa is hoping these blood tests will confirm whether rescue dog Bobby has been bitten by a snake. Ooh. So the preliminary results from Bobby's tests show that the muscle enzyme is extremely elevated. Uh, it's so elevated that the machine is not actually reading it. Now this is Bobby's urine. It's bright red coloured. Now her laboratory results and the swelling on her neck and red urine like this is undoubtedly a snake bite. The venom is actually causing her red blood cells to break down and it's causing her muscle to break down. So that's what those results show. What we need to do is give her the anti-venom straight away and then keep her on a drip because her urine is that red colour, that can be toxic to her kidneys. So until her urine is clear, I need her to stay on a drip. So we really don't want to wait. Okay. Exactly, no. exactly. I don't think I can even begin to tell you what's going through my mind right now. Just, you know, one minute she's healthy and happy and the next minute she's sick and in here and, you know, she's also very close to my heart because I love her very much, so. <laughs> oh. Tanya is obviously devastated about the prospect of losing Bobby. Bobby is one of 
her foster dogs that she's really got a special connection to and now Bobby's been bitten by a snake. Her life is in the balance and poor Tanya's left to pick up the pieces. Physicality of the whole thing, how vigorous I'm being, is very deliberate. I'm trying to tell it that, hey, it's time to wake up, it's time to get going, you've got to breathe. And I'll do that any way possible. Okay, we're getting a little bit more movement. Mum knows best and she'll stimulate a movement as well. Movie. Yeah, At last, Bindi's first puppy is showing signs of life. God, he's real. <laughs> oh, you little squeaker. Look, Bindi. Little boy. Relieved, because I must say I didn't think that little pup was alive. Oh. And you got kissed by me, sucked oh. in. <laughs> Chris, well done. That's fantastic. Thank you. That was hard work. It was, wasn't that it? That was hard. Now admit it. Hey, <laughs> admit it? Yes. I admit it. Bindi's contractions have started again and there are more complications. The second puppy is in a dangerous breech position. It's sort of the position that vets dread. It has horrible connotations and when you've got a head coming through you can grab the head and pull that with the shoulders but with this you, you're grabbing hold of slippery toes and that's it. It just makes a nightmare. After the break, will the anti-venom save Bobby's life? We need to monitor her very closely throughout the anti-venom just to make sure that she doesn't react. And Chris's night from hell gets worse. Scream like you hate it. Come on. Feel the, the hips and, and the shoulders trying to force their way through that pelvis and they're just too big for it. Bindi's breech birth is not going well. It's awful, isn't it? Agony. And one more. Baby, darling. It's okay. Got it? Yep. And when the puppy arrives, once again, there is no response. You can do it. I need to surprise all of us, huh? Any movement? No. No, it doesn't look good. certainly <laughs> tried. My God, it's mm. been a hard, a hard night, mm. isn't it? It's not over. Oh my God, <laughs> how can we do any more? Mm. I don't know whether Bindi could take any more. She needs a rest, but I, I guess whether her body's going to let her have a rest is, is another thing. Chris faces a dilemma. There is at least one more puppy to come, and Bindi is now too exhausted to push. Didn't work out the way we wanted it to, did it? Next one will be okay, they won't. Yeah. Hey, honey pie, you're being such a brave girl. Two year old snake bite victim Bobby is about to receive the anti venom that will hopefully save her life. What a brave girl you are. If we don't treat Bobby tonight, she will deteriorate further. The major complication is that A, her red blood cells can break down and she can become anemic, and B, is that the product of the muscle breakdown is toxic to her kidneys and she can go into kidney failure. So it is essential that we treat her right away. Our biggest concern now is if Bobby reacts to the antivenom, there is a 
a chance that that's going to happen. But what we need to do is monitor her very closely throughout the antivenom just to make sure that she doesn't react. You mustn't fight the snakes. You can't fight the snakes because they bite you first. You're a good girl. You have a good sleep now. Mm -hmm. Round one goes to the snake. Bobby's now fighting for her life and she needs to win the battle from now on. No, it just hasn't moved. No, okay, let's go. No, okay. Good try. Let's do it. Yep. Bindi has been in labour for six hours and Chris has decided her health is now at risk. She just has nothing to go on with, yet she's still got at least one pup inside her. Leave it any longer, we risk that pup. I just think it is worth now going to caesarean. The emergency surgery will be performed back at the Bondi Clinic. I'm just through the back edge. I'm just getting a bit of a second wind now at 4 a.m. <laughs> is that what it is? 4 a.m. almost. The first puppy is stable and is being fed some much needed milk. After opening Bindi up, Chris discovers there is one puppy remaining. But the little girl is lifeless. Scream like you hate it. Oh. After eight hours of labour, Chris is fighting desperately to save Bindi's last puppy. And finally, the sound Chris has been waiting for. Doing pretty well now, breathing on her own now. Great, great, all right. Fingers crossed those signs continue to improve. Now, we just need to sew her back up and um, wake her up. Bindi's waking up from the anaesthetic and is recovering well from her marathon ordeal. That was hectic. <laughs> hey mum, you know this one? You know this one? Hmm? Sure. You know you actually can't get out of this one. We do have video footage to prove this is actually yours. Now Jeanette. Yes? You've met your little boy before. Yes. But you haven't met your little girl before. Oh. That's good news, huh? Is pretty okay? Yeah. Yeah, she's fine. She's yeah. just coming out of it and now. Oh, sweet. Mm, beautiful. Oh, sweet. Noisy and beautiful. She looks a bit bigger than him. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. What a night. I what know. a night. Mm. Oh, was that hard, that yeah. last bit? Yeah, it was. Yeah. They are just so adorable. Oh, my mm. God. You're clever. Mm. When Jeanette checks on Bindi, Chris can finally raise a delicate subject. Now, Jeanette, this is a bit embarrassing. We've come all this way, yet they don't look like purebred Norwich Terriers. What? Who's dad? <laughs> He's a Jack Russell. Jack Russell crosses, <laughs> eh? That explains a lot. The only name we had was for the boy, little bone, little bony. <laughs> Bindi's mother was called Juliet, and we thought we should name a girl after the mother, so she might be Juliet. If you've got bone and Juliet, it's not too much of a stretch to have Bonio and Juliet. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. It might be 6.30 oh, in the morning, but I'm still functioning. That's good, that's good. Yeah, see? Funny guy. Crazy times. Oh, yes. Bindi will stay at the clinic with her two puppies for overnight observation. That's one of the longest nights I've ever had. Highly stressful. We lost one, that's sad, but we got two living pups, which is great. A good result. <laughs> What's this? Is that day? I'm going home. Keep you out in your little bed. Four days after receiving the anti-venom, snake bite oh, victim Bobby is making a remarkable recovery. How are you feeling today, sweetie pie? 
It's just a gradual process with these snake bites. I mean, on the first day, you treat them with everything you've got and you just hope they survive. And then after that, it's just a matter of waiting and, and waiting for their bodies to heal on their own with our support. Let's have a look. Oh, that looks a lot better. It's a bit red. All Bobby's blood tests have come back clear now. Her urine is also clear, so she's on the road to recovery. She just needs to have strict rest for the next couple of weeks while her muscles heal, and then she'll be right as rain. Where is she? So much going look on. Look who's there. Bobby, baby. Come on, my little girl. Oh, it's okay, sweetie pie. Bet you didn't expect to get her back this no, soon. No. I'm so happy. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I can't say enough about the care you've given her. Well, I do tend to hang on to some of them. <laughs> They're my children, you see. I suppose um, I treat dogs the way other people think of their kids, or better. You know, I mean, um, they can have anything. You know, they get they get the best of everything. Bye bye little chicken, no more snakes, okay? No more snakes, no more snakes. I promise, Aunt Lisa. And you're going to find a new home and not fight any more snakes, okay? Bye. See you later. Tanya is the best medicine for Bobby and I think in the end it might be better off for everyone if Tanya just keeps her. Hey, look at that, sunshine. Good girl. Bindi's puppies are now six weeks old and Jeanette is besotted. Very, very cute. It's a hard one, but I think we're going to keep them. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Who have we got here? Uh, Ella. Vet nurse Liesl has brought her two-year-old bearded dragon into the clinic. Oh yeah, bring him in every now and then. He gets a bit lonely at home by himself. Look at that face. Hmm? Yes, you are so creamy. Yes, you are. While Liesl may refer to her cold-blooded friend as a he, she actually has no idea whether her reptile is a boy or a girl. Hopefully I'm going to find out what sex is. I mean, I don't know if anyone here knows how to. It's not exactly as easy as it is with a dog or a cat, but if anyone can, Chris can. What's its name? This is the here Horatio Samson Althea Tallulah Phineas. <laughs> Hard to name when you don't know the sex. Hang on, I'm gonna get this down. Being called on to sex a bearded dragon isn't your everyday request. You can't just look for things hanging down. With a bearded dragon, what you're looking for are bulges. When you lift up the tail, if it's a male, you'll see two very subtle bulges just above the bottom. If it's a female, just one bulge. But quite often, it's really hard to tell. Oh. Take that. Have to. Oh, it just gets darker and worse as time goes on. I just can't believe she's gone two years without knowing the truth. Well, Liesl, I'd like you to meet Althea Tulula. She's a girl. Oh, that was a little girl. <laughs> I'm actually really excited that it's a girl. You normally expect the it's a girl being shouted out to be at the time of birth. Well, now we know she's a girl. Chris, pack her up. Go on. Mm -hmm. oh, I've kissed worse. <laughs> we picked her up on Saturday from a breeder in Canberra. Um, brought her home the first day, she's very bouncy, playing with everything. Um, but then she's gone downhill from there. Nine-week-old Kiko is being admitted to the Bondi Referral Hospital, SASH. The tiny Japanese Spitz puppy is suffering severe vomiting and diarrhoea. Mark's been sleeping next to her at night time and I've been having Because we thought maybe work. distress was one of the problems, because she would cry a lot at night. Worried owners Nicole and Mark have only had Kiko for five days. Hello, Kiko. Now, Hello. what's been going on with her? I brought her home on Sunday. She cried all night, but Mark slept next to her. Yeah. She had three meals on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, she slept in the bathroom, but she was very distressed. She peed in her bed, mm -hmm. and she still had diarrhoea. Nicole and Mark are very devoted parents. Kiko is their first baby. Nicole's been keeping a diary of her. They've hired babysitters. They are really proud parents, but unfortunately now they're very worried parents because Kiko's got a big fight ahead of her. 
Dehydration can be a killer in a dog of her size. Basically, all the fluids been sucked out of her body and been lost in her diarrhea and vomit. And if we don't treat that, it can cause her body basically to shut down. Hey team, how are you going? Yeah, I'm good thanks mate. Look, I was just wondering if you'd be able to get up and check out one of our koalas and look, I know it's a shock at Dave, but Meg, she's a bit off mate, but I think she's getting a bit of pain. Perfect day. He's <laughs> Meg. Too. Got Meg? Jeez, yeah. wet little darling. <laughs> Meg is a very there. sick, depressed koala. Dry off. Her joey died on, just a week ago. Meg's four years old now. Um, last year she lost a joey and this year the same things happen. Sometimes through the night, it gets out of the pouch, whether she throws it out of the pouch or it's exploring or something, but for some reason, by morning, it's so cold, that we find the joey and, and it, they're already deceased. I'm gonna grab arms and hind legs, yep. so all we need you to do is just keep her head up and Chris is gonna have a dig around in the pouch there. The cause of Meg's pain is quickly discovered. There it is. Yeah. So if you can see, I've got my finger underneath the, the lump there. It's, 50 cent piece sized. Yep. You're all right, mate. Meg's got a dramatically enlarged mammary gland. So one of her little teats and the gland associated with it is a huge size. It's sore, it's hot, and it's a big concern because if that gland isn't functioning, she just can't support a young. It's also the most likely reason why her last two joeys did not survive. You're right, Meg. I'd be thinking either a, a pressure build up yep. or a mastitis. Meg is in pain, you can see it right across her face, and from what women tell me, mastitis is one of those awful conditions that just feel terrible. A real throbbing, awful pain that just won't subside. So we're trying to help her through that whatever way we can. Next on Bondi Vet, Lisa needs to find out what's threatening Kiko's life. This is getting really serious now. <coughs> and will Meg ever be able to start a family. At the Australian Reptile Park, Chris has discovered that four-year-old Meg has a severe case of mastitis. Although I didn't want to have to put her through any of that, it's essential to get a good feel of that gland to see what's going on there. The bacterial infection of the milk gland is an extremely painful condition that affects many breastfeeding women. A bit of milk. Yep. The grieving Meg lost her joey only a week ago. It's usually a streptococcus. Yep. Gets into the into the joey, causes infections in them. They yep. don't thrive because their their whole system's focused okay. on trying to get rid of the infection. Yep. And, I mean, sadly, they in the end they they die. All right, mate. The treatment for this is going to revolve around some nice warm compresses. Yep. So essentially some, some swabs, warm water, and just massaging that gland. Okay. In, in behind the teeth there? Yeah, getting right in there. If we can break up that clot and just make it into liquid milk instead of the, the solid milk that it is, then we can get it flushing okay. out and, and right out the end of the teeth. The antibiotics should kick in soon to relieve Meg's pain. Once the mastitis is cured, Chris is hoping Meg will finally become a successful mum. Put her back mom. up where she's comfy. She likes you. I don't think it's me, I think I'm, I'm skinny and I'm like a tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, got the, you got the touch. She's four, so let's hope that she's just young and she's not sure what she's doing and maybe next year with a little bit more maturity and you know that she can keep a hold of one and you know, get one full term. Again, we'll another go. Lisa is taking a blood sample from the terrified Kiko. Perfect. Oh, it's a good girl. Just want to cuddle. All right, let's check what her glucose is. She's hoping it will confirm her suspicion. The puppy is suffering an extreme case of gastroenteritis. Oh, that's low. She's got a blood glucose of 1.4. With the blood sugar that low. At the moment, that would cause signs of exactly what she's doing now, so really flat, lethargic. If it drops lower, if it drops below one, she's gonna be at risk of seizures. 
Lisa's now administering glucose into Kiko's IV drip, but she must go very slowly. Puppies are such fragile little things. I mean, we are so much bigger than them. She, she's 1.4 kilos, so we've got to be so careful with the amount of drugs we give her, the amount of fluids we give her. Everything has to be exact because there is so little room for error with these guys. Yeah, go ahead, mate. Yeah, mate, I'm out on the gay lagoon. It looks like Martha's caught the big bite. Are oh, you kidding? You're definitely Martha? Yeah, definitely Martha, mate. Righto, give us a couple of minutes, I'll grab Chris. Back at the reptile park, Chris's day just got more complicated. Well, it seems like Martha's been grabbed by another gator. She's one of our oldest, dearest gators, and she thinks she's a bit tougher than she is, so she's probably tried to fend off one of the big guys and they've just let her have it. Where's Chris? He's coming. 30-year-old Martha must be treated urgently before infection can set in. You know the drill, mate, if we go in for any yeah. reason... Yeah. Yeah, just stay cool and... We... I mean, you probably need two at a time to get back in anyway to keep the boat stable. Yeah. Yeah. Calm yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely the better. Yeah, sure. Less splashing, just like a shark. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a shark. <laughs> it's, it's good. Right up, let's do it. We need to get her very quickly and actually assess how severe the damage is. She could be losing blood, she could have internal injuries, we just don't know. To find Martha, Chris and keepers Tim and Obi must search the lagoon, home to more than 30 alligators, all capable of killing humans. So anything through there? Nah. You just can't see very far into this water, can you? Nah. When I was on land, I felt pretty comfortable. Out in the water, that's gator territory. This is going to be really tricky. You can see each of them's got their own little territory. Yeah. Oh, he's standing up. Defence pose there, see the tail out of the water, yeah. the back in the head, just to... That's not happy, is it? Well, let's not go near that bloke. After the break on Bondi Vet, will a plasma transfusion be enough to keep Kiko alive? I'm really hoping that what we're doing makes a difference. Let's oh. grab her. Yeah, oh. got her. Let's get her in. And Martha's not happy about seeing the vet. Bring her up. This has suddenly got much more serious for little Kiko. Initially I thought it was just a fairly non-specific gastroenteritis and now she's got actually one of the horrible complications of gastro which is low protein. Lisa's hoping a plasma transfusion will stop the puppy's fragile system from shutting down. Plasma is the clear part of the blood with the red cells taken out and it's got lots of protein in it and we give it to her through her IV catheter as a drip and hopefully that will increase the levels. Because um, Kiko is so small, she only needs 14 mils of plasma. Most dogs will need a whole bag of it and I have to just give her such a tiny amount because she's so little. There you go. Got your plasma. We've got so much tubing going on here. Um, basically, she's getting her fluids with her glucose and she's having a plasma transfusion. Um, we're not going to really know much until a few hours' time and I'm really hoping that what we're doing makes a difference. Get out of there. <laughs> Martha? <laughs> No, we <laughs> wish. It'd be nice if it was, we wouldn't wish. it? Out on Alligator Lagoon, Chris and keepers Tim and Obi are searching for the badly injured Martha. The 30-year-old alligator was attacked by a young male. There she is, right there, you sitting joking? on the bottom. Jeez, Obe, it's a good spot. She's right there. Sitting on the bottom, underneath the wall. Pull it tight, pull it tight. Yeah, got her. Let's get her in. Yeah, right, you jump on bank codes. Right. You're gonna jump on behind me. One, two. Right. Could feel that power in her, even three of us on there, and with the head shake, you know, it's a bit of a, a tug of war, so you <laughs> don't appreciate how lucky that was. Jeez. I haven't got much pressure on her, so just watch out if she kicks. Yeah. So I've got a big gash oh, yeah. there, massive gash there, and you can see a bit of blood coming through there too. Can someone just watch out for the gators behind me? Yep, all right. Not only has a gator picked on the oldest gator here, but they've also come in from behind and grabbed her 
pretty much when she wasn't looking and, and just got their jaws around the back half of her and obviously giving her a bit of a shake and a bit of a tear. Jeez, that's a big gash too. Definitely bites, hey? Yeah, they are. Yeah. She's in a pretty bad way. Hey, little mouse. Do you want a bit of chicken? A few hours later, and Kiko's plasma transfusion is starting to work. Somebody loves chicken, come here. This is exactly what I wanted. It's the most important thing for her to get better is for her to eat and keep it down. So fingers crossed that that stays in her tummy. It will be a slow recovery as Kiko's body heals. Concerned owners Mark and Nicole won't be taking their puppy home tonight. Hello, you look better. You look better. Still, still it's quite unsure of her surroundings. And yeah, it? no, she's, oh, it's, a, it's very scary for her to, yeah. to be here and, oh, and yeah. her, so. Mm. Oopsie. Oh. 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 oh, that was the last thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just had a heart attack. So did I. Oh, no flying off tables, huh? You don't need broken legs as well. Mm, I guess I just start to think about when I've had gastro. Oh no, it's revolting. <laughs> so, you just hang in there, baby girl. Aww. It's been a roller coaster for this little girl, and sadly, Kiko won't be going home until I'm certain that she's recovered from this. She just needs a little bit more, more time, time. And, and then you'll beat it, hey? Yeah. Oh, good girl. Bye, Vicky. Bye, little puppy. <laughs> <laughs> With Mark and Nicole gone, an anti-nausea injection is all too much for the dejected puppy. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Shh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you're really gonna hate me. Ah, she's a beautiful old gator. What are they doing roughing up you, old girl, huh? Is there much flesh or is a bit of skin? That's, I mean, that's her, the base of her abdominal cavity there. Jeez, let's give her a good nudge. First of all, you need to clean it up, make sure there's no chance of infection, and then concentrate on bringing those wound edges together. Because we've got the other added complication, the way that she's gonna go back underwater where there are bugs, there are bacteria that can actually get into the wound. I'm just gonna cut a bit of stuff away from here so she might jump. Just watch that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do with that? No, no, no. It's a totally different beast than dealing with a dog or cat. This skin is just so thick. You really have to punch through with quite a bit of force. It's a difficult assignment and Chris is finding it hard to concentrate with his back turned to 30 curious alligators. What was that? What was that? As soon as you slip for a second, they're on the way. At the Australian Reptile Park, Chris is under siege as he repairs the badly injured alligator, Martha. Occasionally I do get this sense that I'm being looked at. Not in a positive way, but more sort of a, you know, appetising way. And I just know there are eyes behind me right now, and I'd, I'd almost rather not look, and just concentrate on, um, on getting it done as soon as I can. I don't think I've ever stitched faster. The 25th and final stitch. So all done. It's a lot, they look good. Good girl, mate. A final shot of antibiotics Martha is ready to return to the lagoon. Right, sorry. sorry. Looks good. Mm. Looks a little sore, but expected. It's the first stitching I've done on an alligator, so it seemed to go okay. We managed to use the needles we, well, for some reason, we never need to use in Bondi. But uh, pulled them out, dusted them off, and away they went. But they did a good job. Straight back to a hidey hole. Yeah. You won't see her for days. We don't normally have a day with so many events. I mean, we, we pretty infrequently get the vet up, so it's, um, it's been a big day. Are we ruining things? Are we things? Little Kiko has fought a life-threatening case of gastroenteritis and finally won. She's just turned the corner. She's done a formed stool, which is excellent. There's been no more vomiting. She's been eating really well. And yeah, she's ready to go home. It's great. Look at that! 
Go to your girls. Go to your evil vet. Sorry, I've been naval. No, it's just my turn. Ready? She's a nice lady vet. Everyone who's going to play with her for the next week is going to get dental, dental, hand drop first. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks again. See ya. Hey, I've been in this for a long time, and I've never seen anything like this. Beer in there, or what's? No, it's in an esky because it's a bit different than all the others. Have a look at that. You tell me what it is. There's one last patient to see before Chris heads home. That is just abnormal, isn't it? You know what it is? Well, the nose like that's either going to be a platypus or an echidna. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's got to be an echidna. Yeah, it's an echidna, it is, and it's bizarre, isn't it? Look, I've never seen anything like it. I, I didn't know if I was holding an alien when it first came <laughs> in. And... You've got legs, you've got claws, you've got a, almost a beak there. It's like four animals all combined into one weird little skin-covered package. So, this is the key to try and stimulate him into wanting to have a drink. So if we can just... The tiny echidna will have to be hand-fed to survive. My initial response as a vet when you see him is to think, geez, he's not going to make it. but. If there's one thing about these baby echidnas is they're tough. They do somehow find a way just to keep on going. While the battle is just beginning for the young echidna, two months on and there's good news for Meg. After treatment, her mastitis has cleared up and she's about to add to the park's koala population. We kept up the treatment just for a short while and the lump disappeared really quickly. So after that, we've had a really good mating with Herman. Um, so we believe her to be pregnant and it's ended up all good. She's not actually from Bondi, she's from out of, out of Burke. I am a doctor and I do at a health clinic out there every couple of weeks. GP Catherine Hutt has arrived at the Bondi clinic with a very unusual patient. I heard about this premature lamb that was going to get tapped on the head. I know, and apparently she was just very small and had been born in the stockyards and wasn't likely to live. So of course, <laughs> once I'd heard about her, my very tolerant team Stopped off on our way home from the clinic and picked her up and here she is. I don't know how many flying sheep there are, but she actually did very well. But after two weeks in the city, Amelia is struggling. Poodle cross, is it? <laughs> really nice try. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you're cute, aren't you? Where do you pick up the, the lamb nappies? I've never actually seen the nappies with a hole in the back for the tail. <laughs> well, they're custom made, okay. aren't they? We custom make them every morning. Um, aisle three at your local supermarket? <laughs> right. And the diary she's had, you, you don't really want to no, see this. It's, the technical name for that is, is scouring. Scours is essentially another word for severe diarrhea, but it's diarrhea with a nasty effect. It dehydrates them, it takes away their electrolytes. <laughs> and it means they're not absorbing energy and scours. It's probably the number one cause of mortality, of, of, of death in, in young lambs and in calves. All right, well, we need to fix it. Yeah, we do. <coughs> Ooh, she's ugly abscess here, just beside the bottom. You better after, okay? Let's just to help you. Now, just like a human baby, the smaller they are, the more fragile they are. She's been born premature and then missed out on her mum's milk. All those important antibodies have just bypassed her. She's never had them. So she's very alone in this world. I'm going to give her a, a chalky liquid. Okay. Just to try and calm down her gut and, mm. and settle it so she's not producing all that diarrhea. Oh. No, not loving it. <laughs> Chris gives Amelia a vaccination and antibiotics. But he's worried it's only a temporary solution. Good girl. Samples will be sent to the lab to try and pinpoint what bacteria is causing Amelia's serious infections. As a doctor, Catherine's done a pretty good job getting Amelia to this point, getting through those tough first few days. But then when you see just how severe those scales are and how severe those abscesses are, you can see that she does need help. They both need help. Well, being a doctor, you do see some incredibly tough things, but um, and you'd think you'd be a bit immune to it and it wouldn't get to you, but her, she's just got to me. I'm just, I just love her and, um, and she's just the most special little thing, so I am a bit worried now.
Any other cats at home? One female. And you recently lost his litter mate, was that? Yeah. Coco, a rescue cat, has just been admitted to the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash. Hey Coco, take a look at you. Deirdre saved him from death row at a shelter six months ago. I take him for walks on the lead and everybody stops and wants to pat him and he's always making friends with kids. Um, yeah, they love him. Lisa suspects anemia and takes a sample to check Coco's red blood cell count. Oh, the blood looks very watery. I'm just really worried that it's going to end up badly. Yes. For Deirdre, this situation is made so much worse because one of her other cats died suddenly only a few months ago. I don't think I could handle another one dying on me. Oh dear. It's 8%. 8% is extremely low. I mean, I would expect it in a cat to be in the, in the 30s. Um, and He's got a red count of 8%, so that is not sustainable with life. He needs to have a transfusion tonight. Until I know that everything's going to be all right, yeah, and it's nothing underlying, I'll worry. Next on Bondi Vet, Chris is called out to treat an Aussie battler. Underweight, dehydrated, he's got a lot of things going against him and an anxious wait for Coco's test results. Breaks my heart. Always happens to the special ones. I did not hear you use the pipette. Three drops of sample into a new tube. Coco is suffering from severe anemia, but Lisa has decided to carry out more tests. Before I give Coco a blood transfusion, I need to rule out two other possible culprits. And one of them is feline AIDS, and the other one is feline leukaemia virus, which is quite rare. Now, both of these diseases can be fatal, so for Deidre's sake, I really hope the results come back negative. So it's a 10 minute wait now. It's gonna feel like a lifetime. Pretty worried. <sighs> it's positive. So beautiful Coco has cat leukemia and I almost can't believe it. It is so rare and there is no treatment. Sadly, Coco's owner Deirdre was never told there is a vaccination available for cat leukemia. The irony is that Coco still looks so well. Oh, I haven't got good news for you, beautiful boy, with your beautiful blue eyes. Coco's a year and a half old, he's a baby. Deidre's just lost her other cat six months ago from perhaps the same thing. It just breaks my heart. It always happens to the special ones. I've got some news for you that's not so good. It's an extremely rare disease in Australia and unfortunately Coco's positive to that. Okay, all right, well I'll talk to you tomorrow then. Okay, take care, bye. <sighs> she said to me, I can't believe I've got the prospect of losing three cats in seven months. Her other cat at home is not vaccinated for this and it's pretty highly contagious. So she's going to bring him in tomorrow for us to, bring her in tomorrow for us to do a test on her and we'll see. <sighs> she's just in shock. Good boy. What? I like a puppy dog.
Amelia's test results are back and her infection has been caused by a bacteria called Pseudomonas. Now, they only get this infection when their immune system is given up the fight. And that's because she never got her mother's milk. She never got those antibodies that were going to protect her for the rest of her life. The fact is, if we don't boost up her immune system, then a nastier bug, a deadly bug, is going to come along and take her out. Sure, we can give her antibiotics now to fix this problem, but long term, we need a permanent solution. And I reckon I've got an idea. Chris is now on the road to the Golden Ridge Animal Farm to carry out his plan. We're going to find an adult sheep and actually take some blood from her and take all those antibodies with it and transfer those antibodies from the blood into little Amelia. It works in foals, it works in calves, and I'll bet you it'll work in lambs as well. <laughs> now, where are our sheep? Uh, they're up this way, so we'll go for a walk up here and we'll have a look. Elisa, who looks after the mixed bunch of residents here, is hoping to find Chris a suitable blood donor. So I, I guess we need sort of a, an older one. Yeah, Preferably a mother that, that might even have some antibodies of her own. Yeah, I've got a couple there with lambs at the moment, right. so we should be able to find one. Perfect. You do you all want to help, do you? Okay. She's got lambs at the moment. Yeah, great. She's very kind of you, you know that? She's very good. Yeah. This might just look like some sheep's blood, but it means so much more to Amelia. It's full of antibodies which are going to go into Amelia's system and essentially give her a future. And thank you. Oh, Mum. It's hard on you, isn't it? What's her name? Barbie. Barbie. Good old Barbie stepped up, did her a bit, and she's the hero. She'll make all the difference. I've got Barbie's blood safely stored in the back in an esky, but it looks like I've got to make a bit of a detour. The Australian Reptile Parks is called, they've got a critically ill animal. It sounds like it needs urgent attention. Hi Chris, how are you? Good, how are you? Tim will be happy to see you come straight through. He's got a platypus. He does, it was found this morning, it's unbelievable. Really? Hi mate. Hey, Tim, how are you buddy? Yeah, good thank you. Did you never cease to surprise me? <laughs> no, check this out. The malnourished platypus was found wandering lost well. on a suburban road. He's lucky they didn't run him over thinking he was a rat, you know, good people. We, we, we get some lovely people that bring all sorts of animals in, so this guy's benefited from it. Have you got a name for him? Oh, look, well, between a few of us we wanted to call him Aussie because he's a little battler at the moment. My guess is that he's a young male, he's been kicked out by a territorial male and he's just trodged through the bush. He's picked up all these ticks and he turns up in suburbia. There's 20, 30 right there. My worry is that he's got 40 or so ticks in that container. He's probably got another, at least 40 on him there. Yep. If each of those has, say, half a mil yep. of blood, even a quarter of a mil, that's 10 mils of blood. Yeah. He's got to be severely anemic as it is, yeah. uh, underweight, dehydrated. He's got a lot of things going against him. What am I do just to, I guess, as a bit of insurance against him going into shock himself and, and not really handling his whole experience, actually give him some fluids now? That should help his blood pressure straight away. Has he tried to use his spurs yet? No, I mean, I don't know. They're, they're still there. Yeah. And um, they're quite large still for a young plat, but... Jeez, they are decent, aren't they? As the minutes tick by, he's becoming more and more stressed by the whole situation, so we've got to get the ticks off quickly, but pay a lot of attention to that spur. I and most of the guys here would rather cop a whack from a King Brown yeah. than one of these, you know. The pain is just said to be unbelievable. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Everyone just assumes they're just so yeah. cute and cuddly. Yeah. And they're cute, but they've got a pretty nasty little yeah. surprise waiting for you, haven't they? Chris continues the painstaking job of removing all the ticks from Aussie. It's only when you really part the fur, you realise just how many there are. It's like having open wounds all over his body. The fact is, he can quite easily die from these ticks, because each one of them is taking just a little bit of blood, and that could be enough to kill him. Coming up on Bondi Vet, will there finally be some good news for Deirdre? Another minute to go. So far it is negative. Just going to ease him down a bit. And does Aussie possess the will to live? It doesn't mean we're in the clear, you know. We've got a long way to go. Get out, there's a big puppy dog around there. <laughs> See? 
She's not um, she's not as forthcoming as Coco. Deirdre has brought in Coco's sister. She's desperately hoping Chantal has been lucky and not caught the deadly leukaemia virus from her brother. I'm not going to, you know, get really, really worried until I find out there's something wrong with her. That'll be it. I don't think I'll be able to have more pets. Yeah, I think that'll be it. That'll do it. I like your children. I'm going to take Chantel yep. out the back mm -hmm. and get some blood from her. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good girl, Chantel. I think there's quite a high chance that Chantel's going to be positive for feline leukaemia virus just because that she's in such close contact with Coco, who's got the disease. There's still a chance that she hasn't, so that's what I'm hoping for. Should be enough. In 10 minutes, Deirdre will know Chantel's future. Wait. Oh, jeez. It's important to realise that these aren't paralysis ticks. There is more than one type of tick, and these are actually called bush ticks. So what they do is they just suck blood. On a small animal, finding one or two ticks is a concern. Finding a hundred is extraordinary, and extraordinarily worrying too. After a thorough examination of Aussie, Chris is satisfied he's removed all the ticks from the orphaned platypus. A preventative spray should now stop any other ticks ravaging his fragile system. Listen to that. They don't very often make a noise. No. That's almost the emergency beacon for them. They make that sound when they're really stressed. His natural environment is water. He's going to eat when he's in water, so the sooner we can get him there and get him relaxing, the better. All right, now he doesn't look real good there, so I want to get him in nice and quick. Good. I'm just going to ease him down a bit. Okay. Off you go, mate. Let him see where he is. We'll just keep him isolated for the moment, you know, give him his own little tank and um, let him try and recuperate until he gets healthy. Looks good. He's hungry, isn't he? Yeah, actually eating mealworms. Look at that. That little sonar of his is, is still working then. Look, there we go, another one. That's a good food response. I mean, that's immediate. It's not over by a long way. You know, for him to be like that in my hands, then touch the water, it doesn't mean we're in the clear, you know. That's sort of his last ditched attempt to get some nutrition in, you know, but we, we've got a long way to go. You know, a lot of it's up to him. All we can provide is food, shelter, water. Um, you know, we can put all the elements there. He's got to have a good will to live. I just hate waiting for this. Another minute to go. So far it is negative, so it's just great. I just... It's negative. I am just so happy and relieved. I mean, I was trying to stay positive, but the odds of Chantel getting feline leukaemia as well were so high. And now finally I can give Deidre some good news. I'm so excited, I'm just gonna go tell it right now. You're smiling. I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's negative. Very good. So, it's good. That's good news. <laughs> so now what do we do with Coco? Coco is still infectious. So if Deirdre wants to take him home, he will have to be and quarantined he, away okay from Chantel. I don't know what the right thing for you to do is, whether you should take him home or whether you should leave him here. Medically, it's safer for him to be here, but emotionally, it's better for him to be at home. Yeah, maybe not if it's only for a couple of days. Yeah, Okay. spend a few days with him. I think that's lovely. Yeah. It's just going to be hard keeping to separate. Too. Yeah. <laughs> But I guess it's something you've got to do if you want to have Chantel around. Yeah, mm. yeah. that's right. So maybe you just enjoy him and call me if you have any problems at all. Oh, I will. Okay. Thank you. I don't think this was a tough decision for Deidre. I think she knew straight away that all she wanted was to have Coco home. Oh, my Bye, gorgeous boy. 
even if it's only for a limited time. I'll take him home and give him cuddles and love him. Next on Bondi Vet, will this plasma transfusion be the gift of life for Amelia? If it works, fantastic. <laughs> Anything that's going to help her. And a medical update on the brave Aussie. If this bloke was human, he'd be selling his story to a magazine. So now Barbie's blood's actually settled. You can see what I'm after. It's this clear golden fluid that's sitting on the top. That is full of proteins and full of antibodies. It's called plasma, and that's what needs to go from here into little Amelia. Catherine rescued the orphaned Amelia from outback New South Wales, but the tiny lamb is now under siege from life-threatening infections. Doesn't sound like Amelia. Oh, hello, you, Amelia, you've grown. <laughs> Hi, Chris, hello. how are you? Come in. Good to see you. Hey, Amelia. We are in. I'll give this over the course of about five or ten minutes. Just to minimise any risk of this really protein rich, antibody rich fluid, overwhelming a system and, and really sending her into a bit of a shock state. Well, I think it's a pretty amazing idea. If it works, fantastic. Anything that's going to help her. She's not quite three weeks old yet, so there's still a way to go before I'm confident that she's going to be all right on her own. Amelia, we're done. So how are we going to know if it works? It's almost a case of no news is good news. I mean, if she doesn't get any infections, then you know it's working. And here he is, our little Aussie battler. He's beaten all the odds. He had 80 blood-sucking ticks on him. He was on the road and avoided getting hit by a car. He walked all that way through the bush. And I tell you, if this bloke was human, he'd be selling his story to a magazine. Ozzy, the great survivor, has made a full recovery and is adapting well to his new home at the Australian Reptile Park. Now as for his future, in captivity he's going to become very dependent upon us. So he might finish his days in a breeding program as an ambassador for his species. Go in a hurry, aren't you? With the transfusion administered, Catherine's now trying to negotiate as much time as she can with Amelia. The plan now is to continue feeding her the milk, but her focus really has to shift from milk to grass at some stage. Now, yeah, you're supposed to be eating grass. I think she prefers carpet. I think we're probably looking at about six weeks from now that we can start to think about moving her away onto a farm. I don't know who's going to be worse off, her or me, because I don't know how I'm going to cope. Catherine might say six years, but six weeks is probably going to be about right. I think we can stretch that a little. To grass. <laughs> it's eight percent. Eight percent is extremely low. I mean, I would expect it in a cat to be in the in the thirties, um, and he's got a red count of eight percent. So that is not sustainable with life. He needs to have a transfusion tonight. Until I know that everything's going to be all right, yeah, and it's nothing underlying, I'll worry. Before I give Coco a blood transfusion, I need to rule out two other possible culprits. And one of them is feline AIDS, and the other one is feline leukaemia virus, which is quite rare. Now, both of these diseases can be fatal, so for Deidre's sake, I really hope the results come back negative. The fact is, he can quite easily die from these ticks, because each one of them is taking just a little bit of blood, and that could be enough to kill him. Get out, there's a big puppy dog around there. Look, see? She's not, um, she's not as forthcoming as Coco. Deirdre has brought in Coco's sister. She's desperately hoping Chantal has been lucky and not caught the deadly leukaemia virus from her brother. I'm not gonna, you know, get really, really worried until I find out. If there's something wrong with her, that'll be it. I don't think I'll be able to have more pets. Yeah, I think that'll be it. That'll do it. How 
like your children. Hi, hello, baby. He's looking So now what do we do with Coco? Coco is still infectious. So if Deirdre wants to take him home, he will have to be quarantined away from Chantel. I don't know what the right thing for you to do is, whether you should take him home or whether you should leave him here. Medically, it's safer for him to be here, but emotionally, it's better for him to be at home. Yeah, maybe not if it's only for a couple of days. Yeah, Okay. spend a few days with him. I think that's lovely. Yeah. It's just going to be hard keeping them separate. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it's something you've got to do if you want to have Chantel around. Yeah, mm. yeah. that's right. So maybe you just enjoy him and call me if you have any problems at all. Oh, I will. Okay. Thank you. I don't think this was a tough decision for Deidre. I think she knew straight away that all she wanted was to have Coco home. Oh, Bye, gorgeous boy. Even if it's only for a limited time. I'll take him home and give him cuddles and love him. So now Barbie's blood's actually settled, you can see what I'm after. It's this clear golden fluid that's sitting on the top. That is full of proteins and full of antibodies. It's called plasma and that's what needs to go from here into little Amelia. Catherine rescued the orphaned Amelia from outback New South Wales. But the tiny lamb is now under siege from life-threatening infections. Doesn't sound like Amelia. Oh, hello, you, Amelia, you've grown. <laughs> Hi, Chris, hello. how are you? Come in. Good to see you. Hey, Amelia. Girl in a hurry, aren't you? With the transfusion administered, Catherine's now trying to negotiate as much time as she can with Amelia. The plan now is to continue feeding her the milk, but her focus really has to shift from milk to grass at some stage. Now, you're supposed to be eating grass. I think she prefers carpet. I think we're probably looking at about six weeks from now that we can start to think about moving her away onto a farm. I don't know who's going to be worse off, her or me, because I don't know how I'm going to cope. Catherine might say six years, but six weeks is probably going to be about right. I think we can stretch that a little. To grass! <laughs> I'm Chris. Do you know? Eric. Eric. Who's this? Uh, this is Tosca. Tosca. Okay. Can you just explain what's happened? Uh, mate, I was upstairs at the house and I heard the dogs barking. Yep. And when I got out there, uh, he was in the corner and my dogs attacked him. 12-year-old Tosca is in trouble after a backyard brawl with one of his canine housemates. You didn't see him being shaken or...? No, I didn't see anything. By the time I got off there, my dog was off him. They ever fought before? Uh, no, he's he's always growling at him and but he and having goes at him, but he's he's always backing off. He's yep. he's never um, he's never done it before, no. Okay. Yeah, can we get some oxygen? Yep. Let's get in the way today, did you Tosca? <laughs> Come on, buddy. Sorry. Just keep calm there, mate. It's a nightmare family feud. The injured Tosca belongs to Erin's girlfriend. She's going to kill me. What the mess is? Yeah. Hint of a bit of hemorrhage in the corner of that eye too. So it may have been when he was where he was shaken. The biggest part of these dogfight injuries is essentially that it's not just the actual impact of the bite. It, it's more the shaking and the twisting that occurs after that. It's, it's sort of like a whiplash situation where one part of the body goes in one direction, the other part goes the other, and what's left in the middle is stretched, is broken, is torn. And if that's the spinal cord, then we have big problems. Oh, I just, I just hope he's all right. Like. Look at this, Emmy, wait, come on, let's go. You just can see that she hops more than separates and runs, you know, and you can just sort of see that she's, yeah, she's in a bit of pain. What's this going? Come here. Brooklyn is just a year old, but she's already battling debilitating arthritis in her hips and back legs. She struggles with stairs, even just in and out of the car. 
is a bit of yeah, a struggle. She can't get she can't get into the car. Yeah. And then when she gets out, she kind of waits like for you to kind of she, give her a little yeah, bit of support. It's, it's, go on, get in there. The only reason she can move around now is daily painkillers. She looks like she's a 90-year-old woman. Look at that. She just like she's got no strength there. Ollie and Sasha have arranged to meet up with their friend, emergency vet Lisa Chimes, for advice. My concern is that Brooklyn's got something called hip dysplasia, so it's a genetic problem. They're born with it. It is so much worse than See you described. I, I honestly am shocked. A hip should be a ball and socket, and in Brooklyn's case, I fear that her socket has, is underdeveloped, so the ball doesn't sit in the socket. It, slips out every time she walks. It's not a curable disease, so we have to do pretty drastic surgeries to fix it. Okay, come on. Here you go. So what we need to do now is get Brooklyn over to Sash, have, get the surgeons to have a look at her and take some x-rays to see exactly what's going on. My worry is that there's going to come a time, which is going to be pretty soon, where she's going to be so crippled that she won't even be able to get up. We just feel around here. Yeah, okay. Sorry, mate. It's all right. Okay, so he certainly does have some neck pain there. Whether it's just soft tissue damage, just bruising to the muscles around there, or whether it's more serious, we'll find out in a second with these x-rays. Aaron is stressed. His girlfriend's dog, Tosca, is now being checked for spinal injuries after a fight with his bull terrier. The quietest I've ever seen him. The concern I've got is this area here, from C1 to C2. So there's just a bit of a step there. It's certainly not severed, but it, it's an area of concern I'll just flag now, because if there are any issues later on, then that, that's probably where it's going to be coming from. Okay. okay. Okay, so we'll move through. Aaron's living out a nightmare right now. This is a fight within his own family of dogs. Inside, he must just be going through the worst of emotional turmoil. Did you want to call? Uh, yeah, I've got, I'm going to have to. Hello? How'd you go? She's pretty cranky. Probably not the news she wanted to hear. No, no. She's another Tosca. She's only a little girl, but she's uh, she goes for the throat and growls and bites. And she's a pretty scary woman herself. Little Tosca's still in a lot of shock, but his anxiety levels are nothing compared to Erin's. I've never seen a man so scared. I don't think if anything could happen to him, she would have left me. You're not joking, are you? No, I'm not. No, I would have been scooted out the door, quick smart. Next on Bondi Vet, Ollie and Sasha have to make a tough decision. It's not good that she's just constantly rubbing bone on bone when she walks. And Chris meets a bird with a big personality. You sort of just have to tell her, not ask her. That's I really yeah. pretty firm. Yeah. She's, she's a she's a strong girl. woman. She is. has survived an attack by his canine housemate with no Two major reasons. injuries. But there's Aaron still there. a problem. The terrier is the beloved pet of Erin's girlfriend. She's furious because it was Erin's dog who attacked little Tosca. So incredibly lucky. Oh, I'd be feeling very lucky when your mum gets home. You reckon this might be mild compared to what you're going to cut? Uh, I reckon you should see the lacerations I'm going to end up with. <laughs> The question now is, what will happen when Tosca returns home? Tosca's got the first bite in. Now that changes things. What we have here is a big struggle for dominance and a struggle that could be fatal unless we can sort it out. Tosca now needs to rest and recover from his shock while Erin goes home to face the music. I've heard so much about this woman I've got to say, I can't wait to meet her. Yeah, she's 
certainly very under muscle. Ollie and Sasha have brought Brooklyn in to see specialist surgeon Andrew Marchewski. Okay. You're all right. Good girl. The French Mastiff is only a year old, but already crippled with painful arthritis in her hips and back legs. So this is her hip joint. Right, so it's a ball and socket joint. And what her hip at the moment is, it's sitting out there. And every time she walks, it's just crunching against the edge. And she's getting lots of arthritis from that. So from what you're telling me and looking at her x-rays, I think a hip replacement will, will make a huge difference to her. For such a young dog, a total hip replacement yeah. is a major operation. If we do nothing, she might be able to live for a few years, but it might be only four or five rather than eight or nine or ten. So I think it's also quality of life and quantity of life. It's better to know now. I think we've tried to um, kid ourselves for a while, just going, oh, it's not that bad. It's not good that she's just constantly rubbing bone on bone when she walks. She hides it well. <laughs> it's expensive, it's invasive, and there is the potential for things to go wrong. All right, come on, you're with me. Brooklyn will be the first hip replacement ever performed at SASH. Everybody has a lot at stake. I do feel almost a sense of fear and, and you know, a sense of responsibility that if something does go wrong and I've kind of pushed them to be proactive about it, you know, it's, it's not risk free and we just have to keep our fingers crossed that she's in the successful group. Don't tickle her head in the right spot, she lets you know. Back at the Bondi Clinic, a new patient has arrived for Chris, a pet cockatiel called Cheeky. We go almost everywhere together. Shower, shops, bike riding, car, bank. Yep. Do you both want to come through? Who do I ask, Cheeky or you, Brenna? I both. Both, okay. <laughs> I've noticed some drops of blood today um, on the bathroom floor, so okay. um, she is bleeding, not from her feet, I think from her genitals, so I was really quite worried about that. Oh. <laughs> you sort of just have to tell her, not ask her. That's oh, really? Yeah. You've got to be firm. Yeah. She's a, she's a strong woman. She is. So if you just tell her what you want to do, she'll do it. She likes assertive men. She does. <laughs> it's always been a problem. <laughs> Now, Cheeky, no, yeah, you're going to get up there. Thank you. That's the way you go. It's how you treat a woman. <laughs> so I guess a few drops of blood doesn't sound like much, but in a bird, that's... Quite a bit. Yeah, quite a bit. Okay. So I just want to have a good look at her. There is a little bit of blood around here. What's this going on? Oh, my yeah. God. What is that? After the break on Bondi Vet, Chris finally meets the woman who has Erin so terrified. I'm really sorry that this happened to you. And what is Cheeky doing to put her life in danger? What's this guy? Wow, oh my yeah. God, what is that? Yeah. Chris has found the source of Cheeky's dangerous bleeding. At the base of that gap, is a hole, yes. and that's where the blood's coming from. Yes. So I think she's actually lost a feather. Sweet lamb. What we'll do is just clean it up with some antiseptic and just try and clean around the base of, of where that feather's come out. So I guess we need to work out how she's done this, because the worry is that if she does this when you're not around or when you're asleep, and she actually has a, a decent bleed, she can actually get into quite serious trouble. So has she been doing anything abnormal behaviour wise? Um, she... What Prem's struggling to say is that the naughty Cheeky spends too much time self-pleasuring. Uh, how often? She does it every day. Yeah, uh, for how long? Sometimes a lot every day, sometimes for 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yeah. Cheeky is so incredibly sexually frustrated, so wound up that not only is she pleasuring herself, she's gone to the next step. She's pulling her own feathers out. What does she do it against? There's a part of the twig that she always kind of backs up against. Mm -hmm. She stands on one leg to get like right in the right position. It's really funny. She'll like lower herself right down on one leg. 
I think that comes under the title of a little bit too much information. Cheeky, get on the hand. That's it. <laughs> so what is the solution to stop Cheeky's harmful habit? She's doing that right now because the weather's just warmed up. Yeah. And because of that, she has all this energy, but also all these messages in her body saying, you must mate, you must breed. But there's nothing around her that she can mate with. Yeah. So what she needs to do to lower that sexual frustration is to convince Cheeky that it's actually not springtime. And the way you do that is actually lessen the daylight hours. Put Cheeky to bed in a darkened room at five o'clock in the afternoon. So Cheeky, sounds like you're gonna get the treatment you deserve. Early to bed like all bad girls. <laughs> There you go. See you, Cheeky. I'm getting nervous now. The surgical team is preparing for Brooklyn's hip replacement. So, uh, my incision is here. Yeah, it's a little tense. Absolutely. There's a lot to gain and there's a, there's a bit to lose. And I think because this is Sasha's first one, it's, it's exciting. First incision. This is major surgery for a one-year-old dog. The ball and socket joint we're replacing and the cup is the socket part of that joint. Okay, and you'll be able to tell me if I'm getting in. Ready? In human terms, it would be the same as a complete hip replacement for a 14-year-old. We're going to put a metal rod down the middle of the thigh bone that's then going to attach to part of the ball on socket joint to make up the hip. So we'll push it down and just hammer it in and it'll stay there. The biggest problem with this part of the procedure is us actually splitting the bone. And if we do that, that's a major problem. Try that. Yes. Position looks good. Overall, I think it's, it went well. Nice. It's perfect canal fell. We had a few hiccups. This is our first one, and I sort of half expected it wasn't going to go perfectly. It was a little frustrating. The biggest threat now is an infection setting in around the implants. It will be two months before Andrew can tell if Brooklyn will make a complete recovery. It is high stress because the implants themselves are is about two and a half thousand dollars worth of just the implants. It's high stakes. Erin's much talked about girlfriend Christine has finally arrived at the clinic and so far he's still in one piece. Oh, oh. hey. You're all right, baby. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Love you so much. <laughs> well, he looks a lot happier than he did this morning. He doesn't look happy at all. Look at him. He's like going, oh my God, I just want to fall asleep standing here. He's not happy at all. He's just kind of... I he think looks he's happier did... than he did, did he? when it happened. <laughs> he didn't look too happy then. <sighs> Of going through like feeling really upset to feeling grateful to feeling kind of like, oh, you little bugger, what have you done? Sorry, excuse my <laughs> French. But like, <laughs> I'm just going through a whole bunch of different emotions because I'm so happy that he's alive. a good night for you then, Erin. It would be a really good night yeah. for you. <laughs> I thought one fight was enough for today. To have two presented to me, don't think I could have handled that. So to see Erin and Christine getting along for now was nice. So I thought that was going to be the most challenging case of the day. You guys oh. rather than well, this one. Well, I've learned out when her left hook's coming. Yeah, so. <laughs> she signals it, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's yeah. got this little twitch in her eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty clear that Tosca means everything to Christine. Aaron has dodged a bullet today. If this was more serious, he would have been facing a lot more serious punishment, I'm sure. The family must wait for Tosca to fully recover before he can head home. I'll be thinking about you tonight, all right? Next on Bondi Vet, how is Brooklyn coping with her brand new hip? I'm nervous to see her. I'm just worried that she's in pain. That's it. And there's more trouble when Tosca goes home. Frank! Hi. Get out there.
A bit apprehensive, huh? Not too sure about this, are you? Hey, Hello. Tosca! Hey, buddy. Look who's home. Welcome home. <laughs> Chris has brought oh. Tosca back to the scene of the crime. Is he alright? It's hey. Hey, little man. Mm. But can he and housemate Frankie Frank. sort out Frankie. their differences? Frank. Come here. Yeah. Frankie, you got visitors. Thank Come you. here. Who's this? Oh, he gives him a sniff. Come over here, Frank. Frankie. Come here. Frank. Come here. Frank. Frank. Boy. Right. Get out there. Get out there. I'm nervous. I'm she nervous. Is. To see her. I'm just worried that she's in pain or that she's um. She's not really sure what's going on. There you go, Danny. It's all right. The next day, it's Ollie okay. and Sasha visit the hospital's very first hip replacement patient. Brooklyn is doing really well. 24 hours post-op, she's using the leg. She's tentative on it, but she doesn't have any major problems. Who's that? Hello, Danny. You're a good girl. Sasha looked a little gobsmacked. I don't think she realised exactly what was going to happen. I think she saw the size of the incision was a bit, oh. All right, sweet, come on then, we'll get you back. One more week and Brooklyn will be ready to go home. If she were a human, she'd still be in bed or if she wasn't in bed, she'd be on crutches and really hobbling in a hell of a lot of pain. I'd see my father-in-law go through it and um, she's doing much better. Good girl. You've got a battle for supremacy yeah. when there can be only one captain of this team. It has to be Frankie. Frankie has been let out and given a second chance. <laughs> All right. <Woo. laughs> Chris believes yeah. he has the solution <laughs> See, to this sibling right. stash. He still is entire, still hasn't had his balls removed. Yeah. Now. Would that be a good thing to do? That would certainly help. You reckon? Yeah. Okay. But what I can give him in the meantime is an injection to block the effects of testosterone in his brain. So stop him from being the big guy in the small body. All right. So it's not going to seem like much, but one mil of this drug here should change his whole attitude. Okay. So in a way, what we're doing is chemically castrating him. Okay. Just lucky this didn't happen to you yesterday, Aaron. Yes. <laughs> Could have been you getting the injection. Well, you've got more than a mil in there, don't you? No? No. Oh, well. Steady, Tiger. <laughs> Fix you all year. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is, once we remove that testosterone that's really revving Tosca up, then he's going to pull back. He's going to be more relaxed. He's going to acknowledge that Frankie is the boss. Once there's stability there, Christine and Aaron have their happy family back together. There's a lot of love there. We've just got to make it work. And this will make it work. Better? Oh, yes. I love you too. I do. I love you too. You happy to be home? Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you so much for everything. Pleasure. <laughs> no more growling. Yeah. Talking to you, Krista. Yeah. <laughs> no more. Come on, on the stick. Two months later, and it's a great result for Brooklyn as she runs and plays pain free. She's just never tired and never sore. It's really, really amazing. Oh, she feels so much more developed in her muscles and she just looks great. You see her now and then you realise how bad it actually was for her, yeah. Definitely stoked we did that, you know. She is our first hip replacement and it's successful and everybody's happy, so it's something that the surgeons can be really proud of. Sorry, I saw you there. Three-month-old Archie is suffering severe convulsions. So what's happened? You've just come home and he's been like this? Yeah. The Labrador puppy is confused and frightened. Have you got any baits or anything in your backyard? Not that I know of, no. Yeah. Has he vomited at all? Not that I know of, no. Okay, I'll take him through straight away. We just need to see what's in his stomach, because to me this looks like a poisoning, like he's taken on board some sort of toxin. We just get a thermometer. I'm just worried if he has ingested something, he could be overheating, going to some sort of hypothermia. Yeah, so it's 41.3 degrees, so he's very hot. So can we get a cool bag of fluids, Neil? Yeah. Hey buddy, he's going to settle down, mate. I know, I know what's going on, okay? 
You just keep killing me. So, before we even get the fluids in, I'm just going to give him uh, something to make him vomit straight away. Because the longer this toxin, or what I think is a toxin, sits in his stomach, the worse off he's going to be. Uh, do you know how long you were out? Um, we all left home about quarter to eight this morning yep, to school and work. Archie's owner, Danielle, Danielle arrived home early, early after she had an unexpected trip to the dentist. I'm grateful that I had to leave work and get this tooth taken out in an emergency. And um, otherwise, I wouldn't have been home until after four o'clock this afternoon. By four o'clock, Archie would have been dead. Looking at the total hold over Archie's body that poison has right now, if it gets much more serious, he'll die. Hey, Lise. Yeah? Guess what we've got coming down? A oh, what? A lace monitor. A what? A goanna. Goanna? Yeah. It's coming down. Yeah, just got a phone call. Um, this guy is a pet goanna that's been attacked by one of his bigger ones. So the one that attacked him was probably about that big. And the one that's How coming big? down, <laughs> the one that's coming down is probably only about a kilo. Uh, it's pretty bad. It's um, a couple of centimetres deep and um, all across from one side to the other. Peter has a collection of 20 goannas at home. And one of the larger family members has attacked the much smaller five-year-old belly. To be honest, I am a little bit scared of reptiles. They give me the creeps and Treating or handling one of these is a bit of a nightmare for me. Hi, little one. You can't really trust him. I've been bitten by her actually a while back when she was smaller. I had to go to hospital for that. I'm going to actually, if you don't mind, take her out the back and get Jess, our nurse, to help me get that bandage off and we can take a look. We're supposed to learn about all animals at uni, but quite honestly, all I can remember about lizards and reptiles are a few lectures we had back in third year. Yeah, if you can be comfortable that you're going to hold her and that she's not going to bite me because honestly I don't deal with reptiles very often and I'm instilling all my faith in you. Okay. Okay. I used to work up at um, Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital and we did a lot of um, lace monitors up there, wild ones, so I don't have a problem with a pet one. <laughs> they're really cute as babies. Very, very cute. So they're just misunderstood. Um, it's the claws and the tails that you need to watch out for in these guys, okay. not necessarily their mouth. All right. Now her tail, is there a spike? They, no, they flick it really, they just really flick hard. It hard. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to get my bruise from that and it's scratched and shredded from the claws. Fantastic. This will target his brain and actually make him vomit and vomit quite thoroughly. Archie's life is hanging in the balance. There's a massive amount of toxin racing through his system. Hopefully the result is that we remove whatever is in his stomach as much as we can. For a young puppy that's already immature and, and fragile, it's really damaging. Looks like a snail bait. So that's green, so this looks like a snail bait, guys. Snail bait is designed to kill. It kills snails and it kills dogs too. It works by causing the nervous system to go haywire. When Archie takes on huge amounts of it like he has, it's like hooking him up to electricity and turning up the voltage. And there's no antidote. Next on Bondi Vet, Lisa confronts her fear oh. of reptiles. <laughs> Watch, 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 watch. And Chris battles to flush the snail bait out of Archie's system. Unless we can get him through the next hour, then I'm not going to be confident. Just stick with us. Just stick with us, all right? Forty-two five. Forty-two five. So we're up again. Three-month-old Archie is in a fight for his life after eating snail bait. His temperature's gone from 41.3 to 42.5. It's going the wrong way, we need to bring it down. The only way that you can do that is through giving cool fluids, cool towels, fans, cold water enemas, and stop the convulsions. The muscle contractions are right now what's putting that temperature quite high. Okay, mate. 
you just got to keep calm. You're going to do some things too, you're not going to like, all right? But if you keep calm, you're going to come out the other side. Just because he's vomited doesn't mean that Archie's out of danger here. Because there's no antidote, the treatment is all about getting rid of that toxin out of their body as quickly as you can. And you just hope they stay alive long enough. Watch, 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 watch. Unless we can get him through the next hour, then I'm not going to be confident. Stick with us. Stick with us, all right. bit nervous. I just am yeah, looking at him. I'm looking at his claws. Belly the lace monitor has been savaged by one of the huge goannas she lives with. I don't even like the feel of this. But before Lisa can treat the severe wound, she wants to give Belly a general anaesthetic. Finding the right spot oh. is proving extremely difficult. <laughs> oh my god, Steph! <laughs> It's not the easiest thing to do because um, you can't really see the vein. I guess if I was taking blood for a dog or a cat, I could feel the vein and I could see it. Here we're kind of going in blind. There it is. Yay! Oh, How good is that? And then just hop again. Woohoo! <laughs> I anesthetized a lace monitor. <laughs> but maybe the first and last time. <laughs> right, hon, just take some deep breaths. Talking to a lizard here. Oh, oh, she's really been ripped to pieces here. I see all the flesh and muscle right underneath there, so that big lace monitor has obviously come up to her and just taken a chunk out of her neck, and this, this needs to be stitched. I guess the main thing that I'm concerned about is um, infection. Goannas have got really nasty bacteria in their mouth and in their claws, and that bacteria can almost be venomous, it's that bad. So if we don't stitch up this wound and get her on some antibiotics, she can die from septic infection. So this is really no different to a stomach pump. We're putting fluid in to get fluid out, but when that fluid comes out, it brings with it that snail bait. That's the critical part of this whole procedure. Chris has now anaesthetised Archie, so he can flush the poison out of the Labrador system. Oh. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It just keeps on coming. That's, that's what I'm finding so incredible, is that Archie's not a big dog, but, jeez, he went out this big, didn't he? Once I'm confident that I've actually got all the toxin out, I'm going to put some charcoal down through the same stomach tube. That's going to absorb any remaining toxin that's sticking to the intestinal wall. From there, we turn everything off and we wait. with you, buddy. Hey, do you remember us? Hmm? There's no food here. No. What we don't want is that uncontrollable tremoring, which we're not getting right now. This is good. I'm happy with this. This is good. Look, he's been through a lot. He's going to be exhausted. So he'll stay tonight? Yeah. No, um, I suppose if he's too tired, the kids can't see him. Well, look, the kids can come in and see if you want. He'll only pick up from here, won't he? Yeah. Hopefully. Just the, the liver's the only worry I have, and we're going to test for that. But All right. It's tricky because right now everyone's relaxing and going, geez, that was close. But was it close, or are we just beginning to see the signs of something more serious in the form of liver damage and even liver failure? Bye-bye. I'll -bye. We'll see you in a while. Okay. Blood tests need to be taken later today to find out if Archie has suffered any long-term organ damage. Rest up and you'll feel a lot better. While Archie recovers, Chris is on the road, heading to a difficult assignment at the Australian Reptile Park. The idea is uh, we'll get him off the mound, yep. we're going to push him to the sides, you'd come in and you'd wave your arms and bring yep. him around a bit and stay in a line with your mate next to you yep. and bring him down. Okay. Tim and his team of wildlife keepers need to round up these incredibly fast yellow-footed rock wallabies. 
Grab the tail. Yep. They'll swing down and we'll come straight in with the bag. First thing, in the bag, hang them up. Chris can then check the female's pouches for joeys to make sure the breeding program is working. These guys can jump metres high. They live on the side of cliff faces. It's not uncommon for one of them to go over your head. Yeah. See, I've normally got the height advantage, but here it looks like they've nope. got it all over me, doesn't it? So we've just got to go through a little wallaby cage here first. In the wild now, it's sure to be less than a thousand yellowfoot rock wallabies left. In New South Wales, there's very small pockets and colonies under intense pressure from predators and feral pests, and this captive breeding program is a good way of ensuring their survival. There's a couple over here in the rock here. One coming around there. That's it, got one here. Push over this way, boys. Fast, isn't it? If there's an opportunity to grab a tail, you grab the tail. It's as simple as that. Yeah, good catch, mate. One, two, three. Uh, touch there. <laughs> no, it was no touch. <laughs> it was no touch. Oh, good oh, catch. That's the bit. Right, I'm 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 I think maybe I should have been chasing the brolga. He actually looked as though he was going to be a bit of an easier catch. They're laughing at me. It's really important that we're in and out really quickly because these guys get stressed pretty easily. It is quite warm today. Bring him right round. But they'll start to lick their forearms and they'll get a bit of moisture. Here it comes. That's better. Uh, he's gone. Once we start to see those signs, if we haven't got them all, we pull the pin. We're done. Uh, welfare of the animals is number one priority. Missed him. <sighs> After the break, will attack victim Belly survive her terrible bite wound? The muscle under there is really shredded. And a special hospital visit as Archie struggles to recover from his ordeal. I love him so much. He's like another brother. We've got to work pretty quickly here because they're obviously very sensitive animals, very prone to stress. Belly, the lace monitor, has had her neck ripped open by a much larger goanna. The muscle under there is really shredded. The good thing is it doesn't look like it's gone through to her spinal cord. If it had, she would probably be paralysed, but I really need to fix up this shredded muscle and, and treat any chance of infection. Even though these reptiles freak me out a little bit, looking at Belly, I actually feel quite sorry for her. She has been bullied by a big bloke and she has copped a terrible bite. Thank you. All right, here we go. Her skin is really thick and tough, so I need to use a very thick suture material in order to close that wound. In a dog or cat, I would use something a lot finer. I'm trying to do neat ones so that she still maintains her attractive looks. And we're done. Anti-inflammatory and antibiotic injections finish the lace monitor's treatment. So just before she wakes up, did you want to give her a bit of a kiss on the nose? I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. No, come on. Kiss goodbye. We're going to bring him around the yard, push him up in behind that, two yep. or three roos in, you close the gate, yep. and bang, we'll be on him, catch a few, bag him up. Sure. The Great Wallaby Roundup right is up. continuing at the Australian Reptile Park to check how many females are carrying joeys. One, two, three. What do they do with a guy that can't catch the wallabies? He holds the bag. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah. Glamorous. Oh. <laughs> Too easy. I mean, even a 50 kilo grey kangaroo, you put him inside a bag, they, they curl up into that fetal position, comfortable as long as they're cool. So they're back in the pouch, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's good, we've got all but one, and it's a boy anyway. That'll have to do us for today. <laughs> now, they do bite, and they bite really hard. Chris now checks the wallabies' microchips and updates their health records. One, two, three, off you go, mate. You just want it. Finally, a sign the breeding program is working. Yeah, female. Pretty female. Your eyes are already well developed, isn't they? Yeah. Ears aren't quite up off the head. What do you reckon about 100 days or so? Uh, maybe a tiny, yeah, just under. Maybe two months. So a serious part of the exercise is checking those pouches. And we discover we've got two joeys inside there. 
a male and a female, which is great news. It's showing the breeding program is working. Jelly. It doesn't do such good things for my ego though to know that I got outstepped by a mother and baby. That's a bit hard to take. I'll ruin the surprise, it's a girl. <laughs> It's important for me to see her moving like this. It emphasises the fact that there's no damage to her spinal cord and she's recovered well from the procedure. I think now we'll pop her back to bed to wake up more. I'm feeling pretty chuffed with myself now. I think that all went very well. If another one came in, yes, I would treat it. While Lisa is congratulating herself on controlling her fear of reptiles, Vet nurse Jess is still not convinced. Here we go. Oh my god! <laughs> you are evil, all of you. <sighs> She's still a princess until she kisses a toad. You should be telling me how brave I was. I was so brave. Get too excited, but someone's here to see you. Back at the Bondi Clinic, Chris is happy enough with Archie's progress to allow his family to visit. But the young dog is still fragile after eating a near fatal dose of snail bait. Your little puppy's been through a lot today. He's still very sick though, and he's still very frightened about what's happened to him and, and what's going to happen to him. So be really gentle with him and don't make any loud noise and just walk him very quietly and, and just keep calm. I love him so much. He's like another brother. <laughs> he's just so special. Let's chat in the morning and, and fingers crossed his, his liver's okay and then he can push on through. Okay, thank okay. you for everything. That's alright. No worries at all. I'm very lucky. Thank you. Try to relax tonight. Okay, we're doing everything we can for him. Thank you. Bye bye. Alright. There is one more important test Chris needs to perform on Archie. So this blood in here, it's all about checking for the organ damage. It's been through a lot. How much his organs were affected during that two hours of chaos, we've got to find out. Are you, are, are you ready for food? If I put the food down, you're actually going to eat it. Are you sure? I, th I, think, I think you might be sure. Archie's appetite is back after his snail bait ordeal. And so are his test results. It's fine. No. Yeah, serious. No way. Absolutely fine. Wow, amazing. Yeah. What a lucky dog. The results are what we really weren't brave enough to hope for. His liver's fine. So it's managed to cop all that abuse it's been through, come out the other side, and not be showing any serious signs of damage. Do you, do you want to go home before you eat the bowl? Okay, all done. She was very well behaved. Belly's going home after surviving an attack oh, thanks, that nearly tore her neck apart. <laughs> bye bye. Who knows, maybe I'll become Sasha's resident lace monitor specialist. There's my role. <laughs> but I'll never kiss one that is never, ever, ever going to happen. <laughs> So Billy. Billy's in this one? Yeah, Billy's in here. A few days later, vet nurse Jess visits Peter's Reptile Resort to check up on Billy's progress. It's a bit of a size difference here. The patient is being reacquainted with Big Rex, who nearly tore the lace monitor's head off. Mm. He's having a bit of a taste there. Yeah. Don't want any fighting going on here. Back home? Yeah, oh, he's not, not very, very happy. happy, is he? She's incredibly lucky. I think she should, uh, she should buy the next lotto ticket, maybe. <laughs> Setting a bit of a pace there. Well, look who's here. Archie! A happy Archie is back at home and seemingly oblivious to his near death experience. He'll probably end up sleeping in the bed with one of us. Yeah, just unconditional love. 
Danielle has finally tracked down the snail bait that nearly killed Archie. It had been spread over the lawn at the back of their house. I don't know where it's come from. And to see that there's still that much there, I can still see something too. So the packet's here as well, so the whole box has been thrown over here. It's all oh, through it's here. everywhere? Yeah. I'd hose it in and then I'd put dirt over the top. Okay. And try to and keep them inside until you can really be sure that that's it's gone. been rinsed out. After all we've been through, where that snail bait came from may be a mystery. But the most important thing is that Archie's alive, he's happy, and the kids are over the moon. Incredible. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.